Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the head of the schoolgirls regatta for 2024, the third and final day of this regatta. And we've got an extra special bonus race to kick off proceedings a few minutes early this morning. This is a re-row of race 329 from late yesterday afternoon where there was a, uh, a collision during that race and uh, a couple of crews' chances to progress to the A final was potentially impeded. So the two crews back on the course here racing for one remaining A final spot, that is MLCQ, who are racing in lane uh, two. And Melbourne Girls College in uh, lane three, the uh, two combinations here. So the winner of this race yesterday has already gone through to the A final. That was one of the crews from uh, Loretto Turak. But this is for second and for the uh, remaining spot in the A final. And MLC, who is going to be leading it fairly comfortably with about a quarter still of the 1,000 metre race to go. That's his Shehazada Strang, Isabella Hadley, Zoe Saludis, Luella Toscana and Anya Lakavat, the uh, cox of that crew from MLC, who are on this uh, northern side of the course. The two crews occupy here the uh, centre lanes. So it's MLC by about uh, three lengths from uh, Melbourne Girls College in lane four. Uh, Lily Milful, Regan Tonner, Maya Stoinovich, Julie Chang and Willow Garvey. The crew there from uh, Melbourne Girls College. But uh, looking pretty clear cut here in the uh, final strokes now of this race, which again is a re-row of race 329. So the, uh, in fact, it was the final race of the day uh, at about uh, 5.30 or so yesterday afternoon. And it's going to be a clear win, certainly coming up to the combination from MLC. So they will, in the end, uh, take their spot in the A final of the Year 9, Division 9 Cox Quad Scale. They'll be back on the water. A little bit later on this afternoon, the crew from MLC as they come across now and confirm their win and uh, second place. About two and a half links further back, it will be Melbourne Girls College. So they'll go through to the B final of this uh, event, which will be uh, race 355. So a little bit earlier in today's program. And MLCQ, the race winners, are through safely now to the A final of the Year 9 Division 9 Cox Quad Skull. With that re-row concluded, the official program uh, will commence at 7.30, race 330. is uh, officially the first race of the day. It is a semi-final as well, a number of Year 9 semi-finals to uh, go through the first hour or so of racing before our finals do commence uh, just after 9 o'clock this morning.
So some year nine and year 10 semi-finals coming up. And also semis required in our uh, single scale. Some of the events with the biggest field of entries requiring the crews to potentially race twice over the course of finals day here at the head of the schoolgirls for 2024. Welcome to those watching us here on the live stream as well. Great shots from around the course of uh, all the boats there uh, lining up towards the 1,000 uh, the metre start, which is in use for the opening races of the day. Plenty of uh, U9 quad scales up there experiencing their first ever head of the schoolgirls finals day. And we will have uh, racing on the course fairly shortly. Just about to get underway here with race 330, our first semi-final. Some great shots there of the uh, city of Geelong in the background too, behind the start line of the uh, course here on the Barwon River, this uh, unique amphitheatre of our own course. There's four lanes across, a couple of small bends as they make their way down the, uh, the course here, but a great viewing experience here for all along both sides of the Barwon. And we are racing in race 330, the first semi-final of the U9 Division 5 at Cox Quad Skull. These events that will see the semis for this one. We do have the biggest field of entries across the regatta. So these crews already, in uh, many cases, will have rode the heat on Friday. And a repechage tomorrow, uh, yesterday morning. Quarterfinals yesterday afternoon. Semi-finals now on Sunday morning. And finals still to come across the course of today. All crews will get a final of some description. And in the case of this semi, the top two will go to the A final. Second, uh, third and fourth will go to the B final. And higher rank crews. In the centre lanes, as is always the case. So Melbourne Girls College lane two, Wesley College lane three. And then on the outside lanes, we have St. Catharines in lane one on the northern side of the Bowen. And uh, Caulfield Grammar School over in lane four are on the uh, the southern bank. Look, they've just rode themselves through a few of the ducks on the course. But into Clearwater now, those are four crews away through the first uh, three or 400 metres of this race. And it remains a fairly good line across the course. There is the Caulfield Grammar crew. Up on screen, Asha Watson, Alice Gillard, Miller Sweeney Johnson, Imogen Dant and Madeline Townley. Who uh, just trail a little bit from those two crews in the centre. I think that uh, probably Melbourne Girls College are away to the best start in the first half of the race. And in fact, uh, Wesley there just missing a few strikes too. The bow pair of the Wesley crew to stop rowing for uh, what looked like three or four strikes. They've dropped back in the uh, pack now, certainly, which will open up the opportunity for Caulfield Grammar School down the uh, southern side of the course as well. We're looking to book their spot in uh, what would be their third A final of the day if successful uh, in this race, the crew from Caulfield Grammar. The Melbourne Girls College do look to be our leaders there. That is uh, Harriet Probin, Ruby Watson, Ivy Riemann, Lola Croker and Isabel Munro. And uh, they do also have a good contest coming from lane one, the St. Catharines combination, Anya Crawford, Millie Monaghan, Annabelle Arnold, Lucille Parfit and Eva Lee 
in the boat there for uh, St. Catherine. So the pace certainly on, on the uh, the northern side of the course. Wesley have recovered too, it seems, from that uh, mishap a few hundred metres back down the course. They're uh, moving it again now at the full crew and still in the hunt still for a, a top two spot. Their crew is Lexi Brown, Audrey Schofield, Harper Clancy, Sibylla Schroeder and Sophia Kitsiris for Wesley College in uh, lane number three. As they head down now into the final third of this 1,000 metre race and uh, wonderful conditions here for racing once again on the Bowen River here, hopefully throughout the course of today. Conditions pretty much perfect yesterday as well after just a light breeze existed uh, on Friday, but uh, very good conditions really right across the three days of this regatta. In contrast, certainly those who were here on this day six years ago in 2018 and recall the, uh, the windy year where unfortunately many of the finals couldn't be held, but uh, that shouldn't be the case today. Melbourne Girls College and St. Catherine still look to be our top two on the uh, northern bank. The Spectators on this uh, judges' box side will have a great view of these crews. And Wesley now trying to move back up into the top two as well. Are doing a pretty good job after some messy strokes about a quarter of the way through the race. So it's Melbourne Girls College now, I think, from Wesley just up into second place. Then St. Catharines and uh, Caulfield Grammar School fighting hard on that southern bank of the course up against the uh, transit lane. But just two crews can go through here in race 330. And Wesley College really coming home strongly alongside Melbourne Girls College. who look to have led for most of the race, but they risk being overtaken late. But they'll both go through, in any case, to the A final of the U9 Division 5 Cox Quad Scale. It's going to be a tight finish in our opening race. Wesley and Melbourne Girls College. Wesley College coming home the better of those two. Look like they'll get the win in a couple of strokes time. Wesley go across and take it out by a canvas. So Wesley Lane 3 first. Melbourne Girls College in second place. Third and fourth is tight too. It'll be St. Catharines just edging out the crew from uh, Caulfield Grammar. So Wesley and Melbourne Girls go through to the A final. And uh, St. Catharines and Caulfield will race in the B final. Wesley College uh, home there by point seven one of a second in the end over Melbourne Girls College, but both through to the A final. That's race 441, so coming up uh, later on in this afternoon's program. We're racing in semi-final two as well as we uh, sort out the uh, the last two finalists in the U9 Division 5 Cox Quad Skull. MLC from Q Racing in lane one. Loretto Turak, prominent there in the blue boat in lane two. Melbourne Girls Grammar School lane three. And Loretto Ballarat in the yellow colours. On the, uh, the southern side of the Barwon would uh, be there too. But uh, it is certainly that Loretto crew who's put a couple of links back on the crews closest to them. Not quite a clear sight of the lane one combination from uh, MLC, but they certainly do trail Loretto as well. Looks like a three-way race for second place really behind this very strong quad scalp from Loretto Turkey, who of course have such great depth in the year nine program and uh, I expect will collect a number of medals over the course of this afternoon's racing, as they seem to do uh, every year here on finals day at head of the schoolgirls. So they're clear by about two lengths, the crew from Loretto. That's uh, Clara Ross, Mieta Foley, Olivia Maidman, Abigail Tasker, and Sophie Morgan, who uh, can sit back almost and watch this race unfold behind them because for second, third, and fourth, we have MLC Lane 1, Melbourne Girls Grammar Lane 3, and Loretto Ballarat Lane 4, Melbourne Girls Grammar School, in the uh, centre lane too, so they would have been uh, one of the quarterfinal winners from yesterday's racing. Coco Slaney, Lordette Wells, Lola Cooney, Jemima Lord and Emma Laversha. Those quarterfinals for the Year 9 races taking place on yesterday afternoon's program. And they do probably sit narrowly second now, Melbourne Girls Grammar School, just ahead of MLC Q Lane 1. Emily Rose Barris, Alexia Kafasis, Rosie Bell, Sophie Pickles and Libby Holland, the uh, crew there for... MLC and then from Loretto Ballarat in those uh, always distinctive yellow and blue colours on the uh, southern side of the course Dakota Somerville, Isabel Wise, Angelina Ashby, 
Ava Taylor and Olivia Valenzuela. But uh, that is the race for third and fourth between Loretto and also uh, MLC. It is Loretto Turak who uh, lead it, certainly. And Melbourne Girls Grammar School pretty comfortable, I would suggest, in the second of the uh, qualifying spots as these boats close in on the finish line here. And uh, Loretto, as they've been for quite some time, two lengths clear still. Maybe Melbourne Girls Grammar School have closed up that gap over the last couple of hundred metres, but it... Uh, well, matter little as far as progressions are concerned. They can set their sights on the A final this afternoon. That will be race uh, 441. Loretto Turak go across and take the win in semi-final two of the Year 9 Division 5 at Cox Quad Scale. Loretto first. Loretto Turak, that is in the blue boat. Melbourne Girls Grammar School second. Loretto Ballarat will be third. And fourth place will go to uh, MLCQ in lane one. Semi-final one now of the Year 9 Division 4 Cox Quad Scale. Loretto Ballarat again in this race, this time in lane one. Melbourne Girls College lane two. MLCQ in lane three. And uh, Genazano in lane four. And uh, great vision there of our four quads making their way down towards the uh, the McIntyre Pedestrian Bridge. As I learnt yesterday, the McIntyre Sewerage Aqueduct, in fact, uh, as well. So it's serving dual purposes, that uh, bridge over the bar one here. But it's certainly a great viewing point for these uh, quads as they'll come through there at pretty much the halfway mark of their 1,000 metre race. But MLC away well here in the first 500 metres. That is uh, Liv Worth, Ginger Frona, Georgia Mary, Tilda Rofe and Audrey Trelaw. And alongside them, our closest to them would appear to be the crew from uh, Melbourne Girls College also sharing the centre lanes with MLC. But as they do there in that Bowcox boat, approach the uh, McIntyre Bridge, just passing at the halfway mark of the race now. In fact, the bridge itself is about 450 metres out uh, from the finish line. And it's about a one-length lead to MLC now over Melbourne Girls College. The lane two crew from MGC is Kira Jenkins, Jessica Norman, Alice Wills, Lucy Lay and Sofia Aravalo-Diaz. And uh, still keep an eye on that uh, lane one crew too from uh, Loretto Ballarat, who are very much still in the mix there. In fact, might have an edge on Melbourne Girls College at this stage in the race for, for second and third in the final qualifying spot. That is the crew of Emma McConchie, Eliza Trigg, Maya Templer, Isabel Pecker and Annabelle Donald for uh, Loretto. The, uh, the yellow of colours there, even more distinctive here in the early morning sunlight. And they are the three chances in this race to go through. You would have to think ahead of Genazano Lane 4 on the far side of the course. Bonnie Grace, Claudia Tomchik, Ava Roger, Michaela Mesner and Charlie Morrison. But all these crews will get the chance to race once more today. The top two in the A final and then third and fourth place in the B final. Our second semi-final underway too now at the same time. So it's from the 1,000 metre start while our... Uh, First semi approaches the conclusion. About 200 metres now to go for these crews. And still yet to be determined here. MLC, the leaders. And Melbourne Girls College trying to stamp their authority over Loretto Ballarat. A really good race in lanes one and two for what will be the second qualifying spot here through to the final of the Year 9 Division 4 event. So it's MLCQ who are clear by a length. And Melbourne Girls College do look to be getting the better now of that battle with Loretto Ballarat on the northern side of the course. They are just pushing clear by about a half a length or so now. So it's been a strong finish to the race from Melbourne Girls College, but a very strong race indeed from MLCQ in lane three. They'll go across with a clear water margin, about a length and a half it will be. MLC are through to the A final of the year nine, division four quad, and Melbourne Girls College will go away by a length in the end to take second place and also move through to that A final. Third will go to Loretto College from Ballarat, and fourth place, Genazano on lane four.
Second semi-final now, progressing down the course. The year nine division four quad scale, Melbourne Girls Grammar School. Again, doing a good job in lane one. We've seen a few lane one crews already this morning have a, uh, a serious quack crack at uh, qualification from uh, the outside lane, and I reckon they have every chance to do so here. Kerry in lane two, Loretto Turak lane three, the other crew in the top two, and Strathcona lane four. So uh, Melbourne Girls Grammar School down lane one, Fleur Wilson, Cordelia Tompkin, Poppy Stockdale, Lala Bruce, and Viviana Cook. And Loretto Turak lane three, uh, Millicent, uh, Tanois, Lucy Scott, Genevieve Gray, Arabella Burns and Ava Coleman. They are a clear top two, about two lengths and back to uh, either Carey or Strathcona. Racing really for a third and fourth here and they'll likely meet again in the semi in the final to come, the B final that will be later on today. The uh, Carey crew, Molly Coleman, Elkie Pearson, Susie Wilson, Tara Evans and Mia Kapadath and Strathcona on the southern side. Millet is uh, the crew, in fact, of Alexis Christopoulos, Mimi Botel. Holly Maginic, Matilda Priatel, and Liv Majernik. But it's uh, Loretto still out in front here. I won the second semi of Division 4. Another couple of races to go. And looks set to do the same here in Division 6. About two lengths clear of Melbourne Girls Grammar School, who look likely to qualify as well. So it will be the same result, in fact, as it was in Semi 2 of Division 5. But here in Division 4, Loretto Turak come across and uh, take the win on Lane 3. About two and a half lengths clear. It'll be of Melbourne Girls Grammar School, who do qualify from Lane 1. Third and fourth will be tight, but I think Strathcona on the southern side will uh, get across in front of the uh, early morning peloton of cyclists watching these races. Strathcona third, Kerry Grammar in fourth place in race 333, the second semi final of the year nine Division Four Coxed Quad Skull. Reminder to all here present and uh, parents especially that the boat park area is reserved for athletes and their coaches only, so we do ask. All well, parents and supporters not to head uh, around the corner here into the boat park area of the uh, the Bowen River course. Please stay in the spectator area. There is a, uh, a clear dividing line between the uh, athlete and spectator areas. And we do ask all parents and supporters to stay in the spectator area only and allow the athletes and coaches to, uh, to do their work as required in the boat park right throughout the course of today's racing. First semi-final now of the U9 Division 3 events. Division 3 quad skull, MLC lane 1, Loretto Turak in lane 2, Furbank Grammar in 3, and Loretto Ballarat lane 4. And it's already becoming a bit monotonous this morning. Loretto Turak are out in front for a row. It will be their third semi-final in a row, it seems. And looking uh, set to pretty comfortably uh, qualify here. They've got a great look back there on the uh, the banners on the, uh, the McIntyre Bridge, spread out right across the uh, river here. And the Loretto crew... Uh, probably just narrow margin over MLC on lane one. But uh, they'd be our top two at this stage. So the, the Loretto crew, Michaela Ellis, Audrey Boyle, Andrew Sharon, Allegra Capriola, and uh, Stephanie Hertzanitis. And then MLC, Sabella Rove, Caitlin Nixon, Holly Cormodis, Chloe Groom, and Clementine Homan Ross. A challenge to MLC, I think, will come late from Furbank Grammar in lane three. Brooke DeTiro, Isabel Reith, Lucy Shannon, Georgiana Bly, and Lauren Box. The crew in the yellow colours and then uh, fourth at this stage. Also in uh, the yellow colours on the far side, Loretto Ballarat, Leah Timpano, Sadie McAteer, Hayley Gardner, Amy Antrobus and Georgina Cooney. But it's certainly Loretto Turak out in front here. A very good race for second place with maybe Furbank just starting to assert their authority over MLCQ who have seen the danger and lifted now just in time to maybe still hold themselves there in second place. It's going to be Loretto Turak who will qualify first here from race 334. The interest is in second place. Furbank just edging out MLC with three or four strokes still to go for these U9 Division 3 quad skulls. Loretto Turak across in first place and it will be Furbank Grammar who do get ahead of MLC late in the race. They take it by about a third of a length and move through to the A final which is race 443 on this afternoon's program. It was MLC third and Loretto Ballarat in fourth place. Those two crews will race in the B final, which is race 377. So coming up a little bit uh, earlier in the day. Of course, all of our A finals will conclude today's racing. The last 40 or so races will be the uh, the various A finals from Division, Year 9, Division 9, all the way through to the Open 8, Division 1, which is time for 3.55 this afternoon.
one to two about the uh, various colours of bins available throughout this regatta here. Please ensure you do put the correct rubbish and recycling in the uh, correct bin. There are some general waste bins and some, uh, some standard recycling bins too. And also the purple littered recycle for change bins, which are uh, specifically for certain types of uh, drink containers. There are stickers on those bins that will tell you precisely what you can and can't put inside there. But uh, please use those purple bins as much as you can. I think particularly for uh, plastic Water bottles, they uh, do go to Recycle for Change, a local like a Geelong-based charity. In fact, it is uh, who uh, do some great work with the proceeds of those uh, purple littered recycling bins. So please ensure you do use the uh, correct bin and particularly pay attention to what can go into the purple littered Recycle for Change bins that are available throughout the uh, regatta venue as they were at the state championships too in Ballarat a, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Comes the second semi final now, the U9 Division 3 event, and it's uh, Brighton Girls Lane 1, Melbourne Girls Grammar School in Lane 2, Kerry Grammar in 3, Melbourne Girls College Lane 4. As these uh, U9 quad scale races continue, and Melbourne Girls Grammar School is racing underneath the uh, bridge there at the center of the course, but they are back in about, in fact, in fourth place, I think. Melbourne Girls Grammar. The race lead is being fought out between lanes one and three. Right in lane one, Scarlett Palsy, Charlotte Kaplan, Gigi Zapf, Saskia Klotz and Lucy Ball. And Carey lane three, Emma Lawton, Lucy Whitechurch, Rose Corker, Chloe Carnell and Elise Cheng. The uh, crew there from Carey. They are certainly our top two. And uh, probably then across to Melbourne Girls College lane four, Indigo Ernst, Juliet Blake, Evie Purden, Summer Smith and Maisha Takuro Lay. The cocks of that crew Melbourne Girls Grammar School in lane two. Back in fourth place, Lola Edwards, Daisy Kitchener, Eliza Pete, Annika Barnes, and Tanya Chen. But it uh, continues to be lanes one and three here. Maybe Carey just now from Wright and Girls. And keep an eye in the closing strokes here on the crew from Melbourne Girls College on the uh, far side of the course as well. We're coming home very, very strongly now late in this race and trying to move up into a qualifying spot. So three chances here still across the course. With 150 metres to row, it is Carey in the yellow colours. They're in lane three. The narrow race leaders, right and were strong in the first two-thirds of the race, but risk being overtaken here towards the end. I think Melbourne Girls College have clearly got their boat now up into second place. So it looks like it'll be the two crews on the southern bank of the course, passing that uh, raised spectator platform, a great place to watch the races from there throughout today. And it'll be Carey Grammar School going across by about three-quarters of a length to take out the win in the second semi of the U9 Division 3 Cox Quad Scale. Carey first, Melbourne Girls College second. Third will go to the, uh, the Yellow Caps of Wright and Girls on lane one after a very strong opening to the race from them. And then about uh, three or so lengths further back to Melbourne Girls Grammar School, lane two. They'll finish in fourth place and along with Wright and will race into the B final of the Year 9 Division 3 Cox Quad Scale. Underway now in race 336, and there is the vision uh, from the start line coming through on the uh, the live screen there. But still away, there was Gibson Grammar School on the uh, dark green colours in lane two. Closest to the camera, we have Damascus College from Ballarat. That's lane one. Gibson Grammar in two, lane three. St. Catherine's a very quick start from them. And uh, PLC Melbourne in lane four over on the uh, southern bank of the course. Worth noting again here today that uh, our officials do operate from the bank here at Geelong. Another the unique features of this fairly narrow course is the starter can uh, stand on the, the southern bank and send the races uh, down the course in pretty quick succession, which is why they've been able to continue with races at three-minute intervals right throughout this regatta and all the way, in fact, through to our final race of the day, which is race 475, coming up at five minutes to four, the Open 8 Division 1 final. Saw a glimpse of a bit of a crab there too in the Damascus College crew. In fact, they're still struggling uh, down the course on the uh, the right-hand side there of the screen, the crew from Damascus Ballarat. And uh, they will 
do well to recover from there to get back at least on terms with the uh, top two. But the race being led by St. Catherine's on lane three. They were the quickest away from the start. Gibson Grammar seemed a bit slow in the early strokes, but have got back now up into second place. So it is our top two in the uh, centre lanes here as they do race towards the McIntyre Bridge. You can see behind them there the next race uh, lining up. And in fact, the next two or three races all lined up in their lanes as the uh, crews by now pretty well drilled that they're a uh, third or fourth attempt in each case at a uh, race here at the head of the school goals. Even for these year nines in their very first Head of the schoolgirls regatta, but uh, they're getting great racing experience over the course of these three days. But here comes the crew from St. Catharines. The Bowcox boat once again, which is, uh, of course, popular now with most of the uh, crews in these races. Combination of Camilla Tullock, Penilla Coleman, Sarah Dewani, Grace Champion de Crespigny, and uh, Nina Portnoy is the uh, cox of that crew. Sitting uh, in the bow section here with her uh, legs up underneath the... Uh, the bow canvas, and they've got over a length now, it seems, on Gibson Grammar School alongside them in a second position. That's the St. Catharines crew now heading underneath the bridge, and Gibson Grammar School, uh, their closest challenger. That is the crew of Isabel Lewis, Jessica Durand, Anna Messerich, Avishna Singh, and uh, Taylor Island, the uh, crew there for uh, Gibson Grammar. We'll see, oh, I'm going to assume to be Jessica's older sister, Ella, racing in the open quad scale for Gippsland in the uh, second last race of today. Gippsland Grammar, a very good chance in uh, the open quad scale event too. And looking likely to qualify here, it would seem, in the Year 9 Division 3 events. Uh, Damascus College still sits third, and they've recovered from those mid-race crabs. And they still have a good chance of uh, moving up with Gippsland into second spot, but they do sit third for now. Damascus, Charlie Rowe, Amphie Lewis, Carla Austin, Miley Singwine and Maddie Huff, coached by uh, Linda Skidmore, running Victoria's own Linda Skidmore in charge of that crew from Damascus College who are uh, looking to finish over the top here of Gibson Grammar School. It is a good lead to St. Catherine, certainly, at the uh, head of the field, about two lengths back then to Gibson Grammar and Damascus lanes one and two. That's the interesting race here for qualification for the A final. And in fourth place on the far side, PLC Melbourne, Nasha Prabhu, Coco Jude, Dazzy Spencer, Ashia Randala, and Avon Mira, the uh, combination there next to the uh, transit lane with plenty of traffic also heading up to the start. As uh, this is semi final three of the year nine Division Three event. So, in fact, the top two here will go through to the E final. So, certainly St. Catherine's amongst those. St. Catherine's from uh, Gibson Grammar School and at uh, Damascus College uh, fighting on hard. Late in the race, but look like they'll finish in third place. It's St. Catharines who come across and uh, take the win. So lane three it is. St. Catharines through to the E final, along with the crew from uh, Gibson Grammar School. So uh, they will qualify through for a race later on today. Third place will go to Damascus College on lane one, and then fourth will be PLC Melbourne. So these are, in fact, the, uh, the third and fourth semifinals of the Year 9 Division 3 event. So it is to sort out qualification for the EF and, in fact, G finals as well with uh, substantial fields in both Year 9 Division 3 and Year 9 Division 2 to come. So our first two, the actual semifinals, were for the A and B finals. And that race, semifinal three, was to determine our E, F and G finalists. So from that race, St. Catharines at Gibson Grammar School go through to the E final. Damascus College in third place will race in the F final. And uh, PLC Melbourne in fourth will go to the G final which will take place a little bit later on this morning's program, those uh, EFG finals of the Year 9 Division 3 event. So one more semi-final remains here too. Again, this is a uh, an E-final semi, effectively. The top two will go to the E-final from this event. Hamilton Alexandra College racing in lane one, Corowa in lane two, Finton in lane three, and Allow the Hall lane four. Fit in the crew heading towards the uh, McIntyre Bridge with the race lead, I think, is probably on the uh, other side of the course. The uh, crew just out of shot there from Hamilton and Alexandra looks to be ahead, certainly, of Corowa and Fitton. There is those two crews head uh, beneath the bridge. And also Lowther Hall on the far side of the course. Next semi-final also underway as we move up to the Year 9 Division 2 quad scale. 
That race just underway there is again for a spot in the A and B final. So plenty to race for there between uh, four of the top eight crews in this event. But in the meantime, continuing down towards the finish, it is the fourth semi-final of the Year 9 Division 3 events. And Hamilton and Alexandra lead it pretty comfortably here. The school from uh, Western Victoria, Jemima Cock, Sophie Hill, Claudia Cochran, Hannah Wilson and Millie Mould. Coached by Paul Mould. And uh, they have certainly... A substantial margin on the field. Second looks to be Lau the Hall on the other side of the court. So, uh, Sophia Storey, Sadie Peck, Kira White, Annie Lenewen, and Madeline Hand. And tight for third and fourth. Possibly Coral are just third. Elsa Kui, Ella Hassan, Sophie Liu, Grace Macy, and Annie Licence. Ahead then of Fintana, Evelyn Teng, Chloe Singh, Rachel Wang, Jenny Kui, and Anneli Hekapaja. The Cox there of the crew from Fintana. Still a uh, good race for the F and G final spot, I reckon, between those two in the centre lanes. But Hamilton and Alexandra College comfortably clear here. They've uh, got still about a two-length lead. Coming home well on the far side is the crew from Lowther Hall, but the top two, regardless, will go through to uh, this morning's E final in this Year 9 Division 3 Cox quad. The uh, gap shrinking a little late in the race, but Hamilton and Alexandra... We'll hold on to record a comfortable win and they will go through to the E-final of the Year 9 Division 3 quad. So Hamilton and Alexandra in first place. Second goes to Lowther Hall. So they won from lane four. And then the two crews in the centre lanes. Probably Fintana in the end will get the better of that race for third and fourth. Fintana will finish third and progress to the F-final. And uh, Korowa in fifth place, just over a length back in the end, will go to the G-final of the Year 9 Division 3 events. So we have now the first of our semi-finals in the Year 9 Division 2 on the course. This, again, is a race for the A and B final. So we're watching, again, the top uh, the top end of the Year 9 Division 2 quad fleet here. Strathcona Lane 1, Loreno Turak Lane 2, who uh, would be our race leaders, MLCQ Lane 3 and Wesley College Lane 4. And, again, the crew from Loreno does seem to lead and lead it pretty comfortably here. They've had a good morning so far, Loreno, in these uh, Year 9 semi-finals. Continuing here in Division 2, which is the equal biggest quad scale uh, number of entries in this regatta. 26 quads entered in both uh, Divisions 2 and 3. And Loretto here, very well placed. Annie Sutherland, Mietta Barrington, Grace Walter, Claudia O'Brien and Olive Buffington. The combination there in that uh, always distinctive blue boat. Second looks to be MLC from Q in Lane 3. Lucy Fusinato, Matilda Donaldson, Maddie Kerr, Claire Capon. And Lily Comrie. And then on either side of the course, we have uh, Strathcona Lane 1, Maya Turnham, Poppy Atchison, Izzy Smith, Holly White, and Maya Sipos. And uh, Wesley Lane 4, Elkie Wilson, Kia Atkins, Madeline Jordan, Marley Ryan, and Ivy Moore. And it's Loretto Turak once again. Very good morning of uh, semifinals so far. And they're going to record yet another A-final position here with a com comfortable win. Well, about two lengths in the first semi-final of the Year 9 Division 2 at Cox Quad Scale. Loretto Turak come across and take the win on lane two. Two lengths the margin back to MLC, who will also go through to the A-final. Third and fourth will be tight here with a couple of strokes to go. Wesley may be just over Strathcona on opposite sides of the course. It'll be lane four, Wesley College just into third place. And they'll race in the B-final later on, along with the crew from Strathcona. Second semi-final now of the Year 9 Division 2 at Cox Quad. In a field of four across the course. Loretto, Ballarat Lane 1, Albert Park College Lane 2, Kerry in 3, Melbourne Girls Grammar School in 4. Well, 
It looks to be Loretto Ballarat, lane one, who are challenging in the middle stages here. They've got a slight lead on Albert Park College in lane two and uh, probably on terms with Carey in lane three. They're clearly our top three crews here, but Loretto lane one, Matilda Grant, Bridget Mulcahy, Ella French, Sophie Huff and Gracie O'Connor. Beside them, Albert Park College, Lee Johnson, Arabella Young, Anna Lill, Summer Bastutal and Daisy Merritt, coached by Virginia Lee. And then Carey lane three, Maya Onslow, Ruby Kay, Lauren McLean, Alana O'Connor and Blair McMillan. So that's clearly our top three ahead of Melbourne Girls Grammar School, Georgia Berryman, Natalie Grant, Clementine Evans, Catherine Hasudis and Willa Vile. The uh, combination on the far side, but it's Loretto Ballarat and Carey, the two crews in the yellow colours looking to go through here. Good race from Loretto down at lane one. They would have done the, uh, well, they're finishing second place in the quarterfinal. That's why they're racing in the outside lane, but it doesn't appear to be doing them any harm here. They still lead Albert Park by a length or so in the race for second and third, but uh, Carey probably just have the better of the uh, crew from Loretto still. They'll be very close together, our top two here, but both will go through to the A final, importantly for them, about a length clear of Albert Park College. And also Melbourne Girls Grammar School, who are moving up late in the race, but Carey will go across and uh, take the win here. And they'll win it by about half a length from Loretto Ballarat. So there are two qualifiers through to the A final. Just on a length back then to, uh, it'll be Albert Park College third and Melbourne Girls Grammar School in fourth. So a good race there, as you'd expect, of course, in the semis of the E9 Division 2 at Cox Quad scale. But it's Carey Lane 3 and Loretto Lane 1, the two crews that will move through to the A final, which is race 444 right towards uh, the end of today's program. That final coming up at 1.50. So just after the uh, the lunch break, of course, all the A finals will be on. And the B final there for places three and four, Albert Park and Melbourne Girls Grammar School, race 383, which will be raced uh, towards the end of the uh, the morning program, or in fact at uh, 10.19, so only a couple of hours from now. Another crew leading here from lane one. It's the Shelford Girls Grammar School combination this time who are ahead in semi-final three of the year nine division two Coxed quad. This again is a race for uh, spots in the E, F and G finals. So Shelford, the uh, light blue blades racing in lane one. Abigail Sweatlow, Chloe Thompson, Dolly Coughlin, Ashley Crook and Beatrice Sigley who would have the lead uh, pretty comfortably from uh, Gibson Grammar School and then Fintana, Fintana with some very similar light blue blades too, coming down lane two, but they would sit uh, third or fourth. And also Corowa across on the far side of the course in lane four. But uh, it's clearly Shelford first, Gibson Grammar in second place, Jaden Gomez, Charlotte Snow, Mia Kantzidis, Alicia Turnbull and Charlotte Hawthorne. The crew there for Gibson Grammar School. So it'll be first and second into the E final, third place to the F final and fourth place to the G final from this race. And it's the Shelford crew to hold off a light challenge from Gibson Grammar School, who are getting closer and closer with every stroke they take, but will end up about half a length short as they head across the line. Shelford Girls Grammar School will take the win in uh, race 340. So Shelford lane one, second goes to Gibson Grammar School, third will be Coral with the far side, and fourth then the crew from Fintana.
Semi-final four now of the Year 9 Division 2 Cox Quad. Caulfield Grammar School Lane 1, Damascus College Lane 2, PLC Melbourne in 3, and Wright and Girls in Lane 4. And the lead this time sits with the crew from Damascus College of Ballarat, Pippa Watt, Ivy Story, Ivy Dixon, Stella Mercer and Chloe Johnson. Coached by Matthew Ashley. And uh, they moved out to a clear water margin now. Over a uh, good race behind them for second and third. PLC in lane three. Melanie Zhu, Lola Baboris, Zoe Zhang, Momo Lee and Jingwei Lu. And also Caulfield Grammar School lane one. Cleo Moran, Harriet Conan, Charlotte Pound, Millie Fajny and Cleo Miles. And then uh, across on the other side with the uh, the yellow blades and the yellow caps is, of course, the crew from Wright and Girls. Artemis Robson, Isabella Nelson, Isabella Heath, Kate Davis and Gaia Ballon. The uh, Cox there from Wrighton, who, of course, are one of the big chances in the uh, penultimate race of the day, the Open Cox Quad Skull, which we expect to be a fantastic race. As Wrighton look to add another title to their impressive uh, portfolio from recent years. But in this case, in the Year 9 Division 2 uh, fourth semi-final, it's going to be almost certainly a win to uh, Damascus College of uh, Ballarat. A really good race behind them up for second, third and fourth. Right now coming home strongly on that southern side of the course and uh, are every chance to move up from fourth to third or even second place with a pretty strong finish but no one will catch our race leaders from Ballarat. Damascus College clear still with uh, three or four more strokes to go but they'll get the win in race 341. First and second here will go through to the E final so it'll be uh, Damascus College first and probably right and girls on that outside lane, he'll join them in second spot. Still a couple of strokes to go. Right and over PLC as they push across the line. Right and will get second. PLC third. And Caulfield Grammar in fourth place. Less than a link between those three crews as they came across the finish line. So small margin to making all the difference here with first and second going to the E final. That is Damascus and Wrighton. PLC lane three will go to the F final. And Caulfield Grammar. In lane one, will race in the G final of the uh, Year 9 Division 2 Coxed Quad Skull. So those finals actually coming up fairly shortly. The EF and G finals, they'll be on from uh, 10.04 this morning, beginning with the G final of the Year 9 Division 2 event. But uh, we go from Division 2 to Division 1 now, so the top category of Year 9 racing. Two semi-finals here. To uh, determine our A finalists, Melbourne Girls Grammar School lane one, Strathcona lane two, Loretto Turak in three, Ballarat Grammar School in four. And again, a strong race down lane one here from Melbourne Girls Grammar School, mixing it right up with Loretto Turak in lane three. They're clearly our top two. The Loretto crew, Grace Eagleson Forster, Amy Jordan, Olivia Burchard, Alexia Critikides, and Heloise Murray. And Melbourne Girls Grammar School, who look pretty comfortable in second. That'll be Claudia Cogler, Harriet Hutchins, Cleo McLaughlin, Emily Rasmussen, and Brittany McCormick. The crew from uh, Melbourne Girls Grammar, Strathcona, uh, third, Ruby Douglas, Olivia Smith, Charlotte Wood, Sarah Allstop, and Hannah Young. And uh, then Ballarat Grammar, the far side, Meg Howard, Charlize Kennedy, Annabella Miller, Lucy Alcock, and Millie Cust, coached by Kylie Lanyon. But the first two only will go through to the A final. And once again, it's going to be Loretto Turak, who are clear by about two and a half lengths from Melbourne Girls Grammar School. So a strong win once again to that uh, well-drilled crew, from Loretto Turak in the Year 9 Division 1 event. Loretto first and Melbourne Girls Grammar School, Lane 1, will finish second. So they were second only in their quarter final, but qualified through. And now second in their semi will get them into the A final. Third place, just missing out the crew then from Strathcona, who'll go to the B final. And fourth place will be Ballarat Grammar School on Lane 4. They'll also race in the B final of the Year 9 Division 1 quad. And uh, those, uh, well, that B final at least comes up at uh, 10.31, the B final of the Year 9 Division 1 quad. But in the meantime, the second semi is progressing at pace down the course. Loretto Ballarat, lane one. Wright and Girls, lane two. MLCQ in three. Genizano in lane four. Uh, the uh, four crews across the course here. But it does look to be uh, a race again between lanes uh, one and three, as we saw in the previous semi final. Loretto Lane 1, Lucy Barlow, Jesse Charleston, Audrey Malloy, Lila McTeague and Grace Barr. And MLC Lane 3, Rosie Marriott, Grace Wilson, Joss Kerr, Mika Lingham and Hannah Walsh. So Loretto crew were the Heather Lake winners 
a few uh, a few Sundays ago on uh, Lake Wendaree when uh, Loretto Ballarat really swept all the uh, the junior events at that uh, regatta. But uh, here they sit, probably in second place behind the crew from MLC, who uh, do have the uh, the margin by uh, close to a length. And then we go back to right and girls lane two: Isabella Heath, Peggy King, Annabelle Dalziel, Annie Higgins, and Bridget Gannon. And then Jenna Zano, lane four: Emily Carter, Hope McGrath, Eliza Daffy, Claudia Callan, and Zara Bennett. And it's a race certainly for second spot here with right and girls trying to move up on the crew from Loretto Ballarat, but still it is MLC in front. They've got uh, certainly one qualification spot, all sewn up it would seem, and about two lengths clear of the crew in yellow from Loretto College of Ballarat. They'll be our top two. MLCQ come across and uh, take the win. It'll be uh, Loretto Genizano finishing well too down the outside. He'll actually get up into uh, third spot, but second, the all-important second does go to Loretto by a length from Genizano and right and just getting messy late in that race. We'll end up finishing in fourth place. Single skulls now coming down the U9 Division 1 single skull. Now, neglected to say happy birthday to Kylie Lanyon just before too, the coach of the Ballarat Grammar School U9 Division 1 quad skull who uh, came across in fourth place in that first semi-final. But happy birthday to uh, Kylie Lanyon from Ballarat Grammar who has the pleasure every year of celebrating her birthday here on the uh, Barwon River. So uh, where else would you rather be? Happy St. Patrick's Day as well, of course, here on the... Uh, the 17th of March, it's, uh, racing in semi-final one of the Year 9 Division 1 female school singles goal. Adeline Shields from Clonard racing in lane one. Meta Wilson of PLC Melbourne in lane two. Senna McFarlane from the Scott School in lane three. And uh, Molly Walker from Hamilton and Alexandra is in lane four. And it is the two centre lanes this time as we uh, return to a, maybe a more traditional progression after we've seen a couple of crews do well coming down at lane one, but here it is, lane three. Santa McFarlane from the uh, Scott School. And also, of course, the uh, the Coral Rowing Club, coached by Wes Canney and uh, Emily Tidd. Meta Wilson looks there in second place for uh, PLC Melbourne. Sandra McFarlane for, uh, in fact, the Scott School of Albury, it appears, not uh, from Coral itself, as I may have said earlier in the week, but the Scott School from Albury, which coincidentally is where I'll be spending uh, tonight on the way up to uh, Penrith. Something you didn't know you needed to know, but in any case, it is Sandra McFarlane rowing here for the Coral the Rowing Club and the Scott School of Albury who are going to go through and take the uh, qualifying spot here now. Some messy strokes there for Mieta Wilson will make things interesting for second, but she recovers well. And Sienna McFarlane goes across very comfortably there for the uh, Scott School and the Coral Rowing Club to take the win on lane three. And she'll move through to the A final of the Year 9 Division 1 single skull. And uh, Mieta Wilson from PLC does recover and comfortably takes out second spot. So she also goes through to the A final. Mieta Wilson from uh, PLC Melbourne. Third lane four will be Molly Walker from Hamilton and Alexandra. And then fourth place. On this northern side of the course, Adeline Shields, a scholar from Clonard uh, here in Geelong, coached by Jan Keats and Brooke Parsons, will be across in a, a couple of strokes time in the uh, the Clonard colours in fourth place. She'll go to the B final along with Molly Walker and to the A final goes Sienna McFarlane and Mietta Wilson. Semi-final two is very quickly approaching here and there's two scholars here from uh, Corowa, the school, Corowa with a K, in lanes one and two, Abigail Phillips and Violet Whithouse and Wesley College, Melandra Barnard, lane three, 
And Aster White of Footscray High School is in lane four. And a clear lead, certainly, to the Sculler. In fact, the Scullers from Coral look to be one and two uh, here. Still interesting for second place, but Violet Whithouse is uh, very comfortably uh, clear here for the uh, Corowa Anglican Girls School. She leads it by a uh, number of boat lengths back to uh, Abigail Phillips in second place. Here are the red colours of Corowa. The bright red blades as uh, Violet Whithouse has a quick check over her shoulder to uh, see how close the finish line is. And uh, she's well inside the final 100 metres now of this race. So it's going to be a Corowa Quinella here in the second semi-final of the Year 9 Division 1 the female school single scholar. Strong win, certainly, to Violet Whithouse there in the centre of the course. One of the quarterfinal winners going through now to take out her semi-final as well. She'll assume the centre lane, one of the two centre lanes for the final to come later on this afternoon in the Year 9 Division 1 female school single scholar. And it will be... Coral 1 and 2. Abigail Phillips also moves through to that A final with a strong second place finish on lane 1. Third will go to Wesley College. Melandra Barnard in the uh, the purple colours on lane 3. And then Footscray High School. Aster White over in lane 4. will finish in a fourth spot. And she'll go through to the B final. Will Aster White along with Melandra Barnard of Wesley. From uh, semi-final two of the Year 9 Division 1 female school single skull. The B-final of that race coming up at uh, 10.43 this morning. And the A-final, of course, will be after the lunch break. The A-final of the Year 9 Division 1 skull is at 1.59, so just before 2 p.m., about two hours before the conclusion of the regatta. And that does conclude our Year 9 semi-finals for now. It's been great to see these semis from those fields with so many entries that uh, effectively five rounds of racing are required over the course of this regatta. So all those crews and scholars will be back on the water later on today. Our balloon is back over the course as well. Some great sights here around uh, Geelong over the course of uh, this weekend. And we do now have just a slight pause in racing before we begin our Year 10 events. The, uh, the last of our sets of semi-finals coming up soon, the Year 10 Division 3 and Division 2 quad scales, followed by the Open Division 1 single scale. So we'll see uh, those races on the course shortly. 8.28, the official start time of our next race, about uh, five and a half minutes away from the first semi-final of the Year 10 Division 3 quad a reminder again to all parents and supporters that the uh, the boat park is reserved for athletes and their coaches only. So please ensure that uh, all parents and supporters stay in the supporters area, which is uh, on either side of the course uh, here in the last few hundred metres. But do not head around the corner into the boat park area. That is uh, important that the athletes and their coaches are left to... Uh, do their own work and prepare for their races accordingly today at what is a pretty high-pressure occasion for a number of these athletes. So uh, the boat park is for coaches and athletes only. All parents and supporters are asked to stay in the supporters area from where you can get a great view of the racing from either side of the uh, course here. And don't forget to the regatta shop opening back at 9 a.m. for the final day of this regatta. So you can... Uh, you know, your official 40th anniversary head of the schoolgirls merchandise from the regatta shop from uh, 9 a.m. They are back for the final day of the regatta. Don't forget, they're in a new location this year in the uh, large white tent behind the spectator tents on the northern bank. So please head along to the regatta shop and uh, for all your merchandise requirements, and particularly if you've got a pre-order, a paid pre-order not yet collected. There were several still uncollected as of 4 p.m. yesterday when they uh, closed for the day. So uh, please get in and collect your pre-orders. You've uh, already paid for those, so uh, make sure you collect them over the course of today. And don't forget, too, the official head of the School Girls program still available for purchase, uh, I assume, from the uh, coffee van here on the finish line, the official uh, printed version of the program, available for just uh, $10.00 from the coffee van on the finish line. Of course, order a coffee while you're there. Our food vendors are hard at work right around the venue as they've been throughout this weekend. And we certainly encourage you to support all of those throughout today's racing, right through into our final race at uh, five minutes to four this afternoon. We will see the Open 8 Division 1. So 
plenty to look forward to here today. It's a slight pause on the water at the moment and racing will resume in about four minutes' time. Officials keen to keep things moving here. We are underway in our next race, about a minute or so before the scheduled start time. So semi-final one. Of the Year 10 Division 3 at Cox Quad Scale, the first of our Year 10 semis. We'll have semis of Division 3 and 2 in Year 10. And they are underway there. So we have Melbourne Girls Grammar School Lane 1, Loretto Turak in Lane 2. Ballarat Grammar School, Lane 3, Albert Park College, racing in Lane 4. And uh, for once, it's not the Loretto crew that's got away best. It would be uh, Ballarat Grammar School over in Lane 3. Charlotte Armitage, Kate Mitchell, Clara Watson, Georgina Draffin and Holly Bridie, coached by uh, Lyndall Geddes. Happy birthday once again, in case you missed it earlier, to Kylie Lanyon, the coach of the Ballarat Grammar School Year 9 Division 1 crew that raced a few minutes ago. Celebrating her birthday here at the Barwon uh, once again. But uh, this crew from Ballarat Grammar School in Lane 3, coached by uh, Lyndall Geddes. And uh, Loretto Turak now moving up alongside them. It would seem to uh, challenge in the race for the top two spots. Two to go through here to the A final and two to the B final from this first semi of the Year 10 Division 3 event. That's the Ballarat Grammar crew up on screen again. They're in the uh, the Bow Cox boat as they do race towards the uh, the McIntyre Sewerage Aqueduct that spans the course here at Ballarat. And Loretto are now clearly up into second place as well. That is Ruby Colbatch, Isabella Knight, Eloise Morgan, Jemima Perry and Greta Hardwick. The crew there from Loretto who uh, did lose to, look to lose a length or so in the early strokes of the race. They've got back now to be about two-thirds of a length behind the race leaders from Ballarat Grammar School. But a clear top two, certainly, in the centre lane. So our quarter-final winners from yesterday afternoon are in the ascendancy here now in the semi-final of the Year 10 at Division 3 at Cox Quad Skull. First and second to the A final. Third and fourth will go to the B final. At this stage, it's uh, a race between, well, for third place between Melbourne Girls Grammar School in three and Upper Park College in lane four. Melbourne Girls Grammar School will be third at this stage. That's Olivia Jane. Georgia Harris, Lily Ebbles, Jada Tankard and Lucinda Theodore. 
Albert Park College, Lane Forge, Georgina Camelon, Ali Newen, Jane Zorbus, Julie Kwiatkowski and Adeline Tan, coached, of course, by uh, Virginia Lee. Uh, they would be fourth and uh, I think a bit too far back to challenge for a top two spot. Not quite the case, but for Melbourne Girls Grammar School, Lane 1, they remain pretty close to on terms with uh, the leading couple of crews. Loretto Turak may have just about gone past Ballarat Grammar School now in the race for first and second and Melbourne Girls Grammar School thereabouts as well. So three crews going for just two spots now to qualify for the A final of the year 10 Division 3 at Cox Quad Skull. Oh, Loretto in the blue boat either side of them. Ballarat Grammar School who led early in this race but uh, are now under siege from uh, also Melbourne Girls Grammar School down the northern side of the course. But it is still Loretto and Ballarat Grammar School, the top two. Not too much between them. And then have a length or so back to Melbourne Girls Grammar School. So our top two decided. The order not quite yet confirmed, but it is the Blue Boat narrowly ahead still. Loretto Turak from Ballarat Grammar School. It's like the Marty Francis Cup here. His two old schools going head to head. But it's going to be Loretto Turak who will take the win here by about half a length. And it's uh, Loretto first in the first semi of the Year 10 Division 3 quad. Ballarat Grammar School in second place. So those two crews will meet again in the A final of the Year 10 Division 3 quad. Third place goes to the uh, the Green Ribbon crew from Melbourne Girls Grammar School on lane one. And then fourth will be Albert Park College in the light blue on the far side of the course. So race three, four, six after a slow start does go the way of the crew from Loretto Turak. Semi-final two quickly following it down the course. Loretto Ballarat, lane one, MLCQ in two, Strathcona lane three, Ballarat Clarendon lane four. So two of the Ballarat schools here in the outside lanes. And MLC and Strathcona, the two Melbourne schools in the centre of the course. And they'd be at this stage, the two crews in the qualifying spots, the race being led by MLC, Eleanor Love, Amel Cummings, Sophie Pretty, Madeline Turnham and Edie Donovan. From Strathcona, lane three, Isabella Cheng, Annabelle Howell, Saloni Gunasakra, Ella Fotheringham and Isla Fithall. The Strathcona crew just uh, coming into view there in the uh, bright pink or the coral colours in lane three. We have the red also, a Ballarat Clarendon on the far side of the course. Olivia Hickenbotham, Caitlin Dent, Orby Sanarapiti, Ruby McAuliffe and Anna Sun, coached by Lachlan Matheson. And up lane one. Loretto from Ballarat, Anna Jones, Maddie Geljohn, Imogen Mann, Sophie Robertson and Molly Hudson, who are uh, probably third, in fact, in the uh, the race between those two Ballarat crews, but probably racing for third and fourth, you would think, with uh, MLC still holding a bit of a margin on Strathcona, who will just have to make sure they do keep their boat ahead of Loretto Ballarat and withstand any late challenge that may come uh, from them in the closing strokes of the race. But it's MLC by a length. Strathcona still there to be in uh, second place. Loretto Ballarat certainly working hard down lane one. And uh, they're clearly third ahead of Ballarat Clarendon would have some ground to make up on the crew from Strathcona if they're to move through to the A final. Otherwise, it will be the B final for the two crews from Ballarat. And Strathcona certainly have come home pretty strongly. Made up some ground too late on the MLCQ combination. They'll get within about a third of a length, in fact, by the time they get to the finish line. So a very strong finish from Strathcona. But the win does go to MLCQ. They are across on lane two and through to the A final of the year 10 Division 3 quad. Half a length on the line to Strathcona in second place. Third and fourth, very tight between the two crews from Ballarat. Uh, Loretto on this side, Ballarat Clarendon on the far side will uh, finish third and fourth and both go through to the uh, B final where they will race again in a couple of hours' time. Loretto Ballarat will get third there too by about uh, 0.22 of a second unofficially over uh, Ballarat Clarendon, but uh, largely academic as both crews are through to the B final, but third place goes to Loretto, fourth to Ballarat Clarendon. As official results, of course, are going up on the event website and the Rowing Victoria Rowing Manager site as soon as they are confirmed by our uh, judges downstairs.
Right, that's MLC and Strathcona who qualify there for the A final, along with Loretto Turak and Ballarat Grammar School from the previous semi final. So we move on to the year 10 Division 2 quad, and uh, this is the first again of two semi finals here. Melbourne Girls Grammar School racing in lane one, Furbank Grammar in two, Strathcona in three, and Wrighton Girls in lane four. It is uh, two crews. On this northern side, they're coming down pretty much in lane order here. But once again, it's a, uh, a serious performance here from the uh, lane one crew of uh, Melbourne Girls Grammar School. The final third of the race now. It is still Melbourne Girls Grammar School lane one. Zaina Rabid, Stephanie Speller, Addie Dean, Caitlin Anthony, and Elia Polglazy there in the uh, cock seat of that crew. Furbank Grammar School in lane two. Then Abigail Bly, Sophie Penfold, Charlotte Elston, Tilly Shenfield, and uh, Jessica Collins. Strathcona looked to be third. Juliet Stanby, Olivia Harris, Eleanor Instant, Paige Guthridge, and Sophie Nettleton. And then Wrighton Girls lane four would be in fourth place. Mia Hoyle. Bridget Lucis, Anna Truong, Zara Grogan, and uh, Zoe Higgins in the cock seat of uh, that race as uh, that boat as well. But it is the uh, Caitlin Anthony Stroke crew here from Melbourne Girls Grammar School. We'll see another Anthony Stroking a crew, of course, in the uh, Open Eight Division One uh, coming up. The last race of the day, Emily Anthony of Melbourne Girls Grammar School, of course, in that race, part of the uh, incredible. Uh, Anthony Milne dynasty in, uh, in Australia and even Canadian rowing as well. But um, it's going to be a win here too to that crew from Melbourne Girls Grammar School who are clear by over a length still from Furbank second, Strathcona to third. They're right in uh, a line across the course here as they approach the finish. So lane one's going to get it by a length from lane two. They'll be our two qualifiers. Melbourne Girls Grammar School first, Furbank Grammar in second place. Third goes to Strathcona. And Wrighton and Girls, the far side, will finish in fourth place. Pretty much a link between each of those four crews as they came across the line in lane order. But it's Melbourne Girls Grammar School and Furbank Grammar who are through to the uh, A final of the Year 10 Division 2 uh, Coxed Quad Skull. So we've got one more semi-final here of the Year 10 Division 2 quad, and then we have some races from the 1500 metre start, the four semi-finals of the Open Division 1 single scale. Always controversial having four semi-finals, but we'll get to those races shortly for now. It's the second semi of the Year 10 Division 2 quad, Albert Park College racing in lane one, MLCQ in lane two, Loretto Turak in lane three, and Ballarat Grammar School in lane four as they're heading up towards the uh, the halfway mark uh, now of the race. Looking for the final two spots here into the A final of the Year 10 uh, Division 2 events. Lee does uh, look to be foot out there in the centre lanes. MLCQ and Loretto Turak. First crews who seem to come through the shadow there of the uh, the McIntyre Bridge. Loretto lane three. Zara Barre, Zara Bakovic, Lucy McComas, Minty Clements and Ivy Gafrida. The crew for Loretto. And then MLC beside them in lane two. Alice Van Onselen, Arabella Benedi, Emily Tian, Emma Ward and Isabel Cronin. Coached by Flynn Snowden. That uh, combination from MLC. They are certainly our top two. Third being fought out on either side of the course by Albert Park College and Ballarat Grammar School. 
The Ballarat Grammar Crew, Cleo Tindall, Laura Gollan, Bess Morrison, Kate Johnson and Bella Jenkins. Coached by Robert Draffin and uh, Marty Francis as well, the Director of Rowing from Ballarat Grammar School. And uh, in lane one, it's Albert Park, Nami Hibbard, Elise Doig, Millicent Drack, Michaela Stambelzeev and Giovanna Fafandi. They are coached by Eric Schrader, that combination from Albert Park. But the two crews back out in the bright sunshine, having gone through the shadows of the Harrison Bridge, uh, Loretto Turek and MLCQ, two of our quarterfinal winners in the centre lanes of the course in the, uh, the last of our quad scale semifinals uh, for this regatta. We've got just the singles to go and then our finals will begin shortly. But it's Loretto and MLC going uh, for the top two spots here, certainly well clear of both Albert Park and Ballarat Grammar School. But it's uh, going to be Loretto who take the win here in a few strokes time ahead of uh, MLC. Ballarat Grammar School charging home too late. Down the uh, southern side of the course, they'll get close, but not quite close enough in the final analysis. It'll be Loretto by a length, MLC in second place. Two-thirds of a length back to Ballarat Grammar, who certainly finished strongly there in lane four. They take third and go to the B final, along with Albert Park College, lane one, who'll finish in fourth spot. But it's Loretto Turak and MLCQ who take the top two spots in the year 10, Division Two uh, quad scale. Second semi-final, they will go through to the A final of that race. And uh, third and fourth place will go to the uh, the B final. A final race, 453, will take place at 2.33 uh, this afternoon for the year 10 Division Two uh, quad skull. Uh, so that concludes the, uh, the year 10 semis. We do just have now the four semifinals of the Open Division 1 female school single skull. And they are racing in the first of those races. Now, despite there being four semis, only two, in fact, are qualification races for the A and B finals. So our first two races will uh, determine the A and B finals. And then semis three and four are for the E and F finals. So again, with such a big field in the uh, Open single skull, there are a uh, number of races required to set our fields all the way down uh, to an F final with uh, so many entries in the open single skull race. And we're using the 1500 metre start for uh, these events. Looks like our second semi final lined up in the held start blocks, and the first one already making its way uh, down the course. You can see there the, uh, the slight bend. In the early stage of the course, which uh, has correct itself as they continue down the course. So two uh, bends, one each way, which makes it still a very fair and even course for racing here on the, uh, the Barwon River with the four lanes across the course. And in this first semi, we have uh, Mia Kachab of Albert Park College racing in lane one. Alice Joyce from Christian College Geelong in lane two. Clyde McCarthy from Halebury in lane three, and Elizabeth Brahout from Christian College Geelong Racing in lane four. So two local scholars here, no doubt very familiar with the uh, waters here on the Barwon River course. Racing here for the, uh, well, the Christian College Geelong in uh, both cases. Alice Joyce coached by Tony Lawless in lane two. Elizabeth Brahout coached by Anita Whitehouse and Wayne Nitschke in lane four. So both scholars, I believe, from the uh, the Barwon Rowing Club. His boat shed, of course, is... Uh, just around the corner here from the uh, the finish line. We also have Mia Kachab from Albert Park College racing in lane one, who is uh, back a little on that uh, right-hand side of the screen. And uh, I'd also keep a very close eye on Clodagh McCarthy from Halebury, the uh, Susan Andrews coach scholar, of course, from the Ngambi Rowing Club as well, who's had such success this year rowing with... Uh, with Kate McNeil in uh, double skull and pair events, but they've separated here into single skulls. We'll see Kate McNeil later on in the uh, the final of the year 10 single skull. But Clodagh McCarthy rowing uh, upper division in the open at single skull event and uh, in a very good race here alongside Alice Joyce, the uh, scallop from the Barwon Rowing Club or uh, Christian College Geelong, of course, as she's entered in this event. So certainly two of the favourites uh, for this event, unsurprisingly here, in the centre lanes, Alice Joyce is the uh, the state champion in the uh, single skull. But Clyde McCarthy too had a very successful state championships, collecting a, a number of uh, medals as well. And 
She's coached, as I mentioned, by uh, Susan Andrews at the uh, the Nagambi Rowing Club, but rowing, of course, here for the uh, the Halebury School. As uh, these top two certainly are, uh, are well clear of the scholars in the outside lanes. Elizabeth Hout of Christian College, Geelong. And uh, Mia Kachab from Albert Park College. Mia Kachab was, uh, was ninth at the state championship, so we're in the B final there. But uh, certainly an experienced uh, single sculler as well. This event, of course, last year was won by Zara Kafuri, rowing for the, uh, the Cedar College. A very experienced sculler at the uh, Yarra Yarra Club already. We know up in Sydney preparing uh, for the uh, the national championships, which do commence at 8 a.m. tomorrow from the Sydney International Regatta Centre at uh, Penrith. But, uh, we'll have a new champion shortly, or later on uh, today at least, in the uh, open single sculling event. That final is right towards the end of the program. It is the, I'm not sure what the word is, for fifth last race of the day, but uh, it's three races before the penultimate race in any case. Uh, race 471, the final of the Open Division 1 single skull, and it will feature, as we expected, both uh, the uh, Tony Lawless coach sculler, Alice Joyce from Christian College, Geelong, and the Susan Andrews coach sculler, Clodagh McCarthy from uh, Halebury in lanes two and three in the centre here of the course. They've rode through 1,400 metres now of this 1,500 metre course, and uh, well clear still is Alice Joyce by about two lengths ahead of Clodagh McCarthy, but both scullers, you can see, have a little bit left in reserve, I reckon, for the final that's coming up uh, this afternoon. 3.43, we'll see these top two scholars back on the course, racing for the gold medal. But it is Alice Joyce on her home waters here for Christian College Geelong, who takes out the first semi-final of the Open Singles Skull. Wins it comfortably by two and a half lengths. Clodagh McCarthy is going to drift across the line here and uh, sit and watch. That's a little bit risky, but she'll get there in the end in second place uh, by about two lengths. So it's Alice Joyce from Clodagh McCarthy. They both qualify for the A final. Third goes to Elizabeth Brahout of Christian College, Geelong. And fourth, Mia Kachab of Albert Park College in race 350. We're up to now race 350 of 475 at this weekend's regatta. So still 125 races to go. Plenty of action throughout the day, right through until about 4 o'clock this afternoon. At uh, semi-final two, is well and truly on its way, again featuring uh, four of the, the top-ranked scholars in this fleet. Adelaide Robb of the uh, Victory Lutheran School and the uh, Corowa Rowing Club in lane one. The Scott School Albury, that's Anastasia McFarlane racing in lane two. So two of the uh, Corowa scholars there, both coached by Wes Canney and Emily Tidd. Another local scholar in the form of Beatrix Hearn from uh, Sacred Heart, who is uh, well placed there in, uh, in lane three. And then also in lane four, we have Sophia Lyons from uh, Furbank Grammar, who will be back in fourth place at this stage with about a third of the race uh, still to go. But our two scholars from Corowa and also Beatrix Hearn of Sacred Heart. Beatrix Hearn was fourth at the, uh, the state championships behind Alice Joyce, who just won the uh, previous semi final. Sophia Lyons also competed at the state championships and that uh, rode into uh, 14th position in the end. Adelaide Robb, a lightweight row. She rode the lightweight single at the state championships and finished in uh, fourth place in that event. We heard, of course, from Anthony de Cosmo uh, yesterday, just after lunch break, about her progression through to Lightweight rowing. She'll race for Victoria in the national championships on the interstate regatta next Sunday. But she did say at school she had no idea that uh, interstate rowing or lightweight rowing really even existed. But uh, certainly for Adelaide Rob, she's already had some success at lightweight level uh, and is doing so well here also in the open single skull event alongside Beatrix Hearn from uh, Sacred Heart. So they are clearly our top two. Adelaide Rob of Victory Luther in lane one, Beatrix Hearn of Sacred Heart in lane three uh, would be the race leader, I'd suggest. So we're going to get uh, two scholars from Geelong through to the final here, which will have plenty of local interest in it. And uh, Beatrix Hearn will have the centre lane, it seems, alongside Alice Joyce. So it'll be the two Geelong scholars in lanes two and three. 
Adelaide Rob, the lightweight from Victory Luther in a clear second place, still ahead of Sophia Lyons of Furbank and Anastasia McFarlane of the Scott School. But it's Beatrix turn also, I think, rowing within herself here in the closing strokes of the race. A comfortable win by about two and a half lengths. So Beatrix turn first for Sacred Heart. She's through to the final, along with Adelaide Rob from uh, Victory Luther. And third will go to the green and gold colours of Furbank Grammar School on lane four, Sophia Lyons and Anastasia McFarlane will finish in fourth spot on uh, lane two. So uh, McFarlane and Lyons will go through to the B final of the uh, open single skull. That race coming up at uh, 1.08, that uh, B final. So that is after the uh, the lunch break, a fairly short lunch break on today's schedule, it must be said, from about uh, midday until 12.26. A little rest on this big day of racing, as we have uh, as I mentioned before. Still about 124 races to move through here on the both 1,000 and 1,500 metre course. But uh, we've still got two semi-finals. They're officially styled as here in the Open Division 1 Singles Cup. This event is sponsored by Eleven Australia. We do thank Eleven Australia for their substantial support of this regatta and particularly all of the Open Division 1 events. Eleven Australia, the uh, the sponsors here of the Open Single, the Double, the, uh, the Eight, the Quad and the Four. So all of the five Division 1 Open events, which will be the last five races of today's regatta. But, uh, This is in race 352, which is the uh, officially the third semi final. We understand there has been uh, a scratching here from uh, Ballarat Grammar School, lane three. So it is just a race in two between uh, Footscray High School, Indiana Beatty on lane one. She's coached by Jonathan Sargent and Rosie Beadle of Wright and Girls School in lane two, who is uh, comfortably in the front here, the scholar from uh, Wrighton. So first and second here should both progress through to the A final. I'm not sure if that scratching will change the progression. In fact, it may well be the case that an F final uh, may not be required, depending what happens in the fourth and final semi-final uh, still to come. Been raging against more than two semi-finals for years, and no one's listening to me. But uh, it is uh, it is the case that these are uh, semi-finals essentially in name only. They are qualification races for the E and F finals. So the winner here, who looks certain to be Rosie Beadle, will qualify uh, for the E final and potentially be joined there also by Indiana Beatty of uh, Footscray High School. The fourth and final semi also on the course here. And then our finals are set to begin very, very soon. It'll be the C final of the Year 9, Division 9 quad, which uh, will be on the course or time for 8.52. In fact, that race uh, probably soon uh, to commence, I would uh, suggest. But uh, we have these two single sculling races first. And uh, Rosie Beadle of Wright and Girls has led all the way here in this third semi final. She'll go through comfortably to the E final of the Open Division 1 female school single skull. That E final won't be too far away, in fact, because all the, uh, the minor finals take place, certainly on the uh, the pre-lunch program. And then uh, Indiana Beatty of uh, Footscray High School. It's great to see Footscray High, one of the schools we've joined the uh, Victorian School Girls Rowing Program in uh, in recent years. Rowing in the distinctive, uh, largely red colours there is uh, Indiana Beatty of uh, Footscray High who comes across now and confirms that uh, second spot in that race. So she uh, also should move through to the E-final of the Open Division 1 single skull. That E-final, by the way, will take place at... Uh, one minute to one, 12.59, the E final of the uh, open single, just preceded by the F final of uh, that same event, if that uh, if that race is required. Because once again, we're looking to confirm a full field here in race 3.53, but they are 
all there now. Rosemary Morris of Carey is on the inside lane, almost still obscured from view amongst the uh, the trees on the, the banks of the bar, but she is there alongside Freya Arndt from Shelford Girls Grammar School in lane two, and Imogen Tomlinson from St. Francis de Sales, another of the Corowa Rowing Club athletes here. A large, a strong sculling squad from Corowa. That distinctive bright red boat of Imogen Tomlinson coached by Wes Canny and Emily Tidd. But she'd be in second place behind Kerry's Rosemary Morris, who is uh, coming into clear of view now down lane one. So first and second here will go to the E final. And then the third place Sculler only should go to the F final, who looks likely to be the uh, Shelford Sculler Freya Arndt. Back behind us, our quads. I think it's still moving into line there for the first of our finals. It didn't quite look to be at race pace, those uh, Year 9, Division 9 uh, quad scales. In the meantime, we'll stick with the action unfolding in front of us here. The last 200 metres of uh, the last of our semi-finals for uh, the head of the schoolgirls for 2024. It's all finals to come after this, but this is the open single scale. Division 1, sponsored by 11 Australia. And it certainly is Rosemary Morris of Kerry. Leading it now from Imogen Tomlinson of St. Francis de Sales. Those two scholars look set to meet again in the uh, E final coming up later on today of the Open Division 1 single skull. The E final at 12.59, the F final at 12.56. And the last 100 metres of the course now does uh, come the sculler in yellow from a Carey Grammar. Rosemary Morris clear by a couple of lengths from that red boat of Imogen Tomlinson. On the other side of the course, still great conditions here at the Barwon River so far this morning and hopefully right throughout the day as our single scholars enjoy these uh, the calm waters here. And Rosemary Morris has a quick check of the finish line and comes across to uh, take the win in semi-final four of the Open Division One female school single scale. Three lengths clear it will be for Rosemary Morris over Imogen Tomlinson of St. Francis de Sales in second place, they're both through to the E final race, 427, and then Freya Art of Shelford will finish in third place. Uh, Scullers head off beneath the uh, the Moorable Street Bridge and conclude the semi-final action uh, for this year's regatta. Our first final is uh, just underway. In fact, from the 1,000-metre start as we go back up the course, this is the C-final of the U9 Division 9 female school Cox Quad Scull. So a big program of uh, finals coming up for the rest of today. Still about 120 races in total. And here's, of course... As has been mentioned a few times, one of the great features of the head of the schoolgirls regatta is that every athlete does get the chance to row a final in some form on the last day of the regatta. We go down in a couple of events to, I think, F and even G finals in some of those uh, quad skull events with a substantial number of entries. But uh, it uh, is a great way for the crews to find their, uh, their right level to race at for a final. In many cases, these crews have still been through uh, two or three races to make it uh, just to this C final, uh, as is the case here in the Year 9 Division 9 event. So the field of four here, two crews from Wesley College, lanes one and two, Melbourne Girls College in lane three, and uh, Caulfield Grammar School in lane four in this uh, C final. So racing effectively for spots uh, nine to 12 in the event overall. Girls College away well, certainly in uh, lane three. The Melbourne Girls College have one crew in the C final, two crews in the B final, and uh, we will have another crew in the A final as well. So great depth at the uh, Melbourne Girls College program in this uh, at the year nine level. 
It's them on screen alongside Caulfield Grammar School out in lane four. The Caulfield crew, Abby Williams, Olive Palmer, Cece Shen, Anastasia Sprekos and Lola Christofitis. And uh, ahead of their Melbourne Girls College, Parry Nadu, Esme James, Nina Augustinus, Jacqueline Andro and Charlotte Hume. The uh, crew there with the uh, white MGC on their backs. To the stroke side or the, uh, the right hand side of those MGC rowers is the first of two crews from Wesley College. Wesley Lane 2. Rebecca Gowans, Florence Hall, Harriet May, Tess Riley, and Esme Hughes. And then Wesley. So they're in lane one. Raina Odgers, Angel Huang, Grace McLennan, Sienna Morris, and Olivia Storen. The uh, Cox of the crew from uh, Wesley, or one of the two crews from Wesley. Again, a reminder that the regatta shop is now open for business. It is at 9 a.m. and uh, pre-ordered merchandise remains available for collection. So please get in as early as you can today and collect your pre-orders from prior to the regatta. And the regatta shop uh, available here today for your official commemorative 40th anniversary head of the schoolgirls uh, merchandise as well. But uh, if you've made any pre-orders, please get in now and collect those from the regatta shop, White Marquee, behind the spectator tents on the northern side of the river. Now, we just saw some the Wesley crew on lane one having to, uh, and still in fact, throwing one down, it seems. The uh, the bow girl of that boat has had an equipment issue and they're dropping, uh, as you'd expect, well off the pace of our leading crews. But the race still being led by Melbourne Girls College on lane three. You've got a length or so now on uh, the race for second between the other Wesley crew and also uh, Caulfield Grammar School on the far side of the course. So it's Melbourne Girls College sitting comfortably in front here, looking set to take out the opening final of the head of the school girls for 2024. Clear by about uh, two and a half lengths from either Caulfield or Wesley. The race for second place, so 10th overall, will go right down to the finish line, I'd suggest. Maybe Caulfield on that southern side just getting the best of Wesley late in the race, but two lengths clear is the crew from Melbourne Girls College. You will take out the first final here, the C final of the Year 9, Division 9, Cox Quad Skull, and it goes the way of the crew from Melbourne Girls College on lane three. At Melbourne Girls College by two lengths, beating home Caulfield Grammar lane four in second place, about a length and a half then back to Wesley College lane two. That's the Wesley number three crew, at least as they're entered here, and Wesley's number four crew down lane one with uh, just a few strokes to go. They had that equipment issue uh, earlier in the race and uh, are still coming home with just the uh, the stern tree able to uh, to row the boat so uh, great work from Wesley to conclude the course here a great racing experience regardless to row in a C final at the head of the school girls and we hope all these girls will come back uh, next year to uh, do it all again as part of the year 10 program at Wesley College Just a couple of strokes to go for Wesley, and they're across now in fourth place. Here's the B final now of the Year 9 Division 9 quad. Two crews here from Melbourne Girls College and two crews from Loretto Turak. So one of those two schools to emerge victorious here. Melbourne Girls College in one and two. The lane two crew from Melbourne Girls College is the one that rode our, uh, our re-row at 7.25 this morning. So this is their second race in the space of 90 minutes. Melbourne Girls College lane two. But uh, they're trailing Melbourne Girls College lane one, I would think. That's the... Uh, well, the number 14 crew as they're entered here at least. That's Poppy Joyner, Jinx Taylor Moore, Ruby Black, Tara Tarquinho, and Zara Bradley for Melbourne Girls College. Very tight between the two Loretto crews on the far side. I would think it's lane four. Who'd be in second place. Portia Rigetti, Sarah Peluso, Maddie Smith, Cleo Connolly, and Zoe Sheehan for Loretto. Beside them also from Loretto Turak is uh, Matilda Loy, Joanna Vakrinos, Maggie Jones, Amelia Rakadrendron, and Jess Huggins. 
And then Melbourne Girls College in lane two. Lily Millfall, Reagan Tonner, Maya Stoinovich, Julie Chang, and Willow Garvey have gone the hard way around. They've had to row that one extra race as well after that collision late yesterday and uh, are now back on the course for the, uh, the second time in 90 minutes in fourth place uh, in this particular race. But it does look like Loretto Turak are going to claim their first final win of the day after Melbourne Girls College took out the opening C final. It's going to be Loretto Turak here in the B final of the U9 Division 9 quad. He'll go away and take this by uh, a couple of links in the end. It might be Loretto 1 and 2. In fact, that will indeed be the case. Lane 3, Loretto, two lengths back, will finish in second place, just edging out the first of those two crews from Melbourne Girls College by a half a link. So Melbourne Girls College lane 1, finish in third, and Melbourne Girls College lane 2, finish in fourth place after a very tiring morning. They were in the last race of the day yesterday afternoon. A re-row at 7.25 this morning and now a B-final just after 9 o'clock. A great effort there from Melbourne Girls College in lane two. But it's Loretto lane four who take the race win in the, uh, the B-final of the year nine division nine quad. CMB finals of Division 9 concluded. The A finals, of course, will all be held at the end of the day. So 129 will see the A final of the Year 9 Division 9 event. But uh, we now go to the C final of the Year 9 Division 8 quad. Wesley College Lane 2, Caulfield Grammar in 3. Melbourne Girls College in, uh, in 3, in fact, and Strathcona in 4. Race on screen there. Is, I think is actually the uh, the B final now also underway with Melbourne uh, MLCQ and the Geelong College there in the centre lines. That's the B final just away from the 1,000 metre start. And the C final nearing its conclusion and being led by uh, Melbourne Girls College uh, once again, narrowly it seems, beside uh, Caulfield Grammar School Lane 2. Melbourne Girls College combination, Claire Otmar, Finlay Barry, and Eve Panzera, April Alexander, and Malisha Takuro Lay. Caulfield Grammar School and Strathcona will battle out for second and third. The Caulfield crew, Amelie Gill, Holly Crawford, Harriet Druxer, Maya Hunt, and Imogen Fife. And Strathcona. Over in lane four, Holly Ahern, Olivia Coldrick, Mahek Jitkara, Chloe Osborne Smith, and Evelyn Menzies. But uh, Melbourne Girls College out to defend their uh, their perfect record so far in C finals. They won Division 9 a couple of races ago and looks set to take out now the win in Division 8 as well. Still very tight for second. Caulfield Grammar School just at this stage ahead of Strathcona with still a couple of strokes to go for those crews. The win will go the way, certainly, of Melbourne Girls College on lane three. Second is going to be tight here with Caulfield and Strathcona hitting it very close together. I think Caulfield may have just kept their boat in front there late in the race ahead of uh, Strathcona and fourth will go the way of the crew from Wesley College but certainly Melbourne Girls College the uh, winners there of the C final in the year nine division eight quad And uh, it will be Caulfield Grammar School who gets second in that race uh, by 0.22 of a second. It looked like over Strathcona in third. So Melbourne Girls College first, Caulfield Grammar second, Strathcona third, Wesley in fourth place in race 356. The C final of the year nine, Division eight quad, but the B final approaching two, well past the halfway mark now. In fact, the four crews here Melbourne Girls Grammar School lane one, Geelong College lane two, MLCQ in three, and Melbourne Girls College in four. Long College looked to get out uh, early on. We saw some vision at the start a couple of minutes ago. And they do still sit down in a pretty strong position of that crew from the Geelong College. Lulu Pearson, Emma Hunter, Grace Jarman, Alice Ashby, 
and Lily Bug, coached by Duncan Ashby. Either side of them, the crew is pushing hard. Melbourne Girls Grammar School Lane 1, Arabella Pappas, Henrietta Beale, Ariana Katsuris, Lucy Ferry and Charlie Santic. And MLC Q in 3, and Tara Kanoidi, Sienna Varese, Jeris Luzio, Lily Middleton and Katarina Coleman. The uh, crew for MLC who are possibly the biggest threat here late in this race to the combination from the Geelong College. Melbourne Girls Grammar School still thereabouts as well. Then on the far side, it is Melbourne Girls College, Tess Dallimore, Maggie Grossbarn, Ella Mudd, Laura Abu Al Rob, and Lily Vlahovic on lane four. In fact, very close to the transit lane to that crew from Melbourne Girls College. But it's the Geelong College who lead here. He pushed either side of the, them from MLC and also Melbourne Girls Grammar School. Every place so important here to these crews, but it's still the Geelong College out in front by almost a length. It'll be tight for second place. Maybe MLC over at Melbourne Girls Grammar School, but the Geelong College crew will take the win here in the B final of the Year 9 Division 8 quad scale. Geelong College first, MLC will get second, and third will go to Melbourne Girls Grammar School. Tight finish there, just over a length between uh, all three crews, really, and then fourth will go the way of Melbourne Girls College back on the far side of the course. who are back in their lane now and across the finish line in fourth spot in race 357. The B final of the Year 9 Division 8 Cox Quad Skull. And from that B final, of course, the A final will come up on this afternoon's program. It'll be at 1.32 this afternoon. The A final in the Year 9 Division 8 uh, Quad but we have now the first of our D finals on the course. A two boat race here between uh, the Geelong College. Looking to win two races in a row. But uh, Wright and Girls, I would suggest, have a fair bit to say about that. They lead pretty comfortably here in the D final. Race 359 also underway. That's the C final of the U9 Division 7 quad scalp. See the St. Catherine's crew there closer to the camera. Gibson Grammar School, a bit messy out of the start. As they were, we saw a Gibson Grammar crew a few races ago and a similar issue uh, out of the uh, start of their race. But uh, Wesley College also too, making hard work of the early strokes. And then Caulfield Grammar School on the far side of the course. But St. Catherine's away there closer to the camera in the C final of the Year 9 Division 7 quad scale as those four crews are uh, on their way down the course. And again, great vision from behind of all the crews lining up for the uh, subsequent races to come. Three or four sets of boats lined up across the course as they continue three minutes apart here all the way through today's racing. But down to the finish line, it's Wright and Girls in lane three. Bridget Gannon, Rainer O'Loughlin, Clara Papamaku, Evelyn Huang and Gaia Ballon. The uh, crew from Wright who have come well under the, uh, the Harrison Bridge now. And they're about four lengths clear of the Geelong College in second. Olivia Hardwick, Zara Kelly, Emily Nelson, Mia Chen, and Emily Gilchrist, coached by Duncan Ashby. So it looks like in this D final, it'll be uh, Wright and Girls who'll win the race, and they'll eventually rank uh, 13th overall in the Year 9 Division 7 quad. So Wright and come across and uh, take the win, and the Geelong College will finish in second place. So it'll be 14th place overall for the uh, locals from the uh, Geelong College. A couple of strokes to go to complete the 1,000-metre course there for the crew in the dark green colours. C final continues now in the U9 Division 7 quad. So the start of that race minutes ago and that uh, continues to be St. Catherine's who are out in front here the uh, lane one crew Tanya Papadopoulos Maya Agnostopoulos Ruby Moore Madeline Finjacane and Saskia Gelbach the uh, crew from St. Catherine's that's Caulfield Grammar School on the far side of the course I think Wesley would be second Caulfield third the crew there under the uh, McIntyre Bridge as well. But uh, it would be Wesley in second place, Hannah Corgi, Charlotte Turner, Coco Van Hove, Charlia Holtam and Flora Feldman. And then Caulfield, Zoe Ford, Layla Sinclair, Isabel Ducevic, Astasia Cameron and Imogen Fife. And the B final now is also underway. 
distinctive colours of Furbank there, but MLCQ have got the best of the start in the B final of the Year 9 Division 7 quad skull. MLC uh, next to Furbank there in the uh, middle lanes of the course as those crews make their way through the opening couple of hundred metres of that race and a busy Barwon River behind them. But here's the crew from uh, MLC. That is the, uh, the leading crew now of the, the B final. As the C final now approaches its conclusion too, heading underneath the uh, Harrison Bridge, still being led by St. Catharines, the crew closest to the northern bank. You're back out into the uh, clear sunlight in the final stretch of the course now. Wesley College in second. Still Caulfield Grammar third and uh, Gibson Grammar School. Never really got into this race after being uh, left slightly behind at the start. That's the crew of Lunny, Liberty Bar, Tora Coleman, Millie Gilmore, Helena Smith and Jasmine Matat from... Uh, Gippsland Grammar School with the dark green blades, but it's St. Catherine's out in front here in this C final. A good race for second and third between Wesley and uh, Caulfield Grammar with Wesley still at this stage. They're in second spot, but the win and uh, ninth place overall in the Year 9 Division 7 quad is going to go the way of the lane one crew from St. Catherine's with just a couple of strokes to go to complete the course. St. Catherine's lane one will get across for the win. Just under a length then it will be to Wesley in second place. Similar margin back to Caulfield Grammar, who finished third and fourth will go to the uh, combination from uh, Gippsland Grammar School in uh, lane two. Four crews in the B final now, approaching the uh, final quarter of the race here in the uh, United Division 7 quad scale. Strathcona lane one, MLC in two, Furbank lane three, Melbourne Girls College lane four, and it continues as it was uh, from the start. The MLC Q crew in the ascendancy, Kate McCluskey, Aphrodite Bablis, Grace Vandervert, Scarlett Sutcliffe, and Annabelle Roy there for MLC. Furbank. In the yellow colours beside them, Sophie Rothstein, Soa Raval, Miller Trulison, Madeline Gillett and Lauren Box. Melbourne Girls College, the far side, Ayla Christie, Samantha Booth, Layla Dunnell, Chelsea Phillips and Belle Blakey. And Strathcona on lane one, Beatrice Stoltz, Gigi Giles, Philip Assurance, Mia De Gabriel, and Cecilia Bailey. The uh, crew there for Strathcona. But Furbank making a late charge here on uh, MLC. Strathcona too coming quickly. Melbourne Girls College about two lengths from first to fourth here. But uh, MLC have uh, caught a crab there towards the bow into that boat. So it's going to be a win in the end to the crew from Furbank going away from MLC. who've recovered now and will try and hold on to second spot. But uh, Furbank Grammar School will get across and take the win. MLC go again. Can they just hold on ahead of Melbourne Girls College or Strathcona? They will indeed. Very tight for third and fourth. It'll be MLC second. And then uh, Strathcona or Melbourne Girls College in third and fourth place. Very tight there indeed. As uh, they made an interesting late in the race. But a clear win certainly to the crew from Furbank Grammar School in that B final. Race 360 of the Year 9 Division 7 Cox Quad. First, Furbank Grammar. Second, MLCQ. Third will go to Strathcona Lane 1. Fourth place, Melbourne Girls College. Uh, not much between those two crews in the end, but Furbank Grammar, certainly the race winners there in that B final. The D final now of the Year 9 Division 6 squad. Steve St. Catherine's 
We will in lane one. Ballarat Clarendon lane two. Gibson Grammar School lane three. And Caulfield Grammar in lane four. Tight between the two crews on the southern side. Gippsland and Caulfield. St. Catherine's doing very well, but on this northern bank, I have a margin back to uh, Ballarat Clarendon, who'd be in fourth spot. So it's the extremities of the course doing best here. St. Catherine's crew of Hazel Wilson, Zia Armstrong, Natasha Sims, Lissett Shu, and Charlotte Bell. So on the far side, I would think that the uh, Caulfield Grammar crew Good chance uh, here as well. Sophie Nilsson, Lucy Padula, Elizabeth Moore, Hannah Gansey, and Zara Klazinski. Alongside them, the yellow boat then of uh, Gibson Grammar. Mila Lazaro, Charlotte Birham, Chelsea Rawlings, Lacey Drew, and Mia Del Buso. And then Ballarat Clarendon back uh, behind them. But it is Caulfield Grammar School moving up uh, just about on terms. In fact, slightly ahead now of St. Catherine's. It would be the cruising lanes. Four and one racing for the win here in this D final of the year nine. Division 6 event, but Caulfield Grammar School do have their boat in front, certainly of St. Catherine's and Gibson Grammar School coming late to at St. Catherine's as well. But it'll be Caulfield Grammar who will go away and take the win here in this deep final. They cross the line now, almost a length clear of St. Catherine's on this side. So Caulfield Grammar first, St. Catherine's second. Third goes to Gibson Grammar. And fourth will be Ballarat Clarendon on lane two in a couple of strokes time as uh, they approach the finish line now. But the D final certainly goes the way of Caulfield Grammar School racing in lane four. As the D final concludes, the C final gets underway back at the uh, thousand metre start. Right and Girls Lane 1, Kerry Grammar in 2, Furbank Grammar in 3, the Geelong College in Lane 4, a sea of yellow in this race, certainly in Lanes 1, 2 and 3 at least. Right and Kerry away, just a bit quicker than Furbank in the opening strokes of this race, the C final of the Year 9 Division 6 event. Reminder again that the regatta shop is open for uh, business again today. The last day of the regatta, go and check out the uh, commemorative 40th anniversary Head of the Schoolgirls merchandise. And uh, also please collect your pre-orders. A lot of uh, paid pre-orders from uh, before the regatta still to be collected. At least that was the case as of about 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon when they uh, closed for the day. But uh, back open from 9am today, the regatta shop. So please head along there as soon as possible if you have some pre-orders to be collected or if you want to have a look at the other uh, various shirts and jumpers and other uh, attire available for purchase from the regatta shop. They are in a new location this year in the big white marquee behind the spectator scents on the northern bank of the Barwon River. So please, uh, as always, head along and uh, check out the regatta shop, one of the great supporters of... Uh, of this regatta and uh, so many regattas around the uh, country of course too at this uh, rather busy time of year <laughs> do also want to remind all athletes of the importance of uh, rehydrating uh, today temperature forecast set to reach uh, 30 degrees later on so it is certainly uh, likely to be a little bit warmer than uh, it was yesterday which in turn was slightly warmer than Friday it was, so uh, please ensure, uh, athletes especially, that you do uh, remain hydrated uh, throughout the day. It is important, certainly, to drink uh, plenty of water given the uh, hot temperatures expected later on in the day. And again, a reminder, too, about the uh, blue-green algae precautions. It is important that all crews do uh, wash their boats as soon as you come off the water to minimise any contact uh, with the water. If you do, uh, for some reason, come in contact with the water, we do encourage you all to uh, have a shower and clean yourself uh, straight away. There are showers available in the bottom level of the Jeff Sykes Centre. And if you do have any uh, ill effects, please seek first aid uh, immediately. Here comes the C final of the Year 9 Division 6 quad. Past halfway now and uh, still not too much between those three crews on this northern side. The, uh, the largely yellow-clad crews, Wright and Kerry and uh, Furbank. Right in combination, lane one. Mandy Sutapala, Inez 
from Madassa, Isla Carpenter, Amelia Cross and Emily Bowler. Carey in lane two, India Hines, Darcy Munro, Archie Anson, Kalia Catapan and Lauren Fellano. And then Furbank lane three, Phoebe Fife, Charlie Henderson, Elizabeth Potter, Rosie Kelly and Lola Thompson. And then back to uh, the Geelong College, some uh, three or four lengths further back. Charlotte Wardle, Abby Chan, Lucy McNamara, Sass Aldridge and Fleur Gasson, coached by Caitlin Murphy. But our top three crews emerge pretty much together from the shadows of the Harrison Bridge and set sail for the finish line here, right in close to the Northern Bank, Carey alongside them. The Furbank crew certainly moving pretty quickly down lane three as well in this uh, C final race. So it's Furbank just, it seems, from right nor Carey who are very, very close together in the race for second and third, but Furbank looks to be pulling away now late in this uh, C final. The crew there on lane three, and they should come away and win this race in a few strokes time. Still very tight, but Wrighton and Carey is right and fight back over Carey in the race for second and third. Furbank Grammar here will get the win on lane three. Wrighton just holding off Carey still with a couple of strokes to go as they push towards the line, and it'll be Wrighton by a canvas over Carey in uh, second and third. And a great finish between those three crews who are pretty much inseparable all the way down the course. The Geelong College will cross soon in fourth place on the far side. And complete race 362. But Furbank Grammar, the winners on lane three. Second to right in lane one. And third, Carey on lane two in the C final of the year nine, Division six quad. The B final now on the course. In fact, about two thirds of the way along the course. And don't forget the A final coming up at uh, 1.38 in the Year 9 Division 6 race. So the A finals all taking place uh, later on in the day. But this B final being led now, it seems, by Wesley College on lane 2. And led pretty comfortably too by the uh, the Wesley combination. Sabella Teal, Anuska Stevens, Alex Reg, Alyssa Cleave and Lila Johnson. Strathcona and Genazano Racing for second and third, it seems, with Loretto Ballarat in lane four. This stage uh, would be in fourth position. Once again, as we saw in the previous race, very tight, the race for second and third place, but a clear lead, certainly, uh, to that Wesley crew. Strathcona lane three, Miranda Knell, Jessica Janetsky, Claudia Crivelli, Charlotte Gibbons, and Hayley Janetsky. And Genazano in one, Matilda Swan, Chiara Puglazi, Paige Cavalliccio, uh, Nelly Major and Matilda Smith, the uh, crew there from uh, Genazano. And it's certainly Wesley still well clear here by a couple of links. Uh, Strathcona do look to be in second place now ahead of the crew from Genazano. But certainly Wesley College will take the win here in the B final of the Year 9 Division 6 event as they come across the line now. Wesley College, lane two, take the win in race three, 63. Second to Strathcona. About a length clear in the end of Genazano, who will finish third. And Loretto Ballarat on the far side will be across in fourth place, just under a length behind the uh, crew from Genazano. So a clear win out of Wesley College in the B final. U9 Division 6 as we move on up uh, through the categories now. To uh, U9 Division 5 now with the uh, E final on the course. Turak College leading it on lane two, it would seem. Long Grammar School in one, Turak College in two, Fairbank Grammar in three, Ballarat Clarendon in lane four. We're going to trick for new players, which I think I only learned at this regard of last year. Turak College is not in Turak at all. It is now located in, uh, in Mount Eliza on the uh, Mornington Peninsula in Victoria. So a very nice part of the world, but uh, Turak College located to Mount Eliza many, many years ago now. But uh, has maintained the uh, Turak College name. And uh, they are certainly our race leaders here on lane two. Mary Bergen, Melissa Chen, Simone Adelaide, Scarlett Henderson and Heidi New, the uh, crew from uh, Turak College of Mount Eliza. Furbank Grammar School, probably second. A good race with Geelong Grammar, who are up the uh, the northern lane. The Furbank crew, Sally Hugh, Deanna Corcoran, Daisy Welsh, Mia Black and Lucy Trist. And Geelong Grammar... In third now, uh, there's been an issue with that Turak College uh, boat. In fact, right in the shadows of the Harrison Bridge, there's an oar sticking up at a uh, pretty horrible angle for that uh, combination. So this race suddenly wide open with Turak College 
The uh, race leader's stranded uh, now about 150 metres out from the finish and uh, I reckon from there they'll do well to uh, get across even in third place because Furbank and Geelong Grammar School are going to uh, to go past them here. The Geelong Grammar crew in lane one, Luna Singer, Jazz Ward, Ella de Grant, Olivia Huang and Angela He. But it's uh, certainly Furbank who've taken advantage here of that stricken crew from uh, Turak College. And Furbank now have this by a couple of links ahead of uh, Geelong Grammar School lane one who uh, will get themselves up certainly into a clear second spot. Ballarat Clarendon to a chance for third place here. And uh, it's going to be a win certainly to Furbank Grammar in any case as they come across and uh, take the win. Furbank lane three, the winners of race 364. A uh, clear win in the end, about three lengths ahead of uh, Geelong Grammar School. And the, uh, the light blue canvas is on that uh, Distinctively coloured boat from Geelong Grammar. Ballarat Clarendon will indeed on the far side move up into a third spot. And Turak College still with just three quarters of the crew rowing. And unfortunately a, a very badly broken oar it looks like there in that boat from uh, Turak College. But they'll come across now and conclude the race in uh, fourth place. So well done to complete the 1,000 metres. Turak College in race 364. But the win will go to the uh, Furbank Grammar combination who have uh, got the win there on lane three. Geelong Grammar second, Ballarat Clarendon third and Turak College in fourth place. The D final quickly approaching now of the Year 9 Division 5 quarters. Well, a field of three here. Ballarat Grammar School lane one, Geelong College in two, Gibson Grammar School in three, but a strong lead here to the crew from Geelong College. Macy Keegan, Freya Howley, Lily Keenan, Lily Carmody, and Olivia Rodder, coached by Caitlin Murphy, well clear of uh, Gibson Grammar School, who are probably narrowly in second. That's Vanessa uh, Bahaja, Addison Orisic, Liana Barrett, Gemma Gibbons, and Isabel Lindray. And then Ballarat Grammar School in third place, but the Geelong College will come across and take the win here in this Year 9 Division 5 D final. A comfortable win, certainly, to uh, the uh, the local crew from the Geelong College. They head straight back around the corner and back to their boat. Shed after, of course, uh, washing their boat once they get off the water. Second place will go to that yellow shell from Gibson Grammar School on lane three. And third place will be Ballarat Grammar School who are racing on lane one. The Will Clark coach crew of Lizzie Muldoon, Ellie Finch, Tully Smith, Emily Morgan and Poppy Mills. The action continues back down the course. The C final now, race 366, about halfway through. Wright and Girls lane one, Genizano in two, Strathcona in three, and Carey lane four. Lane one looks prominent once again. The uh, crew from uh, Wrighton, Isabel Pender, Annabelle Lumu, Charlotte Herman, Ellie Anazakis, and Emma creswell Obea. The uh, combination from Wrighton, who certainly have a bit of a lead on Genizano next to them. But uh, some good racing on the other side too. Strathcona, we're just ahead of Carey. Strathcona in three. Miller Dickens, Rose Beaton, Lucinda Schenk, Willow Burrows and Immy Rice. And uh, Carey lane four. Alice Searle, Isla McDonald, Amber Thomas, Molly Thomas and Eva Levesky. The uh, Cox there of the crew, crew from uh, Carey. But it is seemingly Wrighton and Strathcona our top two here and uh, in fact probably the lead narrowly with Strathcona as they emerge first from the shadows of the Harrison Bridge and have a small advantage now over that crew from Wrighton who will have to uh, fight uh, off Carey too in the late stages of this race and then back to Genizano in fourth place coming down at lane two. Just over 100 metres to go but for our race leaders and Strathcona certainly have pushed their boat ahead now of uh, Wrighton and Carey who are battling out for second and third place. But uh, comfortably clear now it does look to be that uh, crew from Strathcona. Wrighton try and mount a late surge here still just ahead of Carey. But too far back to catch Strathcona. It'll be close for second and third but the win will go in this C final to the crew in Coral and Blue from Strathcona. Just on a link back to Wrighton in second place. We do hold off Carey by about half a link in the race for second and third. And then fourth place will go to Genizano in race uh, 366. It is uh, Strathcona, the winners of the C final of the Year 9 Division 5 at Cox to Quad. The 
B final is next and it's uh, well on its way down the course. 9.31 race, so pretty much back on scheduled time now. In fact, our 9.34 race just beginning now as well, which is the E final of the Year 9 Division 4 event. But before that, we have this B final approaching, uh, well past halfway, in fact, approaching the final quarter of the race. There's some vision ooh, from the start of that uh, E final. It seems there may have been a collision there between uh, Wesley and Gippsland Grammar School. But uh, they're off again together, those uh, two crews now. So hopefully no serious issues there, but some work to do definitely for Wesley and Gippsland now in the uh, first half of the E final of the Year 9 Division 4 race. But the B final in Year 9 Division 5 is approaching its conclusion and three crews lined up right across the course there. MLCQ in lane one, the Loretto Ballarat lane two, and St. Catherine's lane three are our three crews here, all going for top spot. St. Catherine's, Anya Crawford, Millie Monaghan, Annabelle Arnold, Lucille Parfit, and Eva Lee. Just ahead, I would think, of Loretto, Dakota Somerville, Isabel Wise, Angelina Ashby, Ava Taylor, and Olivia Vanalazuela. And then MLCQ just back a little in third place now. So St. Catherine's and Loretto Ballarat, our top two crews here. As they go towards the line, St. Catherine's will get the win by about half a length ahead of Loretto Ballarat in second place. So lane three from lane two and then lane one, MLC a length back in third place. And fourth goes to Caulfield Grammar School on the uh, southern side of the course. So St. Catherine's win the B final. They will finish in uh, fifth place overall. It will be in the U9 Division 5 quad. And uh, the A final of that race coming up at This E final continues now in the U9 Division 4 event. The race uh, does continue on its way. We did see Wesley and Gippsland a bit tangled up in the opening strokes of the race. And the two crews, Ballarat Grammar School Lane 3 and Caulfield Grammar Lane 4. And uh, Gibson Grammar have done well here for despite that early uh, tangle to move back uh, on terms with our top uh, two or three crews here alongside Ballarat and also uh, Caulfield. So a good recovery from them. For those who still use what used to, used to be called Twitter or X or whatever it is now, there's an interesting tweet that appeared from Martin Cross overnight, one of the, uh, the great international rowing commentators in uh, the UK of a collision that took place in a race yesterday uh, in Amsterdam of all places where uh, an eight has uh, really taken on a couple of pylons at speed during a race, known appropriately, of course, for the Dutch as the Heineken Cup, but uh, a serious collision there, which uh, did roll the eight. It appears there were no injuries from that, but uh, some pretty uh, vicious footage for those who want to follow Martin Cross on the site, formerly known as Twitter. But here comes Ballarat Grammar School, still narrowly edging Gibson Grammar and Caulfield Grammar. Three crews right across the course here. Ballarat Grammar, Scarlet Pinder, Lily Peters, Poppy Shields, Isabel Harris, and Mia Vendi. And Caulfield Grammar School finishing strongly too on the far side. Chloe Anglis, Lucy Agosta, Ruby Williams, Remy Lanyon, and Annabelle Naptali. Still clear by a length or so from Gippsland and Wesley, but it's Caulfield and Ballarat Grammar School for the win here in the E final. Nothing between them with a couple of strokes to go. Ballarat Grammar School, Caulfield Grammar, they hit the line together. Ballarat Grammar will get there, I reckon, just ahead of uh, Caulfield Grammar School will confirm. The gap there between those two shortly. Third goes to Gippsland Grammar School. And fourth will be uh, Wesley College. A few lengths uh, further back, but a uh, uh, great race there between those two crews in lanes three and four in the E final of the Year 9 Division 4 Coxed Quad Skull.
Ballarat Grammar will get the verdict there by about half a second in the end, about 0.46. The initial look at the photo confirms Ballarat Grammar School ahead of Caulfield Grammar in that E final. Now the D final on its way. Just two boats in this D final. It's an all Ballarat affair here in the Year 9 Division 4 quad. Damascus College Lane 2, Ballarat Clarendon Lane 3. C final about to commence as well. Two crews from Ballarat, difficult to separate still. Into the final quarter of this race, Damascus Lane 2, Meg Murphy, Ebony Jennings, Grace Olsop, Kaima Brown and Violet Jones, coached by Amelia Singline. And Ballarat Clarendon in the red. Early in the ascendancy, it would seem Ava Lepic, Mia Riddle, Lara Aslan Wong, Neve Harper and Alice Lynn, coached by Kate McClure and Lily Dwyer. In combination from Ballarat Clarendon, who have got a length or so now on Damascus, who've just... Uh, Zigzagged a little too. In fact, they're still zigzagging that uh, crew from Damascus. So uh, they end up rowing a bit more than a thousand metres. But uh, more importantly for them, they've uh, let Ballarat Clarendon get away now by a bit over a boat length. So it does look like in this uh, D final, it'll be Ballarat Clarendon who will come through and claim uh, what will be 13th place overall by winning the D final. Still a few strokes out from the finish line, but it is uh, just over a length margin between these two crews. So the red colours there of uh, Ballarat Clarendon. We've got a big chance later on today in the Open Division 1-4 as they look to defend their title in that race. They will win here the D final of the Year 9 Division 4 Cox Quad Skull. Celebrations there for the crew from uh, Ballarat Clarendon after beating off their uh, competitors from Lake Wendoree. Damascus College Lane 2 will finish in second place from race 300 and 69, the D final of the Year 9 Division 4 quad. In this C final now of the Year 9 Division 4 quad, they're around about halfway down the course. And a crew from Furbank Grammar looks to be out in front of this race. St. Catherine's there in lane one, their closest competition. St. Catherine's in one, Furbank in two, Geelong College in three, Wright and Girls in four. Uh, the four crews across the course here racing for positions 9, 10, 11 and 12 in the Year 9 Division 4 Cox Quad as we uh, move up through the categories here in uh, Year 9. A finals, of course, all to come later on this afternoon or just after the, uh, the lunch break. Huge few hours to finish off the regatta as we have all of our A finals, one after the other, Year 9, followed by Year 10, and then the open races to conclude proceedings here, but that's still... Uh, yeah, a few hours away, we've got a uh, series of other finals to move through first. Crews lining up also for the B final of the Year 9 Division 4 quad. They'll soon be sent on their way, but the uh, C final continues. It's being led by the crew from uh, Furbank Grammar in uh, Lane 2, Arabella Forbes, Audrey Mayer Burstall, Pippa Featherston, Millicent McLean and Grace McLean ahead of uh, St. Catherine's Lane 1. Sophie Wayne, Claudia Hudson, Lily Bell Stevens, Fleur uh, Unchinen and uh, Tiffany Shen, coached by Ali Hall. Third would be Geelong College, Beth Afford, Sophie McCarry, Amelia Bennett, Tess Wolfenden and Phoebe Johnson, coached by Caitlin Murphy. Just ahead of Wright and Girls Lane 4, Greta White, Natalie Wong, Evie Talbot, Asher Tor and Eloise Brown. The uh, four crews in this C final, but it's looked like Furbank Grammar clear for quite some time. And that continues to be the case as they close in now on the uh, final few strokes of the course. Furbank from St. Catharines to Geelong College and also Wright and Girls. Just a few strokes to go now to conclude this C final. But it's Furbank Grammar School who will take out the win 
And with that, they'll claim ninth place overall in the event. St. Catharines will be second, third Geelong College, and fourth the crew from Wrighton Girls. Still awaiting a start in our next race, too, in the uh, the B final. In fact, they're about to go racing right now. Just me one possibly final chance to remind anyone who may be heading to Sydney in the next week that uh, Rowing Australia are still seeking volunteers for the Australian Rowing Championships, which do commence at 8 a.m. tomorrow. I've just been getting some pictures through from uh, plenty of people already at the course of some rather grey conditions in Penrith uh, this morning, but uh, hopefully that will improve by the time racing comes around. But if you will be up in Sydney and uh, have a uh, spare day or half day, even a few hours to spare, uh, Rowing Australia would appreciate any more uh, volunteers, particularly in uh, spectator services roles to assist with uh, checking people uh, in and out of the venue and uh, tickets and other issues, uh, assisting spectators at the regatta. So if you are available any time from uh, tomorrow morning through until next Sunday afternoon, please uh, make yourself known to Rowing Australia. You can email volunteers at rowingaustralia.com.au Head to the website arc.rowingaustralia.com.au or there is a QR code on the bottom of the judges box you can also scan to get more information about volunteering at the Australian Rowing Championships which commence tomorrow morning at 8am and if you can't be there you can watch all the action live streamed through the Rowing Australia website as well. A huge week of rowing uh, to follow this huge day of rowing uh, here in Geelong at the moment. But we're underway now, well underway in the B final of the Year 9 Division 4 Cox Quad. Kerry Grammar School racing in lane one. Loretto Ballarat in two, Strathcona in three, and Genazano in four. That was the yellow of Kerry on screen there as they came through towards the halfway mark of the race. That's the yellow now of Loretto Ballarat. In fact, the yellow and blue colours of Loretto College Ballarat. So there's two crews in yellow side by side and uh, uh, first glimpse down the course there did suggest we may also have a vacant lane three. No appearance possibly from the uh, Strathcona crew. Well, it does look like just a race in three and great vision there of the uh, Cox of the Loretto Ballarat crew steering a boat through underneath the, uh, the McIntyre sewerage aqueduct. And uh, pedestrian bridge at about the halfway mark of the uh, thousand metre course. No official scratching from Strathcona. I'm not sure if they were there at the start of the race, but they're certainly not there now on the course. So it's very much a race in three. Loretto Ballarat lane two, Emma McConchie, Eliza Trigg, Maya Templer, Isabel Pecker, and Annabelle Donald. Kerry Grammer in lane one, Molly Coleman, Elkie Pearson, Susie Wilson, Tara Evans, and Mia Capadath. And Jenna Zano, the third boat in the race, over in lane four, Bonnie Grace, Claudia Tomchik, Ava Roger, Michaela Mesner, and Charlie Morrison in uh, a, a clear third place next to that vacant lane three. This B final continues with uh, Loretto leading Kerry Grammer through the uh, shadow of the bridge and Janazano coming across to join them on the northern side of the course in search uh, of uh, some better water potentially. But uh, oh, I think, I imagine there must have been a crab in that Janazano boat which has sent them right off to the, uh, the other side of the course. They were in third place in any case, so it's not going to cause any interference with the other boats in the race, but uh, certainly will add to their race distance here. But uh, no such issues for Loretto Ballarat, the comfortable race leaders now by, uh, by over a length from uh, Carey, it would be. And still the Genazano crew struggles to get back uh, to head uh, down the course, but it'll be Loretto Ballarat who come across here and take the win on lane two. And they'll win it by about two and a half lengths in the end, so a strong finish certainly to the crew from uh, Loretto College Ballarat. They win the B final of the year nine. Division 4 event. Carey will finish in second place. And uh, it looks like a steering issue, certainly, for this Genazano crew who just need to uh, to take their time and uh, make their way over the final 100 or so metres of the course. Which they will uh, shortly manage to do. But 
does look like there's an issue with the steering of that boat, which keeps uh, heading in towards the bank. They'll make a final correction. They'll get up close and personal with the crowds here, uh, supporting Genizano across the line. And uh, I reckon with one final steering correction, they can just about come across the finish in a few more strokes time. So Genizano across now in third place in race 371. Back down the course, we have race 372, the G final of the Year 9 Division 3 Coxed Quad. Not that often you get a G final at a regatta, but with such a uh, substantial field of entries in both Divisions uh, 3 uh, and Division 2 to follow, there will be a G final of both those races. Three crews in the G final, Sacred Heart Lane 1, Coral Lane 2 and PLC in Lane 3. That is the PLC crew clearly up on that screen there of uh, Nasha Prabhu, Coco Ju, Dazzy Spencer, Ashia Randawa and Avon Mira. And possibly uh, still trailed narrowly from uh, Korowa and uh, Sacred Heart across on the, uh, the far side of uh, the uh, close side of the course, the northern side. Who I do think are our race leaders here. That crew from uh, Sacred Heart, Ava Dorsakirp, Eloise Boyle, Zoe Lister, Mehez Sandu, and Eden Smith for Sacred Heart. The uh, clear by a bit over a length from Coral, Elsa Kui, Ella Hassan, Sophie Lou, Grace Maisie, and Annie License. And then PLC Melbourne. And we saw earlier as they headed under the bridge would be. Uh, back in third spot but there's only about two lengths first to third here in this G final so some pretty close racing between them all the F final will follow this race down the course a two boat F final and of course the E, D, C and B finals all to go but it certainly is the crew from uh, Sacred Heart College here in Geelong who do lead this G final in the Year 9 Division 3 event. Well, my maths, the winner here will finish 23rd overall on the Year 9 Division 3 race and uh, plenty of local support for the crew from uh, Sacred Heart College who still lead this by a length from Corowa and a PLC as they do come down the course in pretty much uh, lane order now with uh, under 100 metres to go. It is Sacred Heart in front. Corowa second. PLC Melbourne in uh, third place in this G final of the Year 9 Division 3 Cox Quad Scale. And Sacred Heart pulling away late. They go out to a clear water margin over the other two crews. And it will be a win in the G final to the crew from uh, Sacred Heart. And great to see celebrations there of the Sacred Heart crew. Again, it's a unique feature of this regard that every competitor can row a final and can have the chance to win a final on the last day. And Sacred Heart have done exactly that in the G final of the Year 9 Division 3 quad. Second place to Corowa and third to PLC Melbourne in race 372. The uh, G final, Year 9 Division 3. Now the F final on the course. Just a two-boat race here. Fintana and Damascus, the uh, two crews. This is again the uh, the Linda Skidmore coach crew from Damascus College in uh, Ballarat. Crew of Charlie Rowe, Effie Lewis, Carla Austin, Miley Singline, and Maddie Huff. Linda Skidmore, very busy. This regard, coaching crews from Damascus and madly messaging through all manner of uh, information uh, for me to mention, including the fact to uh, maintain your hydration over the course of this regatta with uh, 30 degree temperatures forecast uh, later in the day. We do remind all athletes of the need to remain hydrated, uh, especially as we head in towards the warmer part of the afternoon. So it's the uh, Damascus College crew who do lead here by uh, probably over a length now from Fintana Lane 2, Evelyn Ten, Chloe Singh, Rachel Wayne, Jenny Kui, and uh, Anili Hekarapadra, the uh, crew from Fintana. These crews uh, did race earlier today in their uh, semi-finals, of course, as well to sort out the EF and G final crews. So it's been a busy morning for both Damascus and Fintana. But uh, it looks like it's going to be Damascus who will have the uh, spoils of victory here in 
And their final at the head of the schoolgirls. 21st place overall it will be to the winners of this race. Looks almost certain to be uh, Damascus. We've got uh, Gibson Grammar School coming down too in the next race, the E final. Full field of four in the E final, uh, heading through halfway, but the F final about to conclude, and it will conclude in a win to the combination from Damascus College in Ballarat. So lane three, Damascus takes the win there. And second place will go to uh, Fintana, about four lengths further back. So Damascus will rank 21st, Fintana 22nd in that uh, the huge field with uh, it was 26 quads originally entered in the Year 9 at Division 3 event. And uh, Fintana come across now to confirm their spot to second place in the F final. The E final is next. Gibson Grammar School lane one we saw on the screen a little earlier. Hamilton and Alexander look to lead the race, but on lane two, St. Catherine's lane three, and Lowther Hall lane four. The lead certainly is with the Hamilton and Alexander crew. Jemima Cox, Sophie Hill, Claudia Cochran, Hannah Wilson, and Millie Mould, coached by Paul Mould. Hamilton and Alexander, of course, the uh, original school of, uh, of Jane Horn. Now, of course, at Geelong Grammar School, Jane will be here. Uh, Coming in to do some of the commentary again uh, later on uh, today. And she'll be pleased, I'm sure, to see her old school Hamilton and Alexandra College leading here on lane two. But they're going to have to watch out for St. Catherine's alongside them in lane three. Camilla Tullock, Penilla Coleman, Sarah Dewani, Grace Champion to Crescent and uh, Nina Portnoy there for St. Catherine's who are making up some ground on our race leaders from Hamilton and Alexandra. Allow the hall on the far side. Gibson Grammar School lane one. But a race in two with St. Catherine still catching up to Hamilton and Alexander with every stroke they take. But the line is very close now. Only three or four strokes left in the race. And it will be the crew from Hamilton and Alexandra College in Western Victoria who go across and take the win here in the E-final of the Year 9 Division 3 Cox Quad. Just under a length the margin and great celebrations once again there in the winning crew. Hamilton and Alexandra, it is ahead of St. Catherine's. Lowther Hall will finish third. And fourth will go to Gibson Grammar School in race 374, the E final of the Year 9 Division 3 Cox Quad. Here comes now the uh, D final of the Year 9 Division 3 quad. Shelford in lane one, Wesley in two, Ballarat Grammar School in three, and Caulfield in four. So it is Ballarat Grammar School, I think, narrowly lane three. Esther Hopkins, Emily Milovich, Grace Burt, Isla Huntington, and Kate Burt, coached by Bridget Clark. 
Just ahead of Wesley, line two. Ellis Shang, Audrey Cole, Coco Harding, Charlotte Sanfapillo, and uh, Chloe Misikan. And uh, then a couple of links back to Shelford and also Caulfield Grammar School. The other two crews in this race, but the D final is going to go the way in the uh, centre lanes of Ballarat Grammar School ahead of uh, Wesley College. It's a few strokes to go for the leading crew uh, from Ballarat Grammar, and they'll be across shortly to uh, take the win here on lane three. So race 375 does go the way of Ballarat Grammar School. Just over a length from Wesley College in second place. Third will be Caulfield Grammar School, about two lengths further back. And uh, fourth place then, the combination from uh, Shelford Girls Grammar School in uh, lane one. As they come across to complete race. Uh, 375 of uh, 475 at this regatta. So we've got exactly 100 races to, to go now at the head of the schoolgirls for 2024. And race 376 is already on the course. As 375 just comes to its conclusion. Three seventy six underway. The C final, of the United Division Three quad, and uh, the B final lining up there also at the uh, start line. That's the ten oh one race, which will be underway uh, very very shortly. But in this C final, we see Ballarat Clarendon Lane one, Geelong College in two, trailing a little bit from Genazano in three, and Strathcona in four. The uh, top the crew is probably on the far side there. So uh, Genazano, Nina Stevenson, Alexander Haslam. Greater Clancy, Madeline Stewart, and Manon O'Callaghan. And, uh, and it's either Ballarat, Clarendon, or Strathcona on either side of the course here at this stage, racing out for uh, second and third. Ballarat, Clarendon, Sophia Cheeseman, Lexi Granger, Matilda Gillespie, Isabel Ebenvalder, and Cheryl Lee, coached by uh, Ebony Ebenvalder. And uh, then Strathcona over in lane four, Yinyan Fang, Ivy Vashiga, Tilly Harvey, Angela Zhao, and uh, Maddie Smith. The uh, Cox of that crew from uh, Strathcona and the Geelong College lane two would uh, be in about third or fourth place uh, now. Pretty close to Strathcona. That is uh, Silky Shakespeare, Pearl Connor, Madison Young, Lucy Henderson and Jemima Briggs coached by Caitlin Murphy. But it's uh, Genizano out in uh, front here and they certainly are the first crew to uh, uh, go into the shadows there of the, uh, the Harrison Bridge. Leading it from either Strathcona or Ballarat Clarendon. Probably Strathcona the far side to be in second place now. And then Ballarat Clarendon third. And uh, the Geelong College back into fourth place. But uh, heading on down towards the finish. It's the crew from Genazano who looks set to take here out the C final in the U9 Division 3 quad. So it is uh, ninth place overall to the winner of this race. Strathcona fighting on hard here in second place with Ballarat Clarendon on the other side of the course. The Geelong College only a length or so further back in fourth. So a tight race here in this C final, but the wind will certainly go the way of the uh, crew from uh, Genazano as Strathcona closed to uh, under a length, but Genazano will get the win on lane three. So Genazano first, two thirds of a length back to Strathcona in second place. Ballarat Clarendon tying on to third place and they will by about a third of a length. So Ballarat Clarendon third, Geelong College in fourth. Great finish there for all the placings in race 376 for the win in uh, the U9 Division 3 quad scale C final goes the way of the crew from Genazano. Lane, uh, race 377, a B final now of the U9 Division 3 quad, and they are uh, well underway in this race. Loretto Ballarat, lane one, MLCQ in two, Wright and Girls in three, and Melbourne Girls Grammar School 
racing in lane four. It looks like lane two has got off to the best start here. MLCQ there in lane two. Throwing in the uh, Katie Davies, the boat there for MLC. And they uh, sort of pushed themselves clear of the other three crews in this race. That's Sabella Roth, Caitlin Nixon, Holly Comridis, Chloe Groom and Clementine Homan ross from uh, MLC who uh, lead it from... Uh, it will be Loretto Ballarat in second place down lane one. Leah Timpano, Sadie McAteer, Hayley Gardner, Amy Antrobus and Georgina Cooney. And on the other side of the course, pretty tight between uh, both Wrighton and Melbourne Girls Grammar School. It would just trail a little from the two crews on this northern side. Crew from Melbourne Girls Grammar School, Lola Edwards, Daisy Kitchener, Eliza Pete, Annika Barnes and uh, Tanya Chen. And uh, right in lane three, Scarlett Porcy, Charlotte Kaplan, Gigi Zapp, Saskia Klotz and Lucy Ball. But uh, those two do sit well behind our lead crews on uh, this side. Although it may well be the case that Melbourne Girls Grammar School can feature up in the top couple with a uh, strong finish. They're not that far behind uh, Loretto Ballarat who uh, would trail... MLCQ by uh, still under a length as well. So close once again between uh, these uh, really all four crews, as you expect, of course, when it comes to these uh, higher finals. They've been through a pretty exhaustive round of racing in heats. In some cases, repechages, quarterfinals and semis to get to, to this point into the B final. So the fifth placed overall crew about to be sorted out. Melbourne Girls Grammar School indeed are coming home quickly as are Loretto. MLCQ still just in front, but it's getting tight now between all three of these crews. Melbourne Girls Grammar the far side, Loretto Baller up this side, but MLCQ in the centre line still have their boat in front and will push across and take the win here in the B final. It is MLCQ in first place. Whoa, Loretto Ballarat just, I think, have got uh, second there ahead of Melbourne Girls Grammar School. And then it will be the crew from uh, Wright and Girls who will come across in a fourth place shortly. But uh, MLCQ will take out fifth spot overall with a win in the B final of the Year 9 Division 3 quad. Indeed, it will be 2-1-4, uh, and four, the placings there. MLCQ, the winners. Loretto Ballarat, second. Melbourne Girls Grammar School, third. And fourth will go to Wright and Girls. The unofficial results still there in race 377. But as soon as those results are made official by our judges, they will appear on the website. But the uh, photo finish clearly shows the uh, difference there between first, second, and third. Race 378 is the G final again of this time the Year 9 Division 2 quad scale. So three boats on the course here. Cadinia International College in lane one. Caulfield Grammar School in lane two. And Fintana in lane three. And it is the uh, Cadinia combination who uh, lead here. Cash Shetty, Jessica Bailey, Ruby Weatherhead, Charlotte McKinnon and Sarah Hassan, coached by Roman Tomchak. Another of the, uh, the Barwon Rowing Club combinations here, of course, who've uh, largely taken over the, uh, the Cadinia program now. And uh, right beside them, but it's Caulfield Grammar School, Cleo Moran, Harriet Conan, Charlotte Pound, Millie Fashney, and uh, Cleo Miles for Caulfield, who may just about have got their boat ahead now of uh, Cadinia. They're coming through really quickly in the centre of the course there, the Caulfield Grammar School combination in this G final. Ahead then of Fintana over in lane three on the far side of the course, Eloise Calder, Catherine Karamidos, Emma Young, Chloe McNally, and uh, Kalani Sasserathan. But uh, it's Caulfield Grammar School now certainly ahead of Cadinia International College with about five strokes to go to conclude the G final of the Year 9 Division 2 at Cox Quad Scale. Caulfield Grammar School in first, Cadinia International College in second place. About a link between those two crews. So Caulfield will take the win as they come across in lane two. Second goes to Cadinia. And third will be the crew from uh, Fintana in lane three to conclude race 378, the G final of the Year 9 Division 2 quad.
So the F final now of the U9 Division 2 Cox Quad. Two boats in this race. PLC Melbourne Lane 2. They were clearly the race leaders. And Corowa Lane 3. So 21st and 22nd places up for grabs here. PLC crew, Melanie Zhu, Lola Baboris, Zoe Zhang, Momo Lee and Jingwei Lu. And then Korowa, Lane 3, Yunji Kang, Tess Lee Conway, Carla Tan, Alexis Taliadoris and uh, Sophie May. Boxing the boat from Korowa, but it's uh, PLC have already emerged past the bridge and uh, Korowa now enter into the shadows there. So there is some substantial margin, about three lengths between these two crews. Double skulls heading up to the start too in the transit lane. So we'll move shortly on from quad skull racing to uh, some of the smaller boats as we move through these year nine events. But uh, it's PLC Melbourne here leading the F final of the year nine division two at Cox quad. And they maintain a clear lead of about two and a half lengths over Corowa in second place. So it's going to be PLC Melbourne to come across and uh, take out the F final and 21st place overall for the crew from PLC ahead of Corowa Anglican Girls School in second place. Urgent call for the driver of a uh, black Range Rover BAT569. Black or dark coloured Range Rover BAT569. BAT569, your car needs to be moved urgently or it will be removed for you. A black Range Rover BAT, B for BAT, BAT569. Please move your car immediately. Here comes the E final of the U9 Division 2 quad. Wright and Girls in lane one. Damascus College in two. Shelford Girls Grammar School in three. Gibson Grammar in four. And a clear lead certainly to uh, Damascus. Who had a win a few races ago as well. So uh, a good period of racing here for the Damascus crews from Ballarat. This time it's Pippa Watt, Ivy Story, Ivy Dixon, Stella Mercer and Chloe Johnson. Coached by Matthew Ashley. And they have a two length lead on uh, Shelford in second place narrowly. Abigail Swetlow, Chloe Thompson, Zoe Coughlin, Ashley Crook and Beatrix Sigley. Just ahead of both Wright and Girls and Gibson Grammar on opposite sides of the course. So a good race for second, third and fourth. But Damascus College well clear with a couple of strokes to go. They'll take the win here in the E final of the U9 Division 2 Cox Quad Skull. Damascus College come across on lane two and uh, confirm the win. Just over two lengths back to Shelford. Lane three, he'll finish in second place. Third, the far side will go to Gibson Grammar School. And fourth then, it will be Wright and Girls crossing now to conclude race 380. The E final of the year nine, Division two quad.
Here's the deep final now of the year. Nine Division Two quad. Genazano lane one. Sacred Heart in two. St. Catherine's with the lead in lane three. And Furbank Grammar School in lane four. St. Catherine's by about a length here it would be. Santa Conway, Isla Morris, Clara Calvert, Ava Schofield and Indira Smith. Coached by Lauren Pratt. And then uh, it'll be Furbank in second. On the southern side, Abby Lyons, Zara Excel, Pippa Morgan, Isabel Angus, and Claudia Berry. The crew there for Furbank. And then very tight, Genizano and Sacred Heart. Two crews on this northern bank. But uh, St. Catherine certainly still with the race lead here inside the final 80 metres now. Of, uh, they're pushed towards the finish line there. Clear by a length over Furbank. Genizano just edging out Sacred Heart for third and fourth at this stage, it seems. But uh, the race, race win will certainly go the way of St. Catharines on lane three. Just over a length, the margin back to Furbank Grammar. He'll finish second on lane four, and Genizano will indeed row away late from Sacred Heart and take out third spot. Sacred Heart fourth. But the race win, a comfortable one there to the crew from St. Catharines. Racing in lane three in race 381, the D final there of the year nine Division two quad. So 13th place overall goes the way of St. Catharines. Four crews on the course now in the C final of the U9 Division II uh, quad. We move towards the uh, ever closer to the pointy end of these uh, year nine events. Ballarat Grammar School in lane one, Melbourne Girls College in two, Ballarat Clarendon in three, Geelong College in four. Melbourne Girls College in the lane uh, two uh, combination. Saffron God, Zoe Tucker, Lila Anker, Alexis McCarthy and Zara Weeks. And the MGC Colours who uh, would be the leaders of this race. So doing well on the far side will be the crew from the Geelong College. Ava Hallibone, Gemma Andrews, Ivy Gray, Miller Alston and Annabelle Ashton coached by Sydney Arnold. One Ballarat Grammar, Meta Robertson, Mary Mole, Sophie Calvert, Grace God and Genevieve Jones, coached by Rochelle Keller. And the red of Ballarat Clarendon Lane 3. Anna Bray, Ella Maxwell, Emily Finch, Charlie Tui and Angela Rosewarn, coached by Charlie Goldsworthy. So, uh, clear leader in the form of Melbourne Girls College, but uh, in fact on the far side, the Geelong College making up plenty of ground on them too. Over the past couple of hundred metres, and in fact they may just about have drawn level uh, those two crews. So Melbourne Girls College will have to work late in this race now. They've also got Ballarat Clarendon and Ballarat Grammar School coming at them from either side. So around about barely a length separates these four crews here in the C final of the U9 Division 2 quad. And uh, the Geelong College have gone for home well in the outside lane. Melbourne Girls College is struggling to keep up with them late and uh, face being overtaken by either of the Ballarat schools either side as well. But it's the Geelong College over on the far side of the course who look to have put themselves suddenly well clear in this uh, C final, the Year 9 Division 2 Cox Quad. It's the Geelong College, certainly first. Melbourne Girls College are just there, second ahead of Ballarat Clarendon. And that's the order they'll go across the line. So Geelong College won. Melbourne Girls College have finished second from Ballarat Clarendon and then also Ballarat Grammar School. But uh, there was barely a length first to fourth there. So a great finish in the C final of the Year 9 Division 2 Cox Quad. The win and ninth place overall goes the way of the crew from the Geelong College.
It is now the B final of the Year 9 Division 2 quad and uh, not quite as tight a race emerging here. It does look that uh, Albert Park College have got themselves out to a pretty strong position here in lane 2. Lily Johnson, Arabella Young, Anna Hill, Summer Basutal and Daisy Merritt, the crew there, coached by Virginia Lee. Lane 3, Wesley, Elkie Wilson, Kazat, uh, Kia Atkins, Madeline Jordan, Marley Ryan and Ivy Moore. Melbourne Girls Grammar School in four. Georgia Berryman, Natalie Grant, Clementine Evans, Catherine Hesutis and Willa Vile. And Ballarat Claren uh, Strathcona, I should say, there in, uh, in lane one. Maya Turnham, Poppy Atchison, Izzy Smith, Holly White and Maya Sipos. The crew for Strathcona. But uh, Albert Park College certainly uh, still our race leaders here. About a quarter of the thousand metres that's still to go in this B final. So racing for fifth place overall in this Year 9 Division 2 event. Of course, we'll have the A final coming up this afternoon for uh, Year 9 Division 2. That will take place at 1.50pm. Uh, but this now is the B final approaching conclusion. A really good race too for second, third and fourth behind our clear leaders from Albert Park. So it's uh, then Strathcona, Wesley, and also Melbourne Girls Grammar School are all fighting out what will be six, seven, eight places overall. But Albert Park College put themselves clear early in the race and just continue to maintain that lead. I think uh, Melbourne Girls Grammar School finishing quickly down the far side might be uh, just about on terms now with Wesley and also Strathcona. But it's going to be Albert Park College here who come across and take the win on lane two. The race for second will indeed go the way of Melbourne Girls Grammar School as they hit the line now. Melbourne Girls Grammar first, Wesley uh, second, I should say, for Melbourne Girls Grammar School. Wesley third and fourth goes to Strathcona. Very tight for second, third and fourth as it was for all four placings in the C final. So watch out for the A final, I reckon, with the Year 9 Division 2 quad. But Albert Park College win the B final there. Narrowly from Melbourne Girls Grammar School in second. Wesley College in third and Strathcona in fourth position. A call for Audrey Birmingham. Audrey Birmingham, we've got an item of uh, lost property that's been handed in, which uh, I think was actually found uh, in or near one of the portaloos. So Audrey Birmingham, if you want to uh, come to the uh, bottom level of the judges box and uh, please collect your lost property. On the course now, it's the E-final of the uh, top level of Year 9 quads. The Year 9 Division 1 Cox quad scale with Fintana in lane 1, Ballarat Clarendon in lane 2, Gibson Grammar School in 3, and the Geelong College in 4. Substantial achievement for these crews even to have made a, uh, a B-final in this uh, category. Very uh, good racing in Year 9 Division 1. In fact, the E-final, I should say, here. So these are the uh, crews... to be ranked uh, 19th through to uh, 23rd in the uh, Division 1 quad. And the E final will be followed here by the uh, C, D and B finals as well. In this race we have Fintana, Ballarat, Clarendon, Gibson Grammar and G the Geelong College. So we can see our uh, D final, three boat D final just about ready to go as well back at the 1,000 metre start. That is the 10.25 uh, the race. So uh, pretty much still right on schedule here. But the uh, lead in the E final is with Looks like I'm missing a crew here too in this final. I can't see the bright red colours of Ballarat Clarendon, which is causing some confusion. But uh, the Geelong College with the dark blades are, uh, are there. Gibson Grammar School as well, both in the dark green colours. And uh, the third crew in the race is Fintana. So it does appear there's no crew here from Ballarat Clarendon, but their lane has been taken over by the crew from Gibson Grammar School. But uh, so they're our narrow leaders, Gibson Grammar. 
And Louise Tavaski, Maggie Sheridan, Cecilia Anderson, Grace Frew, and Chloe Olgenick for Gibson Grammar School, ahead of Fintana. And Garji Nila Singer, Mia He, Della Gasset, Yahara Musuria, and Aisha Ahmed for uh, Fintana. And then, in fact, it's Geelong College, in, yes, in lane four here, who got a lane two bound number on. So some confusion as to what's what, but it's definitely the Geelong College crew who will uh, come across here. Darcy Hines, Phoebe Whitehead, Lucinda Burrard, Quinn Adopdor, and Alice Garland, the crew, coached by Anita Whitehouse. So they... In the end, we'll take out the E final there ahead of Fintana and then Gibson Grammar School. A late change, it appears, in the, uh, the lane allocations there, or at least in the bow numbers. In that E final. But uh, definitely, that's the correct placings. Geelong College from Fintana and Gibson Grammar. As it appears a late scratching uh, from Ballarat Clarendon possibly causing that race to be uh, to be redrawn. In fact, Ballarat Clarendon now looks like they appear in the next race on the course. So uh, they've moved into lane four of race 385. And it'll be Caulfield lane one, Carey Grammar in two, St. Catherine's in three, and now Ballarat Clarendon racing in lane four. That's the crew on screen now in the red colours. So uh, that should be Ruby Pierce, Estelle Freeman, Winter Watson, Millie Mason and Ruby Brizzy, coached by Emily Bathurst. Alongside them, certainly St. Catherine's in the lighter blue colours there. Belle Percival Time, Mirabel Thompson, Claudia Driver, Grace Mitsakis and Anna Shears, coached by Alexander Clark. Kerry Grammar and Caulfield Grammar, the other two crews in the race as well. Further across uh, from those two uh, boats on camera now. There's lane two. Bow of Carey Grammar in the uh, yellow colours who uh, have got a narrow margin over St. Catherine's now. Ava Locke, Zara McIntyre, Ava Elliott, Ruby Priest and Pia Ackman for Carey. And then Caulfield Grammar, the fourth crew in the race. Emily Jealous, Charlotte Embleton, Lucy Edwards, Ava Maskill and Zadie Bock. The uh, crew from uh, Caulfield Grammar, but it's Kerry who lead it here in what's now become a, a four-boat D final. So just again confirming from the previous race, the uh, lane allocation is changing and going from four crews to three. It was Geelong College who won it from Fintana and Gibson Grammar School. And now we have four crews in this D final, including Ballarat Clarendon in lane four, but the uh, race lead is towards the other side of the course where Kerry Grammar have the edge on both St. Catharines and Caulfield Grammar. Clearly our top three. And then Ballarat Clarendon lane four, who would be in fourth place, but the race lead still certainly is with the crew from uh, Carey now, as they're about to pass again under the shadows of the, uh, the Harrison Bridge, and certainly Carey Grammar uh, the first crew through that part of the course. Very tight then between uh, St. Catharines and Caulfield Grammar. But where the angle on the bridge there, it does look like it advantages crews on this northern side. But I reckon St. Catharines are pretty much on terms with the crew from uh, Caulfield Grammar. A couple of lanes across from them in the race. Certainly for second and third place in this D final. So 13th place overall will go to the race winner here, which uh, looks set to be the crew from uh, Carey Grammar. Still very tight for second between Caulfield Grammar and St. Catharines. That one will be fought out right down to the finish line, I would suggest. But a clear length lead to the crew in the yellow colours of the uh, Carey Grammar School as they approach the finish line now and will go across and take the win. So lane two, Carey win the D final. Tight for second place. Caulfield Grammar School on this northern side will just hold on to second ahead of St. Catharines in third. And then fourth place will go to Ballarat Clarendon on the southern side of the course. But a win there to Kerry Grammar School and 13th place overall in the D final of the Year 9 Division 1 Cox to Quad.
the McIntyre Bridge now go the crews in the C final of the U9 Division 1 quad scale. Damascus College, lane one. Melbourne Girls College, lane two. Wesley College in three. And Furbank Grammar in lane four. Four crews across the course here. Again, it's the higher ranked crews into the uh, centre lanes from the earlier rounds of racing. This will be the case right throughout the finals for the rest of today. So uh, Melbourne Girls College in two. Zara McIntosh, Phoebe Downey, E. Fernberger, Bray Norton and Kyra Beckos. And Wesley College in three. Laura Bayless, Millie Welbury, Chloe Cascani, Bonnie Schmidt and Isabella Hand. The uh, combination from uh, Wesley. Line one, Damascus, Caitlin Orchard, Evie Howard, Grace Rivett, Arabella Ashley and Millie Young. Coached by uh, Paul Blanchfield, the director of rowing at uh, Damascus College, along with Cooper Reed. And then Furbank Lane 4, Chloe Trist, Ali Hunter, Lorna Cairns, Lara Tan, and Sophie Snade in the boat for Furbank. But it is the two middle lanes who uh, lead here, and the advantage is uh, narrowly with, in fact, Wesley College in lane 3, ahead of Melbourne Girls College now, with about 160 metres uh, still to go now as they emerge from uh, beneath the uh, Harrison Bridge. Then it's Furbank and Damascus, the next two crews across the course. But uh, Wesley and Melbourne Girls College will fight this one out down towards the uh, finish line now. And uh, great see the crowds growing on the banks here at the bar and the size of the peloton increasing as the uh, races go through on today's schedule. And I've got a great view here of Wesley College just with their boat ahead now. Certainly of Melbourne Girls College in second place and Furbank too coming home quickly down that southern bank. But Wesley College in between those two will get across and take the win in the C final of the year nine, Division One quad. Two thirds of a length back to Melbourne Girls College, who'll finish second. Half a length to Furbank, so very tight between our top three. And then the, uh, the green and uh, yellow boat there of uh, Damascus College. Lane one will finish in fourth place in race 386. A win there to Wesley College, and they'll rank ninth overall in the year nine Division One event. And again, as I mentioned before, it's quite the achievement in these uh, events with such big fields to uh, make it as far even as a, a B or a C final. Only four crews, of course, can make the A final from the uh, 20 plus that entered the event a couple of days ago when uh, they began racing here. So this is the B final now. We see Ballarat Grammar School in lane one. Strathcona in two. Genazano in three. Wright and Girls in lane four. The yellow caps there on the far side of the course. Genazano was always in that boat with the, uh, the, the red colour, the dark red coloured campuses. As they pass underneath our camera person stationed up on the, uh, the McIntyre sewerage aqueduct. Strathcona in the uh, coral and blue alongside them. And uh, Ballarat Grammar School, lane one, closest to this uh, northern side of the course. And the ratings start to lift too in these crews as they really do power on uh, towards the, the final section of this race. It does look to be uh, Strathcona by a, a narrow margin from Genazano with uh, still right and alongside them as well. And slightly back to Ballarat Grammar School on this northern side of the course. But uh, Year 9 Division 1 always brings close finishes. Looks to be the case again here, although Strathcona do uh, seem to have an advantage over, I reckon right now, probably up into second place or at least right alongside Genazano on that southern side of the course as they two head under the shadows of the bridge uh, just in advance of the crew from Genazano. And then it's Ballarat Grammar School back out into bright sunshine is the crew from uh, Strathcona. And they lead it now uh, still by a bit over a length. It would be from Wrighton or Genazano in a great race for second place. Still back to Ballarat Grammar School in third place, but it's Strathcona clear now by uh, a bit over a length from Wrighton finishing well. Genazano alongside them in the race for second and third. It would be this U9 Division 1 B final. It's going to be tight at the end, but Strathcona will get across and take the win in a couple of strokes time. Interest still in second place. Wrighton girls holding off Genazano, and they will get across for second. So it's Wrighton by a canvas over Genazano. A great battle between those two all the way down the course. And then it's Ballarat Grammar School who will finish in fourth place on lane one. But uh, Strathcona, a very hard foot win there in the uh, B final of the year nine Division One Coxed Quad Skull. And we now await the B final. We're just underway in the B final of the U9 Division I double skull as well.
last few uh, year nine minor finals are coming up here. The B final of the year nine division one double scale, the first of those on the course. And then the uh, single sculling finals to follow that before we move to our year 10 events. This B final, Footscray High School in lane one, May Sylvester and Lila Weinkotter. Corowa lane two, Olive Venko and Saria Hufton. Melbourne Girls Grammar School lane three, Kazia Sandu and Harriet Tier. And Turak College lane four, uh, Hero Kalajiros and Hero Kalajiros as uh, they're listed on the official uh, entries at least. The crew from Turak College are across in uh, lane four. But it is the uh, centre lanes where the top two are placed and certainly it's Corowa who lead pretty comfortably here. Olivenko and uh, Sarah Hufton for the Corowa Anglican Girls School, leading it by uh, probably some three lengths or so back to uh, Melbourne Girls Grammar School in second place. Kaiser Sandu and Harriet Tier. And, uh, and unfortunately, I think there's a boat just ended up in the water there. There has, in fact, our no camera's missed nothing around the course here. You have to reach for the binoculars to check, but uh, we've got that boat on screen now. That is Turak College who uh, unfortunately have ended up in the waters of the uh, Barwon. Which is not ideal given recent conditions here on the course, but our rescue boats will go across and uh, deal with that uh, promptly, I am sure. Coral, I continue to lead here with uh, Olive Bianco and Saria Hafton in this B final of the year nine division one double. So uh, they're the crew that will end up in fifth place overall. Here comes the crew from Corowa on lane two. Olivenko and Sari Hafton will finish fifth overall in the E9 Division 1 female school double scale. Corowa in first place. Second will go to the combination from Melbourne girls, Kazia Sandu and Harriet Tier. And just a reminder that all crews heading down to the start, there is a boat now in the transit lane. So hopefully those crews on the far side can hear this. Please be cautious of that capsized boat on the course and ensure you uh, stop and wait or otherwise take evasive action. That's our uh, rescue boats will come across hopefully shortly and assist that double scale. Footscray High School have finished in third place to their May Sylvester and Lila Vinacotta. For Footscray High, the third boat across in race 388. And uh, the racing does continue at the same time. So um, you can see the double scale right up against the bank now on the southern side. So the Turak College double scale being assisted now by our lifeguards. The uh, next race has gone past already, which is the D final of the N9 Division 1 single scale. I suspect uh, that any further racing may be held briefly while this uh, rescue is uh, carried out with, of course, the, uh, the safety of the athletes in the capsized boat, the paramount consideration here. And at this stage, no further action coming from the start line. But uh, the racing does continue here with the uh, four scholars in the D final of the Year 9 Division 1 at female school single. PLC Melbourne, uh, Sanaya Dubash in lane one. Catherine Westcott of Geelong College in two. is coached by Duncan Ashby. Sacred Heart lane three. Alia Adesava and Shelford Girls Grammar School in four. Audrey Lucas is uh, on the far side of the course. Safely passed. The uh, rescue boat, again, just a reminder to crews heading to the start in the transit lane. You need to uh, give way to the rescue while that is uh, taking place. You do not need to rush past to get to the start. The officials uh, 
will not be starting races for the next couple of minutes, so there's no need to rush to the start. Please uh, just stay cautious in the transit lane and wait for this rescue to be completed. We will have uh, this race concluding, but still in front of us now, where the Sacred Heart Sculler, Ayla Adesava, looks to be the, uh, the narrow leader. It was tight with Sanaya Dubash of PLC, but uh, the PLC Sculler has gone off a little bit off course here too. As many do in lane one in single skulls, has followed the bank around where the river widens up here towards the finish. And as a result, it's a pretty clear lead to the, uh, the, the local knowledge, I'd suspect, of the sculler from uh, Sacred Heart, Ayla Adesava. Over in uh, lane three, we'll get across soon uh, for the uh, win in the D final of the U9 Division 1 single skull. It is Sacred Heart in first place. Ayla Adesava gets the win there and uh, 13th place overall. And uh, right in the shadows of the judges' box in second place will be the lane one sculler, uh, Sanaya Dubash from PLC Melbourne. Third goes to the Geelong College, uh, Catherine Westcott. And fourth then for Shelford Girls Grammar School will be Audrey Lucas. The two uh, Turak College scholars have been uh, helped into the uh, rescue boat and uh, no doubt be off for a quick shower, I suspect, in the bottom level of the uh, Jeff Sykes Centre. Our lifeguard's doing a, a very good job and uh, the boat will be dealt with uh, separately. It may well be taken out of the water there on the south bank of the Barwon.
So the uh, Turak College uh, Scholars, as we saw, have been uh, taken out of the water and uh, no doubt having a refreshing shower uh, about now in the Jeff Sykes Centre. The double Scholars being assisted by uh, one of our work boats uh, bringing it down the course. So the transit lane is open to traffic uh, once again and we should have some racing back on the course uh, very, very shortly. So hopefully all is OK with those girls from uh, Turak College who were unable to finish the B final of the Year 9 Division 1 double scale. That race won by Korowa, Olivenko and Saria Hafton. And we saw after that the D final of the Year 9 Division 1 single scale won by Ayla Atasava of Sacred Heart. So the C final will be the next race when racing resumes as soon as the course is ready and our rescue boats are back in place. We've got some eights heading up towards the start too. Our Year 10 races are not far away and I will leave it in the capable hands of Jane Horn to provide the commentary for the next hour or so of racing. Thank you very much, Richard, for your uh, voice this morning and the excellent coverage of the various races. I'm sure that everybody watching at home is enjoying having access to their, watching their family members row on this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, Geelong is sparkling once again. We always turn weather on like this at this time of year. Having certainly been here and needing windscreen wipers on the window in the past. But it is a beautiful day. Please slip, slop, slap. Make sure you seek shade where you can. Uh, rehydrate, refuel. There's plenty of food trucks and things to um, keep you well hydrated and well fed. As we head into this next series of races, once the course is given the all clear. So we will continue with the school single skull year nine division one final the C final and a wonderful afternoon of finals will be occurring after lunch continuing after lunch with the A finals commencing at 1 where are we uh, flipping over one something I had So we're back racing now, and this is the single school, single skull Gear 9 Division 1 C final with Wesley College Shanty G in lane 1, Shelford Girls Grammar's Madeline Cowell in lane 2, Gippsland Grammar Lily Brammel in lane 3, and from Iona College, Gabrielle Jurjanovic in lane 4. reminder there are some items of lost property that are uh, currently at the bottom of the judges box so if you've lost some equipment please come along and collect that and if you have uh, in fact we're more on the found side are we than the lost side so if you've lost if someone finds any lost equipment at the venue please bring it to the judges box because there are some people looking for especially a couple of mobile phones that have not yet been discovered so uh, 
If you find any lost property, please bring that to the bottom level of the judge's box and that can be reunited with the owners who are keen to get their hands back on their phones. So these scholars are coming towards the 500 metre mark now in their 1,000 metre race. Shanti G from Wesley College, Madeline Cow from Shelford Girls Grammar, Lily Bramel from Gippsland and Gabrielle Jadinovich from Iona College in Geelong. And in lane one, it's the competitor from Wesley, Shanti G, who's currently in a first place, about a length clear of Lily and Gabrielle in lanes three and four, a further two lengths back to Matilda from Shelford. So as they come through under the James Harrison Bridge, um, Shanty is uh, steering a lovely course here. She just went a little bit off course, but she's straightened up again, had a look over her shoulder, and that's always a little bit problematic because you move an oar. And the competitor from Gippsland Grammar is putting a bit of pressure on here as they approach the last 100 metres. But Shanty has straightened herself up, and this is the C final of the Year 9 Division 1 sculling races. So Shanty G getting a lot of support from friends on the bank, as are all these girls coming through now. Gippsland Grammar in second place with um, Gabrielle from Iona College over in lane four. So Shanty G from Wesley College about to cross the line, a length and a half clear of the girl from Gippsland Grammar, Lily Bramel. With Iona College's college in third place. And Matilda Cowell from Shelford Girls Grammar. Crossing the line. Well, road girls always challenging in the single skulls. But the conditions here are rather perfect. We now have the B final of the Year 9 Division 1. We have Clonard in Lane 1, Molly Walker from Hamilton and Alexandra College in Lane 2, uh, Wesley College, Melandra Barnard, and from Footscray High School, Asta White, who has just had a tumble. So we have another boat down in the water there. So the poor thing is literally, as I said her name, has literally tipped her skull. So we'll get the lifeguards to get her 
fairly quickly. So Mirlandra Barnard from Wesley College is a length clear of Molly Walker from Hamilton and Alexandra College with Adeline Shields from Clonard a further two lengths back. Yeah, yes, lane four. So Melandra Barnard from Wesley College will take out the Year 9 Division 1 B final. And in second place, rowing in the famous Colin Smith Skull, a well-known co rowing coach at Hamilton and Alexandra College. The Smith family being strong supporters of rowing at the college, with Molly finishing in second place. And Adeline Shields from Clonard finishing in third place. And our Footscray High School rower is Asta White is currently being rescued, which happens in single skull rowing. So there'll be another delay here as the um, Footscray High School student gets back in her skull, hopefully uninjured, and gets herself set and looks like she's going to complete the race, which is wonderful. Getting her all sorted. Nope, something's not right there. I think she'll have to be rescued. So whilst she tried to get going again, that didn't happen. So there'll be a slight delay here before we have the school for year 10, division six and division seven final, B final. Okay, Aster is back in her boat and rowing down in lane four. So she'll need to go and go on to finish this event. A huge thank you to the volunteer lifesavers who are assisting on the river today. As they do each day of the carnival, a volunteer capacity for them. So we should be able to have a start in the next race as well, which is a combination of the school for year 10, six 
Division 6 and 7. Can we give a round of applause, please, to Asta White from Footscray High School, who has regained her balance inside the single skull and, to her credit, has decided to finish this race and is to be admired for doing exactly that. She's had two falls out of the boat but very determined, and I know for sure that we will see Asta White back here next year in Year 10. So well rowed, Asta. Congratulations. Showing great resilience and determination to finish the race rather than say, just take me back. So well done, Asta. We have a start in this B final for the school for Year 10, Division 6 and 7. So in Division 6 is Ballarat and Clarendon in Lane 1, MLC in 2, Lauriston in 3, and MLC are competing in the Year 10, Division 7 in Lane 4. No perfect conditions here for the running of these finals for the afternoon. <coughs> Hopefully the breeze won't pick up this afternoon, but it is literally magnificent for rowing. The course looks incredible. The banners fluttering in the breeze on the McIntyre Bridge are setting the girls up really well for a wonderful afternoon of rowing. And I hope that um, all parents on the bank are enjoying themselves here as they watch daughters and friends fulfill dreams and have heartbreak all at the same time. So rowing can do that. But this particular race is the school four, year 10, six, division six and seven combined. So we have Ballarat and Clarendon in lane one, MLCQ in two, Lauriston in three and MLC in lane four in the div seven.
And the MLC combination of Harriet Roy, Amelia Martin, Clem O'Brien, Angelina Andrews Poulos, and Cox by Emma Brett are currently sitting out a length clear of Lauriston with Clarendon and uh, Ballarat Clarendon in third place and the S Division 7 MLC crew in fourth place. So the MLC combination pulling away here from Lauriston next to them in Station 3. So this MLC combination of Harriet Roy, Amelia Martin, Clem O'Brien, shout out to Bob, Angelina and Emma Brett are rowing beautifully here as they come through to the finish line. Lauriston are length, in, length behind, length and a half in second place with Ballarat and Clarendon a further three or four lengths back to the MLC Division 7 crew. So Harriet, Amelia, Clem, Angelina will take out the B final of the year 10 quad skull division six and seven Lauriston in second place Claudia Young, Ava Ward, Yun Ma and Livia Shakaterovic coxed by Harriet Butler in second place Ballarat and Clarendon are having a fair battle with MLC in lane one and four and it looks like Ballarat and Clarendon will just pip them out by nearly a bow ball Ballarat and Clarendon Harmon Preetgill Tara, Tara Gay, Gray Ashley Sudoltz Sophia Tadros Neve Harrison the Cox and the MLC Division 7 crew Lucy Lamb Adora Fan Michelle Zhang Talia Walker with Lily Brown the Cox Next event will be the Quad Skulls Year 10 Division 5 C Final. Four crews in this event, St Catherine's, Loretto, Ballarat, Lauriston and Ballarat and Clarendon. And already Loretto, Ballarat and St Catherine's are having a very tight battle in lanes one and two with Lauriston a further half a length back with Ballarat and Clarendon a length behind them as they approach the 500 metre mark. So as they come through the James Harrison Bridge here, it is Loretto Ballarat, Evie Roney, Chloe Duffy, Ella Blake, Molly Williams, Daisy Donovan, Clancy, the Cox. And they are half a length, if that, ahead of St. Catharines, who are putting the pressure on now as they come under the bridge. St. Catharines have definitely lifted their rating here. We're going to have a close finish here in this C final. Division 5 of Year 10 Quad Skull. And St. Catharines have slightly put their bow in front here as they... Close the gap on Loretto, who've led the whole way. But St. Catherine's School are lifting their rating, hopefully keeping their heads still. 
And it will very close here at the finish as both crews head towards the bow ball. Bow balls are bobbing clearly here, but Loretto have again lifted their rating. And it looks like it will be Loretto who will take it out, winning just from the St. Catherine's crew. A very close finish there with Loretto Ballarat in first place, Lauriston in second. Sorry, St. Catherine's in second. Lauriston in third. And Ballarat and Clarendon in fourth place. So 2-1-3 down the page. Straight into the Year 10 Division 5 B final. Geelong College in lane one. Wesley College in two. Furbank Grammar in three with Strathcona in lane four. And all four crews, there's not a, a length between them as they come towards the 500 metre mark. Furbank Grammar's holding a slight lead over Geelong College in station one and Wesley in station two with a further length back to Strathcona in lane four. Burbank combination of Olivia Gillett, Stella Kemp, Olivia Marino, Iris Lee and Dana Lee, the, Dana Lee the Cox. Half a length ahead of Wesley College, Audrey Pinner and Madison Budlender, Eden Paredes, Chloe Wilson and Yolanda Way the Cox. And right next to them, literally a bow ball difference, Geelong College, Caitlin Russell, Coco Young, Maeve Cornford, Amelie O. Amelia as a party, Abby Bates the Cox, with Strathcona also within touching distance here, about a length behind. Zoe Langley, Bella Chen, Abigail Morris, Alice Howard and Eloise Allen. But it is the Furbank combination, a length in front here of Wesley in lane two, with Geelong College putting a lot of pressure on this Wesley crew as they come through to the final 100 metres. But it is the Furbank combination who are sitting up very nicely in their boat enjoying these perfect conditions here this is the b final of the year 10 division 5 and furbank are a length clear as they come towards the finish line to get the beep from the uh, judges and in the end it's very cl close here as strathcona pip wesley they've come from behind with geelong college in fourth Year 10 Division 4 D final, two crews in this event, Lauriston in lane two and Genizano in three. So this is the D final, Year 10, Division 4, Lauriston and in Lane 2 and Genizano in Lane 3. And the Genizano combination currently slightly in front, about a canvas in front here of the Lauriston girls. Ava Parker, Scarlett Cargill, Zali Kenaway and Verity Hogan, coxed by Kate Farino, who's urging the Genizano girls 
as they come through the James Harrison Bridge. And that's exactly what they've done. They've lifted their rating. Lauriston trying to match them here. Amelia Forty, Isabella Park, Sophie Murchie, Luna Srugo and Emily Gow. Some big names in that Lauriston crew, Mr Murchie. But it is the Genazano crew who will be pulling away here and finishing stronger. And they will take out this D final of the Year 10 Division 4. A length clear of Lauriston. And just two schools in that event. So that's the D final of the Year 10 Division 4. First place, Genazano. Second, Lauriston. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're having some issues down in the boat area where the school boats are all being stored. Please, if you're going down there, could you not take your dogs? Uh, we'd prefer no dogs to be in that area when the girls are moving boats and oars and trying to remove boats and put them back in the, um, into the water. They're just causing a little bit of havoc in the boat area, as are lots of people. So please allow the rowers and the competitors to get their boats in and out of the water safely down in the boat area to make sure that we don't have any um, complications or confrontations down there with the BROs who are trying to manage the girls getting the boats in and out of the water in an unfamiliar area. So please refrain from rushing down there when your crew is finished. The uh, coaches have requested that they prefer that parents stay in the school area and do not go down to the boating area where the boat sheds are. So please, if you could respect that, and by all accounts, also tie your dog somewhere else so we don't have anyone crashing into a dog. Thank you. The next race is the Year 10 Division 4 C Final, and Melbourne Girls College in Lane 1 are clearly in front here as we come towards the last 50 metres or so. They're rowing very nicely in this C Final. Melbourne Girls College of Audrey Farina, Abigail Grigg, Madison Bushney, Mimi Krista Rutan, and Georgia Katonis. Finishing very strongly here to take out the C final. Ballarat and Clarendon in lane three will finish in second place to Footscray High School in third place with Shelford Girls Grammar in fourth. So a tight final there, finishing all within a length, half a length. Great row to the girls in the Year 10 Division 4 C final. So continuing with the Year 10 Division 4 B final now. Four crews in this event. Furbank Grammar in lane one. St Catharines in lane two. Loretto Ballarat in three. And Ballarat Grammar in lane four. So as these crews go under the McIntyre Bridge with the banners fluttering above their heads, there's half a length between all four of them at this stage. A very close race here in this B final. We have Furbank Grammar in lane one and slightly ahead of them would be St Catharines in lane two with Loretto Ballarat back a little bit further back in lane three and Ballarat Grammar on station four a further half a length behind them. But it's a very close race here between Furbank and St Catharines. And Furbank rowing very nicely here. And as, as mentioned a couple of times, as the girls increase their pressure and rating 
and want to lift the rating of the boat. Often things can go a little bit skew if with their oars, so they've got to maintain their pressure, not get overexcited, keep calm and keep rowing is the key. But it's Furbank, half a length in front of this St. Catherine's combination of Violetta Campini, Martha McKellar, Sophie Hawker, Lily van der Ven and Amy Lou the Cox. And Furbank a half a length in ahead here of St. Cath's, a further half a length behind to the Ballarat combination of Grace Jackson, Sophie Reed, Sophie Calvert, Mia Matthews, Lily Bray the Cox. So the Furbank crew lifting their rating again here. They've got the St. Catharines crew covered and they can see them in their sights. And it is a very tight finish here with Ballarat Grammar having a late run as well. But it is the Furbank combination. Ballarat Grammar having a go at St. Catharines, but St. Catharines will finish second. Ballarat Grammar third. And Loretto Ballarat in fourth place. So a win there to the Furbank Grammar combination of Hope Watson Hook. Charlie Robertson, Priscilla Bainon, Beatrix Scott and Hannah Pordage the Cox. They take out the Year 10 Division 4 B final. And we move straight into the E final for Year 10 Division 3. So we go upper division and we have three crews in this event. Lowther Hall in lane one, Turak College in two and the Genizano are in lane three. So two crews in lanes one and three battling it out here as they come under the shadows of the James Harrison Bridge. It is Lowther Hall in lane one, Greta Bell, Amelia Fox, Poppy Smith, Eleanor Duggan, Sophia St Storace is the coxswain, with Jenna Zano over in lane four, Sienna McKinnon, April Bogdanovsky, Alice Courtney, Bailey Riddle and Juliet Moran the cox. And it's... Lowther Hall currently having a slight canvas lead over the Genizano crew who have lifted their rating. So it'll be very close here. A little bit deceiving from the commentary box as these two crews are neck and neck. The Genizano crew are finishing the stronger and will take out this final, the E final. Genizano in first place with Lowther Hall in second place. A further two lengths back to Turak College, Lucy Maggio, Kiara Nash, Henrietta Love, Talia Rao and Lucy Hall, the Cox. Moving into the D final, Year 10, Division 3. So Wrighton in lane one, Sacred Heart in two, St. Catharines three and Lauriston in four. And the Wrighton crew in lane one are lengths in front here as they come through to the halfway mark of this event at the 500 metre mark. It is the Wrighton combination of Freddie Phillips, Ruby Jansen, April Carney, Lulu Spinks and Abby Grogan the Cox. A length in front of all other three, of the other three crews who are in lane two, Sacred Heart, Scarlett Mapleson, Lola Thomas, Emma Sexton, Ella Robinson and Zoe Schumacher. St Catharines, level with Sacred Heart at this stage and also with Lauriston over in lane four but St Catherine's crew of Sam Platt, Violet Stevens, Ava Murray, Eve Plummer and Sophia Sinclair, the Cox with Lauriston, Amelia De Lacey, Chloe Wenzel, Sophie, Sophie Newitt, Catherine Kassab and Sophie Day, the Cox but this Wrighton combination in this final, the D final 
A length and a half ahead and pulling away here is to come on they come under the James Harrison Bridge with a hundred meters to go. And Freddie, Ruby, April, Lulu and Abby urging them on. Abby's urging them on and they're rowing very nicely too as they come through to this D final. All other three crews very close, so if they've got anything left in the tank, they should probably use it about now. The Wrighton girls are covered very well by these um, beautiful rowing conditions and also enjoying this row. And they are winning here by a couple of lengths, which is great for them. So well done to Wrighton. Rowing in the Louisa Burberry, so a great win for Louis today as she's sitting at home in retirement. Maybe she's on the bank, she can come and say hello. In second place will be Lauriston. Third place, St Catherine's. And in fourth place will be Sacred Heart. But a great win there to Wrighton, rowing in the Louisa Burberry. Second place to Lauriston, third St Catherine's and fourth place to Sacred Heart. Female school coxed quad skull year 10 division 3 C final. Lane 1, Melbourne Girls College. Lane 2, Halebury. Lane 3, Furbank. And lane 4 is Fintana. And as they come through the James Harrison Bridge, the battle is on between Furbank and Melbourne Girls College. These two crews very close together here. And Furbank... Isabel Mitchell, Catherine Bloomfield, Zara Fife, Daisy Harridge, coxed by Caitlin Barwood. Melbourne Girls College matching them here. Great rating here as they come through to the finish because they want to try and win this C final. The Furbank crew have got good clearance as they lifted their rating with Melbourne Girls College in second place. Furbank certainly rowing over the top of Melbourne Girls College as we come through to the finish here rowing very nicely in their crew. The Furbank girls digging in there as they finish in first place with Melbourne Girls College half of length behind them. And the Fintana crew of Claire Lau, Aurelia Tropia, Tina Capnius, Isabella Gale and Chloe Chanu will finish in third place. And Halebury, Eliza Kelly, Ashley Hamill, Alice Cochram, Holly Bristriski and Sharania Hylian in fourth. So we now move up to the B final of year 10 division three with all A finals being held this afternoon. So the B finals being completed prior to one o'clock. And in the B final, this particular race, race 401, we have Ballarat and Clarendon in lane one. Melbourne Girls Grammar School in lane two. Loretto Ballarat in lane three. And Albert Park College in lane four. And as per the seeding, it is Melbourne Girls Grammar and Loretto in lane three who are having a very close battle here as they head towards through the 500 and into the last 200 metres here. Melbourne Girls Grammar half a length in front here, but the crews in lanes three and four have been rowing very nicely as they come through under the bridge. So Melbourne Girls Grammar School, Olivia Jane, Georgia Harris, Lily Ebbles, Jada Tankard and Lucinda Theodore the Cox rowing very nicely with Anna Jones, Maddie Gelgen, Imogen Mann, Sophie Robertson and Molly Hudson from Loretto. 
Melbourne Girls Grammar have got this Loretto crew covered at the moment, but the Loretto crew will be lifting their rating as all crews do in these last 100 metres. Hopefully they can keep it neat and tidy, but Melbourne Girls Grammar have also responded to the increase from Loretto. A great tussle here as they come through to the last 50 metres. Both crews, Coxons, urging their crews on. A very close finish coming up here, ladies and gentlemen. Loretto bobbing the bobbing uh, Melbourne Girls Grammar going through and it looks like Melbourne Girls Grammar will take it out by half a canvas to Loretto Ballarat. In third place will be Ballarat and Clarendon, Olivia Hickenbotham, Caitlin Dent, Orvi Santa Peretti, Moby McAuliffe and Anna Sun the Cox and in fourth place Albert Park College, Georgina Camillan, Ali Newen, Jane Sorbus, Julia Kwiatkowska and Adeline Tan, the Cox. So winning the B final of the Year 10 Division 3 Melbourne Girls Grammar School. The E final of Year 10 Division 2, two crews across the river here, Cardinia a length in front of Turak College, Cardinia International College, Grace O'Day, Claire Jamison, Molly Callahan, Ava Lyons, Emma Cartland, coached by Peter White and Adrian Keats. Uh, a length in front of Turak College, Audrey Millen Sigley, Zara Jolly, Jade Victory, Lola Graham, and Sophia Iyer, the Cox. So, Cadinia, the very distinctive stripes, maroon stripes on the Cadinia crew. Rowing very nicely here in this quad scale year 10 division 2 E final. So Cadinia College will take this out bearing barring a mishap in the last few meters but they're looking very rowing very nicely here blade work looks very clean as they come through to the finish. And Cardinia College will win that E final from Turak College. Next race on the uh, coming towards the James Harrison Bridge is the Year 10 Division 2 D final. Gippsland Grammar in lane one, PLC in two, Loretto in three, and Ballarat Clarendon in lane four. And Ballarat Clarendon over in lane four are currently slightly ahead of uh, PLC. Sorry, yeah, PLC. With Loretto also in the mix here as they come through the shadows there it is the Ballarat and Clarendon combination that are half a length in front of their fellow Ballarat rivals Loretto with PLC a further half a length maybe not even that far a canvas behind that with Gippsland Grammar a further few lengths back but this is Ballarat Car Clarendon combination Zara Ambrose Ashley Moffat Tess Geljohn Sophie Cadoso and Sienna Ward are a length in front of Loretto Ballarat who are battling it out for second place with PLC but pulling away now so Ballarat and Clarendon are going to take out this D final a length in front of Loretto Ballarat who are a length in front of PLC and a further two lengths back to Gippsland Grammar
A reminder to all rowers and coxswains to return those bow numbers as soon as you've finished, please. We've got a very busy series of events and we need all the bow numbers returned as soon as you've completed your race. They need to be washed and put back onto another boat, so please make sure that you're returning your bow numbers as promptly as possible. Thank you. Event 404 is the Year 10 Division 2 C Final. With Genazano in Lane 1, Lowther Hall in Lane 2, currently half a length in front of Genazano, with St Catharines a further half a length back in Lane 3, battling it out with Melbourne Girls College on the far side, who are in probably now half a length in front of the St Catharines crew as they come through under the James Harrison Bridge. It is Lowther Hall, half a length in front of Genazano in Lane 1, but Melbourne Girls College on the far side are putting a bit of pressure on as they approach the final 100 metres here. Lowther Hall, Charlotte Patterson, Olivia Douglas, Ashley Dorrington, Elizabeth Burke, Philippa Small in the Year 10 Division 2 C final. Melbourne Girls College have rode over the top of St Catharines as they come through here. And now they're putting some pressure on Genazano in lane one. So it is the... Allow the Hall combination who'll take out this C final, finish in first place. Melbourne Girls College over on lane four will finish in second from Genazano in lane one in third place and St Catharines in fourth. Event 405 is the Quad Skull Year 10 Division 2 B Final. Albert College in Lane 1, Ballarat Grammar in 2, Strathcona in 3 and Wrighton in Lane 4. Ballarat Grammar and Albert Park are having a good battle here as they've come through the first 500 metres with Ballarat Grammar a canvas in front of the Albert Park College crew in Lane 1. A further half a length back to Strathcona in lane three and Wrighton over on lane four. Ballarat Grammar, Cleo Tyndall, Laura Gollan, Bess Morrison, Katie Johnson, Bella Jenkins, the Cox. Half a length in front of Albert Park College, Naomi Hibbard, Eloise Doig, Millic Millicent Drack, Michaela Stambles Eve, Zavena Fafandi, the Cox. And then Wrighton on the far side in third place, Mia Hoyle, Bridget Lucas, Anna Triong, Zara Grogan and Zoe Higgins. But Bal uh, Strathcona are also in the mix there for third and fourth. Juliet Stamby, Olivia Harris, Eleanor Inston, Paige Guthrie and Sophie Nettleton. But it is the Ballarat Grammar combination who are pulling away here from Albert Park College in this B final of the Year 10 Division 2. A great strong race here from the Ballarat girls, very strong in their quad skulls.
they will take out this B final in first place. A length clear of Strathcona who have rode a fantastic second half of the race and finished in second place. With Albert Park College in third and Wrighton in fourth. Event 406 is the Year 10 Division 2 C final. Geelong Grammar number four crew in lane one. Shelford Girls Grammar in two. And Ge Caulfield Grammar in lane three. So Caulfield Grammar are a length in front of Shelford here as they come through the 500 metre mark. This is a school eight division two. So Caulfield Grammar, Julien, Julien Petitpierre, Rosie White, Alexandra Toptian, Kiara Spanos, Lily Jean Glenn, Grace Ag, Madison Fall, Lola Karavesov and Zoe April Lecox. Coming through here in the eight, year 10, division eight, two eight C final. So Caulfield Grammar, length and a half ahead of Shelford with Geelong Grammar a further couple of lengths behind, but it is the Caulfield Grammar combination who will Lengthen their strokes, get the boat running, and cross the line shortly in first place. So taking out the C final, year 10, eight, division two. Caulfield Grammar take out the C final. They're excited about that. Shelford will be second. Kylie Chen, Annabelle Watt, Kevin, uh, sorry, Cindy May, Millie Meyer, Asher Kukila, Scarlett Cohen, Grace Eastdown, Elizabeth Gillard with Winnie Roberts, the Cox. And coming down in third place here, Geelong Grammar, Isla Johnston, Beth Laylor, Chloe Thomas, Victoria Maxted, Georgie Dobson, Georgie Percy, Bianca Jupp, Delilah Hooper, and Cox by Winnie Heaven. Well rode, girls. Now we have the B final of the Year 10 Division 2 8s. Geelong Grammar in lane 2, Carey Grammar in 3, Halebury in, sorry, Geelong Grammar in 1, Geelong Grammar number 2 crew in 1, Carey Grammar in lane 2, Halebury in 3, and Geelong Grammar number 3 crew in lane 4. And as they come through the 500 metres, the Geelong Grammar combination of Sylvie Perrin, Chloe Sangster, Lana Kalusik, Abigail Rigby, Sophie Strayer, Tess Shanahan, Kresha Yaiwal and Aisha Yaiwal with Michelle Law the Cox. Uh, a canvas ahead of Halebury in lane three. A Halebury combination looking a little bit more settled here as they come through the bridge, but all three crews are within half a length of each other here as they approach the critical final 100 metre mark and come through the bridge. Halebury, half a length in front of Geelong Grammar now. They've had a good 500, a good middle 500. Halebury, Ali Craig, Indy Brabmar, Lucinda Vale, Tamara Sando, Meg Nalon, Pearl Daniel Reed, Evie Arnold, Evie Robin, Eva Robinson and Heidi Cracknell Lecox pulling away here from Geelong Grammar and Carey. Carey giving Geelong Grammar a bit of a run as Geelong Grammar lift their rating. 
but it is the Halebury combination who will take out the Cox State Year 10, looking very good for their head of the river next weekend. Carey and Geelong Grammar battling it out here. Carey taking it out with Geelong Grammar in third. Check your oars, girls, please. And the Geelong Grammar combination of Sophie Wright, Alice Nardorp, Sophie Guest, Charlotte Langdon, Bella Smith, Izzy O'Connor, Juliet Curry, Coco Barrow and Violet Rowell Lecox will be finishing in fourth place over in lane four. So race 408, Division 1 of the Year 10 Quad Skulls. We go back to four-oared racing here. Three crews, Strathcona in lane one, are a length in front of Genazano in lane three with Turak College a further half a length behind them. But the Strathcona combination of Karis Jackson, Emma Nettleton, Sadie Schlicht, Bella Marzi and Eliza Blue, the Cox, a length in front of Genazano, Ruth, well, two lengths in front of Genazano, Ruth Clancy, Alice McGrath, Sienna Lindemann, Tess Ellard, and Verona Semigian, the Cox. Genazano and Turak College battling it out for second place here. Turak College, Ruby Bowen, Molly Hughes, Alexis Hudson, Aspen Kelly, and Willow Hughes, the Cox. So the sparkling pink future, fuchsia coral colours of Strathcona. Uh, now coming down here for the last 50 metres. few more strokes for these girls as they take out the D final of the Quad Skull Year 10 Division 1. Rowing very nicely. These girls are going well set up for senior rowing in 2025 and beyond. Genazano finishing in second place with Turak College in third. So event 409 is the Year 10 Division 1 C final. Gippsland Grammar in lane one, Albert Park College uh, in lane two, Ballarat and Clarendon in three, and Melbourne Girls College over in lane four. And it is the combination from Albert Park College who are currently half a length in front of Gippsland Grammar with Ballarat and Col Clarendon a further half length behind them with Melbourne Girls College on station four. The Albert Park College combination of jo Jocelyn Doig, Ella Strangwood, Coco Jones, Isabel Perkins, Indigo Brown, the Cox. A length in front of Gippsland Grammar as they come through here to the finish line. So it's Gippsland Grammar, Kate Edgar, Tara Deald, Lily Canfield, Sorel Fraser and Mia Del Busso, the coach, Cox, sorry. They've got Ballarat and Clarendon covered, but Albert Park College are taking out this C final by a length from Gippsland Grammar. A further half a length back to Ballarat and Clarendon 
with Melbourne Girls College in fourth place. In between races, I'll um, give the merchandise tent a bit of a push. They're closing at 2 o'clock, so do not put off what you should be doing now. There are still a number of prepaid orders to collect, so please don't uh, forget to collect your orders. Uncollected orders will need to be collected from the Regatta Shop factory in Moorabbin if you don't pick them up today. So I can assure you a quick trip to the back of the tents is much quicker than a drive to Moorabbin or we can be posted at a cost of $15. So the merchandise tent is closing at two. So please don't forget to A, purchase and B, pick up your ordered items. Event 410 is the Year 10 Division 1 Quad Skull. Ballarat Grammar in lane one, MLC in two, Wrighton in three and St Catharines in lane four. And MLC and Wrighton with Ballarat Grammar on the inside are having a fair battle here as they come through towards the James Harrison Bridge. I think the MLC crew would be about a canvas in front of Wrighton with Ballarat Grammar potentially in third place. But we've seen a few quick changes here as they come through the last 100 metres as girls are not leaving anything in the tank, which they should not on today. There's nothing left, not saving yourself for anything. MLC crew, Imogen Grant, Zoe Jackal, Chloe Bake, Matia Brown and Freya Kuznanda, the Cox, currently half a length ahead of Brighton as they close in on these last bits and Brighton have lifted their rating and are having a go at MLC, but the MLC girls are responding well. Brighton are certainly challenging them. It'll be very close here in the finish. MLC, Brighton second. Ballarat Grammar third and St Catharines in fourth. I'll just get confirmation of that. It was very close. It's only my eye. I am not the judge. So MLCQ taking out the B final of the Year 10 Division 1. Second place, Wrighton Girls. Third, Ballarat Grammar. And fourth, St Catharines. And now we move straight into the B final of the Division 10, sorry, Year 10, Division 1, School 8. As these three crews, you could throw a blanket over them as they come through to the um, Harrison Bridge. Geelong Grammar in Station 3, MLC in 2, and Carey in 1. Carey in lane one, uh, Brooke Kaffer, Matilda Cronin, Caitlin McIntyre, Ava Thomas, Brody Barker, Zara Voller, Gemma Gowans, Laura Mercerillo and Goldie McDiarmid. MLC, Tilly Ellis, Sophie Anderson, Amelia Shen, Alice Newton, Emily DeBanks, Olivia Apostolou, Meredith Delamata, Sienna Fitzgerald and Scarlett Ramsdale. But it is the Geelong Grammar combination who are half a length in front. Annabelle Osman, Sophie Reed, Willa McLaughlin, Zoe Reed, Madison Sinego, Stella Keenan, Daisy Hanbury, Chloe Fitzgerald and Lucia Church the Cox pulling away here in the last 100, ma 100 metres. Lucia Church urging them on, rowing in the very famous Garth Manton and I couldn't be more delighted to see this boat crossing the line on this day. Well done girls. Geelong Grammar first. Close battle here for second. MLC take it out from Carey. So the Geelong Grammar combination taking out the B final of the School 8 Year 10 Division 1. MLC second and Carey third.
Now we go back into the double skulls, Year 10, Division 1, C final. Lane 1, Wrighton, Azara Fallshear and Pippa Addison. Lane 2 is Albert Park College, Radara Fafandi and Lucia Hamilton. And in Turak, for Turak College, Asher Scott and Piper Isles. Albert Park College combination currently a length in front of Wrighton with a further length behind to the Turak College combination. So, Ridea and Lucia rowing very nicely here. They've just got to check their course, which they're doing now. Slight look over the shoulder to check that they're going straight with Wrighton in second place, although Turak College girls have decided to not leave anything in the tank and they've lifted their rating as well. But it is the Wrighton combination that's holding them off slightly. But the Albert College girls goes rowing very nicely here through to the finish. Got to make sure you're in the middle of the lane so we don't hit boys with oars. So Albert College will take out the C final of the double skull. Uh, Wrighton might have just pipped her at College there. I'll wait for the judges on that one. So first place, Albert Park College, second, Wrighton Girls, and third, Turak College. So we'll have uh, further three races and then a short lunch break before we commence with the 1500 metre events. Race 416 moves out to 1500 metres, so races become a little bit longer after lunch. So a quick lunch break to give everyone a chance to refresh, rehydrate, refuel. But we still have three races to go. The Double Skull Year 10 Division 1 B final is currently coming through the 500 metre, past the 500 metre mark now. So Melbourne Girls College in uh, lane one, Corowa in lane two, Wesley in three and Baldwin High School in lane four. And the Corowa girls, Caitlin Olding and Hannah Waddell are uh, half a length in front of the Melbourne Girls College combination of Ruby Gower and Femi McGregor with Bridget Tan and Poppy Page from ba Baldwin High in lane four, putting some pressure on Olivia Skelton and Ava Scurra from Wesley College. So all these crews rowing very nicely as they come through to the last 100 metres. A nice close finish here in the double skulls. Corowa, uh, Caitlin Olding and Hannah Waddell. This is the B final of the year 10 division one double skulls. And the Baldwin High School crew have lifted on the far side here. We've just got to make sure nobody hits a boy as they come through, which will muck up their rowing. But it is Corowa taking out first place. Baldwin High will finish in second. Wesley third. And Melbourne Girls College in fourth place. The last two events before the lunch break will be Year 10 Division 1 Single Skull C Final and followed by the Year 10 Division 1 B Final. A reminder over the lunch break to go to the merchandise tent to pick up anything you may need or anything that you would like to purchase. So they're closing at 2 o'clock so you really only have a couple of hours to go and do your shopping.
The C final of the Year 10 Division 1 Single Skulls from St Paul's College in Lane 2, Imogen Rag. And in Gippsland Grammar, Ruby Pope is in Lane 3. And currently Imogen Rag has a good lead here as she heads down towards the finishing line. So Imogen Rag from St Paul's College rowing in her beautiful red boat. So congratulations to Imi as she crosses the line and finishes first in the C final of the Year 10 Division 1 behind Ruby Pope from Gippsland. Lovely round of applause for our single scholars. So event 415, the single skull year 10 division one B final, Furbank Grammar in lane one, Clonard in two, Matthew Flinders in three and Turak College in four. We've had a tumble, lane one. So the Furbank Grammar girl has fallen out of her skull. Fortunately, right next to the lifeguards, which is helpful. So the Matthew Flinders rower Matilda Murray, coached by Jeff Sykes, is currently a length in front of the Clonard competitor Aurora Shields with Louise Roach from Turak College in third place. A very close finish here in this single skull year 10 division one. So these three girls are actually very close together as they come towards the finish line. Clonard competitors lifting her rating and put a, being a bit of pressure on Matilda Murray. And of course, as they increase their rating, the boat can get a little bit wobbly. So a wonderful finish here from Turak College as well. Both girls are rowing very nicely as they come towards the finish line. And uh, Matilda's pulling out all stops though, and she will very close finish there. Matthew Flinders in first. Turak College second and Clonard third. Might wait for confirmation from the judge on that one. And of course we also have a sculler still on the water. But that is lunch now, so we'll have a short break before the race 416 is due to commence in about 20 minutes. All right, official results from race 415. In first place was Matilda Murray from Matthew Flinders. Second, Aurora Shields from Clonard. And third place, Turak College's Louisa, Louise Roach in the single skull year 10 division one B final. Enjoy your lunch break. Please make sure you seek shade, rehydrate, refuel, pick up anything you need from the merchandise tent. And we will return for the afternoon's racing 
as soon as the lunch break concludes. Thank you. Yori Wu from Furbank Grammar has reboated herself, so she will in fact finish this race. She's got herself back in the boat. So Yori Wu is from Yori Wu is from Furbank. So lots of support for Yori as she comes down to finish off this race in the single skull year 10 division one B final. She will be very happy to have finished that. So a big round of applause for Yori from Furbank as she completes her Year 10 Division 1 B final. Well done, Yuri.
Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back for the uh, second session, the final session of racing at the head of the schoolgirls for 2024. Thank you to Jane Horn for a commentary just prior to the uh, the very brief lunch break, some uh, 10 or 12 minutes uh, just about gone, and racing soon to resume. Thank you also to the Cryo Bay Rowing Club who provided the uh, the catering for all the uh, officials here over the course of the uh, weekend, which have just uh, demolished in the space of 10 minutes or so. But uh, thank you as always to the hardworking uh, members and supporters from the Cario Bay Rowing Club for uh, all the, uh, the officials catering at this regatta. But we are ready to race down at the start. The 1500 metre held start. It's a reminder too, temperature is uh, scheduled to heat up even more over the course of the next uh, couple of hours. Uh, up towards 30 degrees so uh, it is important that all athletes especially do maintain their hydration uh, this afternoon so we do encourage you all to stay aware of the uh, temperature seek out some shade as much as possible and uh, don't suffer any ill effects from the, the warm temperatures we'll see over the concluding uh, three and a half or so hours of this regatta but we are away now from the uh, 1500 metre start in the next of our B finals we concluded just before lunch with the uh, year 10 races. We now have a few uh, B finals and C finals from the open events before we'll uh, eventually move through to the A finals at about 1.30 uh, this afternoon. So uh, still a few open finals first of all. And uh, the opening one of those is on the way. You can see there the red boat of Korowa who've got two crews here in race 416. The B final of the open division five Cox quad scale. Coral lanes one and two. Hamilton and Alexander racing in lane three. And Strathcona across in uh, lane four. So they're on their way from the held start at 1,500 metres. Reminder too that the regatta shop uh, merchandise tent is closing at uh, 2 o'clock this afternoon. So in 90 minutes time. Told there's still a number of prepaid orders to collect. If you don't collect that in the next hour and a half, you will have to instead collect that from the uh, regatta shop factory in uh, Moorabbin in uh, Melbourne. Or otherwise postage can be arranged at a cost of $15. But the uh, most straightforward way is to collect it here at the regatta this afternoon. They're open until 2 o'clock. The merchandise tent located at the rear of the spectator area on the northern bank of the Barwon River. Now quads comfortably through the first uh, 500 metres in this opening race after lunch. The B final of the Open Division 5 Cox Quad Skull. Really tight between the leading crews here, two Strathcona and one of the Coral crews in lane two. It looks like Coral are lane two, the leading crew Kiara Munro, Emma Wang, Ruby Dugerville, Ashani Martin, and Emily Bell. From uh, Strathcona Lane 4, Hayley Bullen, Ava Armstrong, Chloe Snadden, Lauren Osborne, and uh, also Olivia Elliott in the cock seat of that boat from Strathcona. Between those two sits, the Hamilton and Alexandra combination, Molly Meacham, Isabel Meacham, Georgina Russell, Annabelle Walker, and Emma Donovan. And then Corowa on uh, Lane 1, the northern side of the course, the crew there of Zoe Norman, Olivia Lidstone, Olivia Di Rosario, Rachel Rogers, and Sophie Menting in the boat there for Corowa. So they're about halfway through now. There's 1,500 metre race. The B final of the Open Division 5 at Cox Quad Skull. The A final, of course, to come later on this afternoon. The Open finals will be the conclusion to the day. Open A finals commencing at uh, four minutes past three and going through to the last race at 3.55. The uh, conclusion in many cases to the rowing careers 
of a number of the uh, the open athletes in those races today. This is the B final still, so again, this will represent the culmination in many cases of a, a four-year rowing career for uh, the girls in these boats. Although uh, some, of course, in year 11 will be back to race again next year. Hamilton Alexandra have come through strongly here in the middle stages alongside that Coral Walker that still leads on lane two, but they're certainly well past Strathcona now on lane four. And Coral will lane one uh, still slightly out of view from here and slightly out of the camera's view at the moment, but there they are, in fact, the lane one crew from Coral who would sit clearly in fourth position. The next race also underway, which is the B final of the Open Division 5 uh, Coxed 4. Of course, alternating quad scales and Coxed 4s here at the uh, the Open level. And also some eight finals coming up shortly as well, the B and C finals of the Open Division 8s, which are always such uh, great races to watch as the 8s make their way rather speedily down the 1500 metre course. As are doing the two crews here in the centre lanes from Hamilton and Alexandra College and also Corowa Anglican Girls School in lanes uh, three and two respectively. Those two crews holding sway here by uh, a bit over a length from, uh, again, a tight race for third and fourth it would be between the two crews on either side of the course. Strathcona in the, uh, the coral pink on the far side, the southern make, where again it's, the crowds look to be growing over there each time I look out the window. And uh, indeed, too, plenty of cyclists following down on that uh, great viewing path on the south side of the Barwon River. But uh, it is racing two here with Hamilton and Alexandra ahead certainly of the crew from Corowa and uh, with under 200 metres now to race that looks like a pretty decisive move that came from Hamilton and Alexandra in the centre section of that race the middle 500 metres and they were able to take the lead there and seemingly extend that now over Corowa in uh, second place Strathcona thereabouts as well on the far side and then Corowa lane one the fourth and final crew in the race. So places five, six, seven and eight to be determined here in the Open Division 5 at Cox Quad Scale. And it is certainly a uh, clear lead of over a length to the uh, crew from Hamilton and Alexandra College in Western Victoria. Becoming interesting for second place to Strathcona, really charging home alongside Corowa. So that's the uh, very tight race here at this stage with Hamilton and Alexandra clear by about a length and a half as they go across and take out the B final of the Open Cox Quad Scale. Division 5, second will be tight. Corowa just holding on, and they will get there, I think, the crew from Corowa Lane 2, just second ahead of Strathcona. Lane 4 will finish third, and then Corowa Lane 1 in fourth place in that, the B final of the Open Division 5 at Coxed Quad Skull. And confirmation there, Hamilton, Alexandra, the winners. In the B final, the Open Division 5, Cox Quad Scale second will go to Corowa Lane 2 by 0.19 of a second over Strathcona Lane 3. So very, uh, Lane 4, I should say, for Strathcona in third place. So very tight there, but Corowa will finish sixth overall and Strathcona will be seventh in that, uh, that B final, Division 5, Quad Scale. Now to the Cox 4s. B final of the Open Division 5 crew. Ballarat Clarendon racing in lane one. Geelong College in two. Genizano racing in lane three. A final coming up at 3.13 of this particular event. There's crews now about halfway down the 1500 metre course. In fact, a bit more than that now as they head towards the, uh, the McIntyre Bridge, which uh, pretty much marks the two-third mark of the course. 
for these crews rowing over 1,500 metres. So it's Genazano there in lane three. Molly Collins, Molly Pitson, Talia Middleton, Daisy Wang and Zara Lenane, coached by Jemima Dwyer. Passing it back to the 1,000 metre marker on the uh, side of the course. So 1,000 metres through the 1,500 metre course now for that crew uh, from Genazano. And they... Uh, they seem to have opened up a pretty substantial lead on the remaining two crews in the race. So we yet to come back into uh, clear view here. Geelong College lane two. And uh, Ballarat Clarendon in lane one. There's the crew from the Geelong College running on their home waters here. Chosen Bunker, Matilda Hayes, Tilly Taylor, Poppy Flanagan and Abigail Ramsey coached by Jackie Marshall. And then Ballarat Clarendon on the inside of the course on this northern side back in third place as we're getting a look to at our eights coming into the start line there is the crew from Ballarat Clarendon John Quarum, Mabel Goss, Wangji Lee, Marnie Cook and Pippa Miller coached by Lucy Richardson and Hamish Richardson and that on screen now is a Corowa crew from race 418 so we switch between the Cox 4 and the Quad Skull that clearly there's the Coral Quad racing in lane two of the B final of the Open Division Three at Coxed Quad. Ahead there of Sacred Heart and PLC Melbourne. So two races on the course at the same time and our eight's about to go away as well from the 1500 metre start. So plenty of action right along the course here as will be the case uh, no doubt right throughout this afternoon's racing. There is a great few of our uh, held start pontoons up at the 1500 and a number of eights lined up behind uh, those crews to come down fairly shortly that is uh carey grammar and the geelong college will race in the sea final of the open eight division three shortly but in the meantime we're seeing the conclusion of the b final of the open cox four division five and genizano as they have been for quite some time are comfortably clear here they've uh, got three and a half to four length margin over the Geelong College in second place and Ballarat Clarendon in third. So the order remains as it's been for uh, quite some time here as they go past the final line of boys. 25 minutes out from the finish line. Now the crew from Genazano will come across and take the win in the B final of the Open Division 5 at Cox 4. They'll finish in fifth place overall as Genazano take the win on lane three. About four lengths back in the end to the Geelong College in second place. And a similar margin then back to Ballarat Clarendon College, who will finish in third. The open Cox 4, Division 5. Two of the three crews across the line now. And uh, Ballarat Clarendon soon to follow as well. Our eights are underway in the C final of the open eight, Division 3, back at uh, 1,500 metres down the course. And here comes Ballarat Clarendon 2 to complete. Race 417, they finish in third place in the B final of the Open Division 5 at Cox 4. Now the Quad Skulls coming next in the uh, Division 3 B final, Division 3 Quad, Sacred Heart Lane 1, Corowa Lane 2, PLC Melbourne Lane 3. And as it was from that action we saw mid-race, still a uh, handy lead to the combination from the uh, Corowa Anglican Girls School racing in Lane 2. The crew there of uh, Louise Zhao. Eloise Darvill, Joy Wang, Hannah Curtin and Jada Lee Conway for Corowa who are well clear of uh, both PLC and Sacred Heart, the two uh, chasing crews. PLC lane three, Layla Yang, Sarah Shrews, and Jali Green, Jessica Hugh and Minnie Liao. And Sacred Heart lane one, Poppy Haxby, Innes Douglas, Amelia Ucho, Ruby Davey and Charlotte Shooten in the uh, crew there for Sacred Heart. The eights coming down now, Sue, and that's C finally open. Division 3 eights, Carey Grammar in the yellow, ahead now of uh, Geelong College in the dark green in the uh, early strokes of that race. So before the Geelong College boat shed adorned with banners uh, too, back in the uh, the boating area. The green machine and other such uh, slogans all over the uh, Geelong College and also Geelong Grammar sheds uh, alongside each other just around the corner from here in uh, the uh, boating area on the Barwon River, but it's uh, going to be Coral here in this B final of the Open Division 3 Cox Quad Scale, a comfortable lead 
as it was for Genazano in the previous race in these uh, in these B finals. So it's going to be a uh, strong win coming up to the crew from Corowa on lane two in race 418. And the crew from Corowa winding up onto the finish now and they will come across comfortably clear about four lengths the margin from Corowa back to PLC Melbourne who will finish in second place. And then Sacred Heart will finish third about some uh, three or so lengths further back as we see PLC coming across the line short just making contact there with the last of the boys on the course but they'll get across safely in second place which means they do finish in sixth place overall and uh, they'll be followed home by the crew from Sacred Heart Two eights continue down the course here in the C final of the Open Division 3 8. It is Kerry Lane 2 leading it from Geelong College Lane 3 as it's been since the early strokes of the race and Kerry now out to about a three length lead and seemingly extending that with uh, pretty much every stroke they take. Now that's the Geelong College crew with the green blades there on screen. Crew is Hannah Brown, Grace Spate, Amy Sadler, Java Lucas, Lottie Hughes, Ruby Jane Roberts, Charlotte McGuinness, Olivia Winhoven and Olivia Hanbury. They are coached by uh, Jackie Marshall, who was coaching a uh, Geelong College Cox 4 a couple of races ago. So a rather busy time, certainly, for her. And uh, they trail butt from the Kerry Grammar crew, who uh, leads the uh, race. Also see Geelong Grammar coming down the course. That's the B final behind them. Geelong Grammar, MLCQ, and also Lauriston Girls. But here are our race leaders from Kerry in the C final, who uh, will shortly claim eighth spot overall, it will be. From the nine entrants in the Open Division 3 8, the Kerry crew, Claire Munro, Maya Tate, Eloise Sheridan, Aisha Whiteley, Miller Zurab, Zoe Kendall, Caitlin Jackson, Ella Eagleton, and Abigail Wolf for uh, Kerry Grammar. About 30 minutes to go as they roll across the final section of the course here, well clear of the Geelong College. And it will be Kerry Grammar who take out the C final of the Open 8 Division 3. Kerry Lane 2 across in at first place. And then uh, Geelong College. Best part of 100 metres behind uh, them. And uh, they'll be across shortly to finish in second. And uh, that will give them, with just three crews in the B final, by my maths, ninth spot overall goes to uh, the Geelong College combination as they come across the line now as well in that C final. The Open Division 3-8. The B final now of the Open 8 Division 3. Lauriston Girls Lane 1, MLCQ Lane 2, and uh, Geelong Grammar in Lane 3. The uh, crews across the course here. Uh, positions 5, 6 and 7 being uh, raced for here. 
And still the A-file to come at 3.37 this afternoon. That will feature Geelong Grammar, Loretto Turak, Melbourne Girls Grammar School and St. Catharines. These are the next three crews chasing at the uh, highest ranking they can get here in the B final. In the centre of the course, MLCQ, Phoebe Katsakidis, Paige Rodard bean Francesca Moore, Jessica Anderson, Lauren Tresita, Imogen Teal, Sophia Rodriguez, Espinosa, Mia Patikas, Alessandra Lowe and David Cuff, the coach of the Q crew from MLC. We've uh, uh, got some pretty strong open eights this year in uh, divisions one, two and three. Geelong Grammar School in lane three. A similar story for that school as well. Olivia Migliorini, Ella Correa, Fiona Gillies, Paige Beckett, Eddie Braid, Eliza Reed, Elise Malott, Phoebe Jean Thompson, and Sophia Clark, the crew there for Geelong Grammar, who might just have the edge on the combination from MLC. And certainly in third place, it's the Lauriston crew of Sophie Dunlop, Bella Nolan, Romy Frey, Alexandra Anderson, Mia Stubb, Chloe Green, Charlotte Tadgill, Brianna Jin, Jojo Blamey, and Lucy Green, the coach of that crew from uh, Lauriston. But it is uh, certainly Geelong Grammar School who uh, lead the field here into the final 150 metres uh, now of the race. In fact, 100 to go when they hit this next line of boys as the boys uh, shrink to 25 metre increments over the final 100 of the course. And the lead is about a boat length now to the crew from Geelong Grammar School. So they have got the best, it seems, in this battle with MLC. Over the concluding stage of the race here, the B final of the Open 8 Division 3. Geelong Grammar School clear by a length from MLC and also Lauriston Girls. And it will be Geelong Grammar School in a couple of strokes time to come across and take the win. About two-thirds of a length of margin on the line. So Geelong Grammar School first, MLCQ in second place. And Lauriston Girls will finish third in race 420. That is the B final of the Open 8 Division 3. And uh, therefore Geelong Grammar will place fifth overall in the Open 8 Division 3 as we await the A final coming up later on this afternoon, which will be one of the final races of the regatta. Away from the start line now in the, uh, well the B final of the Open Quad Division 2. The C final already well down the course as well. So two races on the course here at the same time. Three boats in the C final at the uh, front of picture for those watching the big screens here on the live stream. That's the crew from uh, Sacred Heart Lane 3. Annika Baranski, Evie Omer, Ricky McMaster, Tilly McNamara and Eden Smith for Sacred Heart. Two at college in the centre lane. Jolly Kastrickham, Olivia Saritzis, Annabelle House, Sophie Teleskivi and Sophia Bedez. The uh, two at college combination from Mount Eliza, about to go underneath now the uh, McIntyre Bridge and some good timing. You can see there from that angle in this Turak College Division 2 open a Cox Quad Skull. Certainly some girls there pretty much at the peak of their rowing powers now as they do pass under that bridge, but still trailing certainly that Sacred Heart combination on the far side of the course. And the third boat in the race is the one from Fintana in lane one. That is Jessica Leung, Molly McKenzie, Maya Gunawardner, Alexandra Lewis, and Cecilia Hyo, the uh, Cox there of the Fintana crew, as we see them now, probably in second spot, certainly leading Turak College. I'd suggest uh, maybe just behind the uh, combination from uh, Sacred Heart, the uh, local hopes on the lane three, the far side or towards the southern side of the course. So Sacred Heart, Fintana, and Turak College, the three crews here racing in the C final of the Open Division Two Cox Quad. 9th, 10th and 11th places up for grabs here in this race. And the B final underway as well, which will decide places 5 through to 8. And it looks like our 8s are ready to go too. Back up at the start line. What will be the D final of the Open 8 Division 2? Plenty of uh, tight racing to come up shortly in these Open Division 2 events as our 8s are about to get moving. But it's the quad scale still for now. And uh, that is uh, back to the... Uh, the B final, Corowa prominent there in the, the red colours alongside the crew from Melbourne Girls College in that uh, B final, which is a couple minutes back down the course. But here's the finish of the C final coming up, and it is still the crew from Sacred Heart who leads over on lane three, and they do have a clear length margin on a very tight race. Then Fitton still have the edge on Turak College. 
but they're only about 50 metres out from the finish. Those two are close together, and Fitton are really going for a late surge now. The win will certainly go the way of the crew from Sacred Heart on lane three in race 421, and it will be Fintoner holding clear ahead of Turak College. They'll get second by half a length in the end. A strong finish there from the Fintoner combination. It was fighting for every position in this race. Fintoner second, Turak College third. At Sacred Heart, the winners of the C-Final in the Open Cox Quad Skull Division 2. They will take ninth spot overall in the uh, Division 2 event. I'd say go try and do 20 minutes. Yep. That is awesome if you're lucky. But it's pretty much, it might be like two, 20 minutes left, until five someone... Five Away in race uh, four, two, three. Now that's the uh, the eight at the uh, in the top left of the screen. The D final of the Open Eight Division Two, and uh, the big picture is of the uh, quad scales and the Open Division Two B final making their way into the final 500 metres of the course. There are our eights with the pace up early on there. Shelford Girls Grammar School with the uh, light blue blades there in lane one alongside Caulfield Grammar and also Wesley College. And then that's the quad scale from Melbourne Girls College in uh, race 422, racing alongside uh, Corowa Lane 2. Look to be the top two, clearly the top two, in fact, in this race, Corowa and Melbourne Girls College. That Corowa crew is Zoe Tao, Alice Lieberman, Tessa Plant, Emily Newen, and Phoebe Foran. And uh, for Melbourne Girls College, we have Gabrielle Simcox, Claudia Bellsmith, Lucy Mansfield, Hannah Scothen, and Aylan Gula. In the boat there for uh, Melbourne Girls College. Well clear of the other two boats in the race. PLC Melbourne over in lane four. Maya Van Bisu, Charlie Lowe, Talia Vesti, Claire Aikman and uh, Ronai Mamini. And then Lowther Hall in lane one. Rose Ellis, Emily Ray, Emily Wilson, Lena Dalda and Sonia Lee. The uh, crew there, but it's really two races in one here. A very good battle at the top between Corowa and Melbourne Girls College. Very good race for third place too between Lowther Hall and PLC Melbourne, but it looks like it might be Melbourne Girls College just in the ascendancy now in that race with Corowa alongside them. About half a length between those two crews as they pass underneath the uh, the James Harrison Bridge and head into the final 150 metres at now of this race. So Melbourne Girls College looking to extend their lead out to about a length on the crew from Corowa who are trying to respond here on this northern side of the course. Then it's very tight also between uh, Lowther Hall and PLC still on opposite sides in the race for third and fourth here. The B final of the Open Cox Quad Skull Division 2, but Melbourne Girls College lead it. And they do have close to a boat length lead now, so they will come across and take the win over the crew from Corowa in second place. The win goes to Melbourne Girls College on lane three, second to Corowa lane two. Third and fourth is uh, still pretty tight. It looks to be Lowther Hall just on uh, this northern side, narrowly ahead of PLC Melbourne on the far side. Still not much between those two crews, but enough of a margin it'll be for the crew from Lowther Hall as they come across in third place. About half a length clear of PLC Melbourne, who will finish in fourth. So that B final concluded of the open Cox Quad Skull Division 2. We now turn our attention to the Open 8 Division 2. One of the uh, the big events of this regatta. Plenty of uh, heats and repercharges, semi-finals required. And now we have the D and C finals, both on the course at the same time. That's the C final now just underway. Four crews across the course there. Melbourne Girls College, Kerry Grammer, Genizano and Damascus. The uh, four boats in the sea final. This event also is uh, sponsored by the Siebel Yarrawonga. The Open 8 Division 2 sponsored by the uh, Siebel Yarrawonga. We do thank them and all of our sponsors for their support of uh, this regatta. And 
and uh, particularly also 11 Australia who've sponsored a number of events. But the Open 8 Division 2 is sponsored by the Seabull Yarrawonga as they uh, race towards the finish now in both the uh, C and uh, D finals. The D final certainly well advanced down the course with three boats there across the uh, course. Shelford in lane one, Corfield Grammar School there in lane two. And uh, it is Wesley College also there in lane three as Caulfield path right beneath the camera. Natalie Byrne, Evie Visitano, Camille Carlisle, Zoe West, Rebecca Keon Cohen, Emily Davis, Sophie Osmond, Olivia Connolly, and Audrey Elias, the uh, crew there for uh, Caulfield Grammar. But they would trail the uh, race leaders, Wesley College, over in lane three. And uh, in fact, it would be Wesley and Shelford both ahead of Caulfield Grammar School. The Wesley crew on lane three, Lola Gorton, Choden Mason Marks, Holly Thomas, Bonnie Maguire, Ebony Harridge, Zali Whitley, Zara Pinnon, Emily Spurrett, and Alessi Keneally. And then from Shelford, we have uh, Alana Louie, Jackie Novak, Genevieve Mackay, Alice Jenkinson, Zoe Kirikillis, Erica Smythe, Grace Eastor, Lou Ruby Lockhead, Edie Halliday Morris, and Jules Whitehead in the boat there for Shelford. But it's certainly Wesley comfortably clear here on the uh, other side of the course. Really comfortably from Shelford, who in turn still have a length or so over uh, Caulfield Grammar. And a few good battles this year, those two crews from uh, both Caulfield and, Caulfield and Shelford. But it's going to be Wesley who will take out the, uh, who will get the result here in the D final of the Open 8 Division 2. Wesley College clear by about two and a half lengths. Will uh, come across and uh, take the win. And uh, they will rank in 13th place overall, the crew from Wesley College. So it's Wesley first, lane three. Caulfield finishing strongly here, but uh, Shelford will do enough to hold on in lane two. And they will finish in second place, almost a length clear in the end. So they maintain their margin over the crew from Caulfield. And then it uh, will be Caulfield in third place. So it's uh, Wesley College first, Shelford Girls Grammar second, and Caulfield Grammar in third. The C final well and truly underway uh, now as well. In fact, almost about two thirds of the way through the race as they uh, come down the 1500 metre course race 424. The uh, C final of the Open 8 Division 2 again sponsored by the uh, Seabull Yarrawonga. Melbourne Girls College racing in lane one. Kerry Grammar in lane two. Genizano lane three and uh, Damascus College lane four. B final also on the course here now and then we have the beginning of the uh, open single skull finals all coming down in pretty quick succession here but uh, you can see the crew there from Furbank who are racing in the B final of the open 8 to division 2 there are the B final boats now in fact Lauriston close to the camera in lane 1 MLCQ in lane 2 Geelong College in 3 and Furbank Grammar in 4 but our uh, C finalists approaching first of all, Melbourne Girls College there in lane one, Kerry Grammer in two, Genazano in three, and Damascus College in lane four. And it does look like uh, the crews on either side of the course in the top couple of spots. But uh, Melbourne Girls College in lane one, Ella McPhee, Ruby Scott, Alice King, Kiara Marigi, Ada Breach, Freya Radusky young Anna Byrne, Sophia Blake, and Amelia Judd. Into the uh, southern side, tight between Genazano and Damascus. The Damascus crew, Catherine Code, Ruby Byrne, Olivia Radisic, Lillian Leonard, Samantha Crilly, Charlie Gartland, Laura Bilsma, Meg Mason, and Paris Govan, coached by Brad Butel and Claudia Griffith. And uh, Genazano there as well, Michaela Tossolini, Jacqueline Power, Florence Christens, Mia Kennedy, Poppy Lawrence, Remy Villa De Carlo, Adele Nucara, Tegan Pote, and Willow O'Callaghan. But uh, it will be Melbourne Girls College Lane 1 to win the C final here of the Open 8 Division 2. About two-thirds of length clear 
of uh, the crew on the far side. Damascus just edging out Genizano in the race for second and third and fourth place will go to Kerry Grammer in uh, lane two. So it's Melbourne Girls College to win the C final and finish in uh, ninth spot overall in the Open 8 Division 2 sponsored by the Siebel Yarrawonga and the B final now is uh, coming as well. Includes that crew from Furbank there on the far side. Finalist at Australian Henley a few weekends ago. Tenth place at the state championships uh, two weeks ago at Ballarat. So the results have been uh, many and varied over the course of the season. MLCQ lane two. Suspect would have had designs on an A final at this regatta. They were bronze medalists at the uh, state championships behind Melbourne Girls Grammar School and Loretto Turak. And they'll, uh, those two crews, of course, will race in the A final coming up later on. But uh, MLC in this race look to be trying to make amends by at least winning the B final and ranking in fifth place overall and doing a pretty good job too, that crew. On lane two, Lily Zima, Josie Martin, Olivia White, Emily Reinberger, Amaya Crochet, Pearl Zima, Victoria Wilson, Georgie Dumbrell, and Maya Fordyce there for MLC. Alongside them sits the uh, Geelong College. He was sixth at the, uh, the state championships. Charlotte Hayden, Eva Chalmers, Madeline Bosnowski, Lucy Raden, Emily Foote, Evie Kemp, Phoebe Knight, Molly Larson, Claire Chisholm, and Pan Westendorf. The coach there of Geelong Grammar. Then Furbank Lane 4, Steffi Jackson, Indy Dark, Josephine Fay, Sienna Thomas, Jacqueline Nolan, Chloe Gould, Matilda Chard, Lucy Featherston, and Isabella Watts in the uh, yellow colours of Furbank. You are going to row very close to their uh, supporters there on the uh, far side uh, very, very soon. But they sit in third place, uh, still ahead of the crew from Lauriston Girls. But it's MLCQ out in front here, about half a length clear of the crew from the Geelong College. And also Furbank in the closing strokes of the Open 8 Division 2 B final. And the win will go the way of the crew from MLC. They'll win it by three quarters of a length. MLC first, Geelong College second, and Furbank Grammar in third place as they come across the line in quick succession. And then about two lengths further back to Lauriston Girls, who will finish in fourth place in race 425, the B final of the Open 8 Division 2, sponsored by the Siebel Yarrawonga. Race 425 complete of uh, 475 on the, the program. So 50 races that do remain. And we have uh, what will just be a one boat race here coming uh, down the course. The Shelford Scover uh, Freya Art, the only entrant in the F final of the Open Single Skull Division 1. So she is making her way uh, down the course now. In fact, already about halfway through the 1500 metre journey is uh, Freya Arndt from uh, Shelford. It's like behind her, the E final already uh, well underway as well, which uh, should have a full field of four. And slightly unfortunately for the uh, Shelford uh, skull, the way the progression and the draw have worked out, she's had to row. Uh, effectively an F final alone here. But still getting the occasion of uh, rowing in a uh, finals race at the head of the schoolgirls regatta. And the final afternoon of racing here in this event. Uh, the Open Single Scale Division 1, which is sponsored by Eleven Australia. We are looking forward to the A final coming up later on of this particular event, which should be a great race. A final coming up at 3.43. Feature Adelaide, Rob Beatrix, Hearn, Alice Joyce and Clodagh McCarthy. A very, very classy field to take to the water in uh, about two and a half hours time. But of course, before then we do have a FE D, C and B finals. A lot of uh, very well credentialed scholars to uh, make their way through. As I mentioned earlier today, it is quite the achievement to even make an A or a B final in these large events at the head of the schoolgirls. And all these scholars we now see in the water have uh, been through at least four races in uh, all cases and sometimes 
with the repechage, a uh, fifth race with a big field of entries. I think there were 28 entries in total in the uh, open at single scale Division 1. So a uh, very large field of scalers here. And they're now sorted out into their finals. But it's the Shelford scaler Freya Arndt here who is coming under the, uh, the shadow soon of the uh, James Harrison Bridge. Briefly get some respite from the sun, which is a good reminder, of course, to all to uh, maintain your hydration levels throughout the afternoon here, specifically with water more than anything else. But uh, please keep uh, yourselves well hydrated, athletes especially, but also all spectators, coaches and supporters as well. And we're watching here Freya Arndt from uh, Shelford Girls Grammar come across uh, soon, about 100 metres to go. She just needs to safely navigate a couple of boys here as she sits on the... Uh, Dividing line between lanes at one and two. Plenty of support for the uh, Shelford Sculler. And she makes her way through the final uh, 60 metres uh, now of the course with the uh, light blue blades of the uh, Shelford Girls Grammar School. And uh, a bit of a wobble, but only a few strokes to go. And she's going to come across soon and take out the, the F final of the Open Division 1 female school single scale. Freya Arndt for Shelford Girls Grammar School. We'll uh, come across now and uh, complete the F final. And she will, by my maths, finish in uh, 21st place overall, I think it will be, for uh, Freya Arts in that F final race, 426. Race 427 is well advanced as well. In fact, almost 1,000 metres gone for the uh, four scholars in that race, or it should be four scholars at least. They, uh, yes, they are all there, right and comfortably out in front here. That's the lane three scholar, Rosie Beadle of Wright and Girls. Full field of four. It's uh, St. Francis de Sales lane one, Imogen Tomlinson. That's one of the many Coral Rowing Club uh, scholars here at this regatta. Carrie Grammar lane two, Rosemary Morris. Rosie Beadle of Wright in three. And Indiana Beatty from Footscray High School is racing in lane four. She is uh, across next to the transit lane and uh, a little way off the pace set by the other three scholars here, but it's certainly a clear lead to the uh, right and girls scholar Rosie Beadle here in this uh, E final. The Open Division One single scale sponsored by Eleven Australia. Rosie Beadle leads it here. Rosemary Morris in second place for Kerry Grammer. Imogen Tomlinson for St. Francis de Sales. And uh, Indiana Beatty still of Footscray High School. Continues to be the scholar here from Wright and Girls. Rosie Beadle, just a few strokes to go to complete the 1500 metre course here in race 427. The Open Division 1 female school single scale. And Rosie Beadle comes across and it takes the win in the E final. And she'll take out 17th spot overall. Carey will be next. Rosemary Morris from Carey Grammar will finish in a second place. And it will be the red boat there of the uh, the sculler from uh, Corowa. Going here for St. Francis de Sales School. And uh, she'll be across in third place. Ahead then of the sculler from Footscray High School. It'll be Indiana Beatty in the red colours to the white boat. On the far side of the course, she'll finish in fourth position. We've concluded the F and E finals now of the Open Single scale Division 1, the uh, D final quickly following down. And there has been, pretty sure, a scratching here. Well, not officially listed, but I don't believe that uh, Lily Rose Hall Krauss, uh, in fact, she is. 
Well, she is in the race, indeed, just a one lane across. So uh, just to add to the confusion, it's Lily Rose Hall Krause of Seymour College who leads it, but rowing in lane two. And all these scholars are one lane across from where I'd expect them to be. Uh, Kenesha Lee of Wesley is there. Octavia Thompson from Shelford and Madison Pascalotto of uh, Marion College. So the four scholars are all there. And it's Lily Rose Hall Krause rowing in the colours now of her new club, the Rutherglen Lake Rowing Club. But, of course, in this race, contesting it for uh, Seymour College. And I believe that uh, Lily Rose Hall Krause will be heading off to Penrith uh, probably as soon as tomorrow too to compete in the uh, national championships up there for the next week. But she's going to record a comfortable win here in this uh, D final of the Open Division 1 Female School Singles Cal. She had a tough draw to make it through the earlier round so far and found herself in the D final but is doing the best possible here to record a very, very comfortable win. So the Sculler in lane one as she uh, just gets through the final line of boys there. And it will be Lily Rose Hall Krause for Seymour College who takes out the D final of the Open Division 1 Female School Single Skull. A comfortable win there to the Sculler from uh, Seymour College. Head then is Shelford Octavia Thompson who will finish in uh, second place. She comes up towards line now. A couple of strokes to go, and it's uh, second place there for Octavia Thompson over Shelford in the, the D final. So she will finish in 14th place overall. Next time will be Kenesha Lee of Wesley. Just ahead, I think, of Madison Pascalotto from uh, Marion College on the southern side of the course. Scholar in purple from Wesley. Just over a length clear of the red colours there of the Coral Rowing Club in fourth place. So it's uh, Lily Rose Hall Krause takes out the D final. The Open Division 1 female school singles girl. C final not far behind either with uh, close to between the four scales in this race. Caitlin Root of Caulfield Grammar. Alexander Schumach from Corowa. That's Coral with a K. The school. Evangeline Broad of Xavier Lane 3. And Phoebe Packer of the Scott School from Albury in uh, lane four. Another of the uh, Cora with a C. Rowing club, Scullers at uh, this regatta, but a clear top two here. And it's probably just Evangeline Broad of Xavier High School leading it now from Caitlin Rood of uh, Caulfield Grammar in this uh, C final of the Open Division One female school single skull. So positions nine, 10, 11 and 12 in the overall ranking about to be determined here. And it looks like the Sculler in the uh, Coral Rowing Club colours, Evangeline Broad, coached by Wes Canny and Emily Tidd, as is Phoebe Packer from the Scott School, who will be in fourth place at this stage on lane four. The Caulfield Grammar Sculler, Caitlin Rude, very strong through the middle of the race, but uh, now sits a length or so off the pace, just ahead still of Alexandra Schumach from the Coral School in lane two. But the C final win will go the way of Evangeline Broad from Xavier High School. She wins it by a length and a half. Caitlin Rood second for Caulfield Grammar School. Similar margin back to third place, Alexander Schumach of the Corowat School and fourth place from the Scott School of Albury. It'll be Phoebe Packer over in lane four. Reminded of those uh, spectators gathering, especially under the bridge on the uh, southern side of the course, that it is important uh, to not block the uh, path or the road in that section of the uh, the course. It is a bit of a pinch point there, and I know there's a good reason to be hiding in the shade today, but if you are watching from under the Harrison Bridge, please ensure you do not step onto the bike path or the road, or you do risk being collected by a uh, bike at fairly high speed. So please, for your own safety, if you're going to watch in the shadows of the Harrison Bridge, do so off the road and off the bike path at all times.
Here come the four boats in the B final now of the Open Division 1 female school single scull. And a number of very well-credentialed scullers here who've uh, just missed out on an A final berth. But they're being led by another of the uh, Geelong scullers, Elizabeth Brahout from Christian College Geelong, coached by Anita Whitehouse and Wayne Nitschke, who's pretty well clear here from uh, possibly Mia Kachab of Albert Park College on that southern side. And on this side, Anastasia McFarlane from the uh, Scott School again. He's coached by Wes Canney and Emily Tidd. Furbank Grammar, Sophia Lyons, the fourth scholar in the race. Be a length or two further back in a fourth place. But a clear lead, certainly, to the scholar from Christian College, Geelong, in Elizabeth Brahout. They'll have strong designs on winning the A final two when Alice Joyce takes the water in the same colours in a couple of hours' time. But for now, it will be a win to Elizabeth Brahout of the Christian College Geelong. She'll be fifth overall in the Open Division 1 single scale, sponsored by 11 Australia. Second is going to go to Albert Park College, Mia Kachab, coached by Virginia Lee on the southern side of the course. Third then from uh, the Scott School, Anastasia McFarlane in the uh, Corowa colours. And fourth in the yellow of Furbank, it'll be Sophia Lyons to conclude race 430, the B final of the Open Division 1 female school single scale. We move now from the single skull to the double skull, the Open Division 1 double skull, again sponsored by 11 Australia, as are all of the Open uh, Division 1 events. Those who were quick earlier today would have picked up a few products courtesy of 11 Australia. I think they uh, gave away what they came with very, very quickly. There was a pretty fast demand for the, uh, the samples from 11 Australia. I believe have now all uh, been given away. But uh, watching here, Loretto Ballarat leading it from uh, Ava Maria College in uh, lane three. Olivia James and Charlotte Hulsell for Loretto. Ava Elwood and Carla Snojevic are coached by Barry Gardner and Glen Trell in lane three. So they would be uh, Essendon and Rowing Club athletes there. But uh, of course racing here for their school. They are wearing the, uh, the red and black colours of the Essendon and Rowing Club. But it's the bright yellow and blue of Loretto Ballarat who are pretty comfortably clear out in front here in this uh, C final of the Open Division 1 female school uh, double skull. And racing for the uh, ninth and 10th ranking overall in this event, the uh, double skull. We will see, of course, the B final following and the A final coming up towards the end of the day. The fourth last race, in fact, will be the uh, double skull final. And get great odds about Albert Park taking out the double there. But for now, it'll be Loretto Ballarat coming through to take the win in the C final. It's Olivia James and Charlotte Halsell who uh, win race 431 for Loretto College Ballarat. And second is going to go to Ava Maria College, Ava Elwood and uh, Carlos Stanojevic. They've still got about 100 metres to go to complete the course here. But they'll finish in 10th place overall. In this uh, double scale. Now the B final rapidly chasing uh, down the course here as well. Only about 250 metres between the finish of the C final. And the next, the first boat in the B final. But here do come uh, Ava Elwood and Carla Snojevic to uh, complete their run in the C final of the Open Division 1 double scale. They'll finish in second place and 10th uh, overall in the event. But heading towards the Harrison Bridge now, we have our leaders in the B final, Hannah Coughlin and Isabel Higgins from Shelford Girls Grammar School in lane two, and Gemma Beer and Millie D also from Shelford Racing in lane three. And those two look set to make it to Quinella here for uh, Shelford Girls Grammar School. They are well clear of Gibson Grammar. It's uh, Zoe Hernline and Anastasia Bahaja racing in lane one in the yellow boat. And uh, Christian College along over on the other side, Sophia Knight and Billy Ballard coached by Adrian Keats and Peter White, but it does look like it's going to be 
a uh, Shelford uh, Cronella here. They've had a pretty successful last half an hour or so. The uh, rowers and crews from the Shelford Girls Grammar School, and they're going to do the double here in the Open Division 1 female school double scales. Shelford will be first and second. It'll be Hannah Coughlin and Isabel Higgins to take the win in the B final. And with that, they'll get fifth place overall. About two lengths clear of Gemma Bear and Millie D. Lane three will finish in second place. Third looks like it'll go the way of that uh, yellow boat there of the Gibson Grammar combination. Is uh, Zoe Hernline and Anastasia Bahaja, who uh, as they near the end of their school rowing career. We finally learnt the correct pronunciation uh, of their names a couple of days ago, but uh, well done to uh, Hernline and Bahaja from uh, Gibson Grammar School. They come across in the yellow boat in a couple of strokes time to finish in third place and what will be seventh overall in the Open Division 1 double skull. And uh, fourth place will go to Sophia Knight and uh, Bill, uh, Billy Ballard of Christian College Geelong as uh, they cross the line now to in the Open Division 1 double skull B final, which has concluded. And uh, the quads are quickly making their way down the course now in the C final of the Division 1 event. Here come the C finalists in the Open Division 1 at Cox Quad Scale. Ballarat Grammar School well clear here from Lowther Hall in this race for again ninth and 10th place in Open Division 1 quads. Zoe Wright, Eloise Adam, Addison Maxted, Georgia Walsh and Amy Gilby in the boat there. They're coached by Andy Tyndall and they're about six lengths clear of Lowther Hall in second place. So it's Ballarat Grammar School as they head across the line to uh, take out the C final. Sponsored by 11 Australia, Ballarat Grammar School. And they're in first place in lane two. And second will go to Lowther Hall, Zoe Peck, Dia Seagull, Leanton O'Brien, Ruby Ibis and Grace White. They're coached by Tessa Brady-Welsh. And they've got just a couple of strokes to go in lane three to come across and conclude the 1500 metre course. The Open Division 1 Cox Quad Skull C final. It goes the way of Ballarat Grammar School. A couple of B finals still to go. Our A finals, in fact, one C final too. Our A finals are not far away. Shane Horn warming up behind me to uh, come in when the A finals kick off in a couple of races time. But uh, this is the B final now of the Open Division 1, Cox Quad, Turak College Lane 1, Corowa Lane 2, Fintaner in 3, and Strathcona Lane 4. We're looking forward to a fantastic A final at uh, the uh, penultimate race of the regatta with the crews that uh, beat these four crews to make their way to the AFL in a very, very hot field here in the Open Division 1 quad. But it's Corowa and Fintana here, the lead two crews in the B final. Fintana lane three, Michaela Spindler, Saskia Pezen, Priyanka De Silva, Mia McGavigan and Shari Paris. Beside them, Corowa, Nellie Whithouse, Mia Tan, Elizabeth Robson, Abby Sharrick and Julia Rogers. 
And then we have uh, Strathcona and Turak College either side of the course, but to the delight of those up here, Fintana are winding up and holding a narrow lead ahead of Korowa, who are trying to respond in that uh, red canvas boat, but the Fintana crew looks a little bit too good here with a couple of strokes to go. They're clear by just over a canvas. Fintana from Korowa, and Fintana will get the B-final. Fintana by about two-thirds of the canvas in the end. Very tight between them, but they did just what they had to do to hold on to the lead there. Strathcona finished third. Turak College will be fourth, but it's the uh, Fintana crew who win the B final of the Open Division 1 the Cox Quad Skull by a narrow margin. They'll finish in fifth place overall. They beat the Corowa crew. And uh, that was a great race in the, the B final and the A final should be fantastic too when that comes down the course as the second last race of the day at 3.52 this afternoon. Here comes the C final now of the Open 8 Division 1. So the CNB finals of the Open 8s and then we move back to the 1,000 metre start for the first of our A finals coming up in just a few minutes' time. And here we have Lauriston Girls Lane 1, Genizano Lane 2 and Kerry Grammar School in Lane 3. Good race between these three crews as well in the uh, C final. So while well, Lauriston on the northern lane and between them two. In fact, that uh, looks like it might be the B final coming down the course now as well. It is on screen there with Geelong Grammar and St. Catharines in the uh, centre lane. So both these races on the course at the same time. Our last two 1,500 metre races for a little while until we get back to the Open A finals coming up beginning at uh, four minutes past three this afternoon. But uh, what a C final before that one is we've got in prospect here. Lauriston probably just ahead of Carey and Genizano, but there would be uh, probably half a length or so between all three crews here. So Lauriston lane one, Eleanor Ryan, Isabella Wilson, Samantha Tallis, Charlie Ward, Mimboski, Olivia Schubert, Eloise Thompson, Charlotte Bond, Morgan Herbert, their coach is Jack Steele, the crew from Lauriston. Alongside them, Genizano, Madeline Stewart, Senna Lajudice, Siobhan Peterson, Charlotte Hurston, Sophia Moran, Georgie Kerr, Sophie Carter, Zoe Caldwell, and Sienna Wheeler, coached by Thomas Fisher and Peter Campbell, and then Carey in three, Pippa Martin, Ariel De Hyten, Jessica Newnham, Maya Seabury, Zoe Beasley, Lily Moore, Charlie Barker, Gabby Price, and Pippa Kluge, and still it is the crew from Morriston just holding on ahead of Genizano and a late surge coming also from Kerry Gramescu on the southern bank but there's about a third of a length from first to third here. Lauriston, Genizano and Kerry going stroke for stroke towards the finish but Lauriston will hold on and get the win in the C final. What a race between those three crews. Lauriston, Genizano and Kerry all across a less than a third of a length between each of the crews there as they came across but it's Lauriston Grills, Lane 1 who take out race 435 and they will place ninth overall in the Open 8 Division 1. Lauriston get the win there just ahead of Genizano and Carey Grammar School. Back down the course. One more eighth race coming before our A finals do commence shortly from the 1,000 metre start. This is the B final of the Open 8 Division 1. Wesley College in lane one. Geelong Grammar in two. St. Catharines in three. And Geelong College in four. Expect uh, at least a couple of these crews would have Certainly preferred to have been in the A final, looking out to make some amends here. St. Catharines, of course, won this event just uh, two years ago as part of that incredible 2022 where they won not just the head of the schoolgirls, but also the uh, Henley Royal Regatta later in the year. But they're in a battle here with uh, Geelong Grammar School in the uh, centre lanes of the course. Those two crews in the uh, similar-ish light blue colours at least, but uh, Geelong Grammar Lane 2, Annabelle McDonnell, Ida Phillip, Miranda Warswick, Amy Barrow, Arabella Rigney, Aisha Yates, Rose Jones, Lulu Poglazy and Olivia Mann and St. Catherine's alongside them. Millie Tullock, Emily Snellbliss, Catherine Ross, Sienna Rigg, Raya Werner, Scarlett Shelton, Sophia Purton, Emma Peel and Scarlett Pringle, coached by John Saunders. But the crew on this northern side, Wesley College, is giving those two a great race. Jasmine Barrett-Judd, Olivia Nicholson, Jasmine Woolhouse, Sabilla White, Lucy Douglas-Hines, Caitlin Woods, Therese Matheson, Ella Davey, Holly Carter and coach David Webster. And they will emerge narrowly in front there from the shadows of the Harrison Bridge, the crew from Wesley College on the northern bank, holding ahead of both Geelong Grammar and also St. Catharines, and about two lengths back to Geelong College on the far side of the course, but once again, 
A great race in three as they head towards the finish line. Still, it is the Wesley crew. The riding right up in that crew as they try and hold their lead. On St. Catharines and Geelong Grammar School, very tight between those two. St. Catharines are making up some ground late. Wesley College holding on. St. Catharines second, Geelong Grammar third. But Wesley will win it. Wesley get up by a quarter of a length, just edging out St. Catharines and also the crew from Geelong Grammar School. Another great finish in the Open 8 Division 1. They were sensational C and B finals. And uh, Geelong College come across now to conclude that race in fourth place. And that's just the entree. We've got the A final, of course, coming up in the Open 8 Division 1 at 3.55 this afternoon. And uh, I'm going to go and hide in a cool corner for a few minutes and let Jane Horn come in and start to call the beginning of our A finals with our Year 9 Division 9 Cox Quad Scale soon to get underway from the 1,000 metre start. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the A finals. So the section of the program which brings about all the A finals now where the nerves are really hitting and we have a wonderful afternoon of racing this afternoon. Schoolgirls Regatta, 40th anniversary, perfect conditions. Geelong had a win, what could be wrong with the world? You're here on the bank, make sure you've got your hats on. Enjoy hydration, stay out of the sun if you can and enjoy and support your daughters, granddaughters and friends as they put in their very best efforts for these A final. We've had a start already in the Year 9, Division 9, A final. There are four crews in this event. MLC, Loretto, Turak have two crews and MLC are also in lane four. So two MLC crews and two Loretto crews. So a little bit of bragging rights going on here with these crews. Conditions continue to be perfect. Our officials are all in place for the afternoon session. And we are very much looking forward to the exciting conclusion to these races. All events are full, haven't heard of any scratching, so that's great news. And we will prog progress through from year nine, division nine through to one, uh, double skulls, single skulls, then the year tens, and then through to the open events to conclude at 3.55 with the Open School 8. Uh, we will move to the 1500 metres at 3, just after 3, 
for the Open Division 5 Quad Skulls. So lots to look forward to. Strap yourselves in. We're in for a great afternoon of rowing. And the event on the water now is the MLC, sorry, is the Year 9 Division 9 final with MLCQ in lane one and in lane four. So two crews in this event with Loretto also with two crews in this event. And the two Loretto crews are out in front of the two MLC crews with Loretto Turak uh, crew, Millie Lenahan, Sophie Cunningham, Annabelle Cornish and Elsie Ma with Zoe Pratsis the Cox in lane two. A length ahead of their fellow crew members, Pippa Jacobson, Violet Grummet, Lily Partridge, Miller Mace Arafovic and Anna Cacholi is the Cox. So MLC in lane four and three, it is then lane one crew. Shashera Zardi, Strang, Isabel Hadley, Louis Salotsis, Luella Toscano, and Anya Lakavath in the MLC lane one crew. And in the lane four crew, it's Caitlin Yee, Clementine Lawrence, Chloe Wang, Isabel Curtin, and Amy Johnston, the Cox. So this is the first of our A finals today with Loretto, a length in front of the other Loretto crew. They're not even numbered one and two, so we'll just call them Loretto and Loretto and MLC and MLC. Loretto have always had a very strong year nine program at their campus, and this is testament to that, as have MLC. So these two large schools enjoying Year 9, Division 9 success here with Loretto coming through to finish in first place. They're a length and a half clear of their fellow teammates. So taking out the first A final for this afternoon is the combination from Loretto Girls School in Turak. So Loretto enjoying a win there. Big claps from the Coxon. High fives all around with Loretto finishing in second place and the MLC Lane 1 crew in. No, it's a battle here for these two MLC crews. Ooh. MLC Lane 1 defeated MLC Lane 4. Second A final is a Year 9 Division 8 A final. Melbourne Girls College number 9 crew, Ruby Page, Ariella Pike-Meyer, Lulu Higginbotham, Sarah Italiano and Christiana Chan, the Cox. And then we have three Loretto crews making up lanes 2, 3 and 4. So Loretto, Piper Pasco, Ali Hall, Ali Hall, Willow Alexander, Adele Tran and Maddie McAuliffe in lane 3. And I might call it exactly those. Lane three is Sarija Chinkwe, Kuyu Sen, Venus Arnold, Izzy Hanna, and Lucy McNeil, McNee. And Loretto in lane four, Freya Thomas Leach, Lucinda Island, Holly Hawkins, Emma Brunt, and Indigo Finney. And as they come through to the 500 metre, it is the Loretto lane three crew that is a length ahead of lanes two and four with the Melbourne Girls College combination a further length back in lane one. And Loretto once again showing their strength in year nine rowing, which is a feature of their rowing program. So the Loretto uh, lane three crew, currently a length clear of their Other Loretto crew in lane two who are a length clear of uh, July, uh, sorry, Melbourne Girls College in lane one with the another Loretto crew in lane four. 
a further length back. So this is the A final of the Quad Skulls Year 9 Division 8. And two Loretto crews finish, uh, will be finishing first and second here again with Geelong, uh, Melbourne Girls College in lane one and a third Loretto crew over in lane four. So this Loretto combination coming down now to finish very strongly over their teammates. So Loretto will take out this A final Division 8 Year 9 quad skull. Congratulations to Loretto College taking the win in the A final. Loretto will be in second place and they will also finish in third with Melbourne Girls College in fourth place. We now move to the Year 9 Division 7. Melbourne Girls Grammar School in Lane 1, Loretto in 2, Melbourne Girls College in Lane 3, and Loretto in 4. Please remember to hydrate, keep eating, So it is the Loretto combination of Ava Coulton, Melanie Ellis, Lila Bates, Emma He, Meryn Nugent, the Cox, a length in front of Melbourne Girls College, Sophia Doe, Nicola Barbagallo, Letty Lima Youngins and Lily McMahon with Ali Robb as the Cox. And then um, lane four, the Loretto crew are in third, currently in third place, Isabel Hedmans, Ava Lazzarotto, Amy Bond, Emily Barnett and Cordelia Palutz is the Cox. And then in a further half a length back behind them is Melbourne Girls Grammar School, Ali Young, Lila Holland, Sienna Patel, Poppy Wallace and Stephanie Gelder, the Cox. But Loretto once again showing their good depth and strong rowing with leading here in this Division A, A final Division 7 of the Year 9 Quad Skulls. So this is the Loretto crew coming to the finish now with only metres to row, clearly out in front with Melbourne Girls College finish in second place. So Loretto take out the Year 9 Division 7 A final. Melbourne Girls College will finish in second place. Loretto also in third and Melbourne Girls Grammar School crossing the line to finish in fourth place now.
So the next final is the Year 9 Division 6, again featuring Melbourne Girls College in Lane 1, Melbourne Girls Grammar School in Lane 2, Loretto Turak in Lane 3 and MLC in Lane 4. And Melbourne Girls College crew of Willow Price, Alola Rabier, Molly Plank, Zoa Tranter and Poppy Joyner. Melbourne Girls Grammar School, Isla Smith, Chloe Trier, Kyocha Kavandakup, Lucy Glassenberry and Kasaya Sandu. Loretto Turak, Anna Val Morbida, Clementine Dancy, Darcy, Eve Blood, Zara Alexander and Bella Grant, the Cox. With MLC in lane four, Jemima Dixon, Anushka Kemp-Smith, Brooke Knight and Amy Fail with Joyce Lee, the Cox. And the Loretto crew again in front by half a length from Melbourne Girls Grammar School. Melbourne Girls College in lane one, Willow Price, Lola Rebier, Molly Plank, Zoa Tranter and Poppy Joyner trying to keep in touch with the Melbourne Girls Grammar combination who are also trying to peg back Loretto who again featuring in the lead as they come through under the bridges with MLC in the far side currently in fourth place but it is Loretto again as they come through under the James Harrison Bridge A length clear of Melbourne Girls Grammar. Melbourne Girls College having a bit of a roll here as they come through in lane one, lifting their rating. Loretto seem to have slowed down a bit and the other crews have picked their rating up. But Loretto will be able to cover these crews by looking back at them. MLC also having a late charge, but Loretto look like they're gonna take this out with Melbourne Girls College in the sparkling green ribbons, really giving Melbourne Girls Grammar a run for their money here, but Loretto will go through to win the Year 9 Division 6 A Final. Loretto Turak in first place, going to be close here for second with MLC, followed by Melbourne Girls Grammar and Melbourne Girls College getting a crab right on the line but finishing in fourth place. Lola, don't get out of the boat. So, results of the Quad Skull Year 9 Division 6 A Final. First place, Loretto. Second, MLC. Third, Melbourne Girls Grammar School. And fourth, Melbourne Girls College. So a reminder that the merchandise tent will shut in 10 minutes. So if you've got anything you need to do re-merchandise, please go and do it. Otherwise, all uncollected orders will be taken away to the Regatta Shop Factory in Moorabbin and you'll need to collect them there or they will be posted at a cost of $15. So please make sure you collect your merchandise. The next final we have is the Year 9 Division 5 Quad Skull A Final. Melbourne Girls College in lane one, Wesley College in lane two, Loretto in lane three, and Melbourne Girls Grammar School in lane four. And once again, it is the Loretto combination that are out in front. Clara Ross, Mietta Foley, Olivia Maidment, Abigail Tasker, and Sophie Morgan, the Cox but they are being challenged by the Wesley combination, Lexi Brown, Audrey Schofield, Harper Clancy, Sibylla Schroeder, and Sophie Katsieris, the Cox. So Loretto not having it all their own way in this Division Six, sorry, Division Five final with the Wesley College combination charging down the course here as they hit the last 100 metres and come under the bridge. 
Loretto currently a canvas in front of the Wesley College combination with M Melbourne Girls College and Melbourne Girls Grammar a further length further back. But we've got a tight finish here, ladies and gentlemen, as they head down to the finish line. Wesley lifting their rating and ensuring that their blade work is still good. Loretto also lifting their blade work, making sure that they're pulling well through the water. Both crews neck and neck here as we come down to the final metres. Loretto slightly in front as we approach the finish line. They've got their bow ball in front here as they come towards the finish line. And Loretto College will take that out from Wesley, second place. Melbourne Girls College will finish in third. And Melbourne Girls Grammar will finish in fourth. So Loretto taking out their fifth win in this year nine division, uh, year nine age group of the Quads goal. So, so far they've had five victories and they've got representation in every division. So I'm sure they'll be expecting some more. The next final will be the year nine division four, Melbourne Girls College in lane one, Loretto lane two, MLC three, and Melbourne Girls Grammar in four. And again, the two crews out in front, Loretto and MLC, battling it out as they come through this 500 metre mark. Loretto College currently half a length in front of MLC. Loretto, Miller Tanous, Lucy Scott, Genevieve Gray, Arabella Burns and Ava Coleman the Cox. Half a length ahead of MLC, Liv Worth, Ginger Fronet, Georgia Mary, Tilda Rofe and Audrey Trelaw the Cox. A further length back in lane four is Melbourne Girls Grammar School, Fleur Wilson, Cordelia Tompkin, Poppy Stockdale, Layla Bruce and Viviana Cook the Cox. And the Melbourne Girls College combination of Kira Jenkins, Jessica Norman, Alice Wills, Lucy Lay and Sophia Aravalo Diaz the Cox a further length behind. But again, it is Loretto a length in front of the MLC combination. And as they come through to the last 100 metres here, MLC are pushing uh, Loretto here as we come down to the last few strokes, but Loretto have got a half a length lead over this crew as they approach the finish line. MLC not giving up easily, but the might of Loretto taking out the sixth final for the day already. So year nine, division four, going to Loretto. In second place, MLC, third place, Melbourne Girls Grammar School and in fourth place Melbourne Girls College. Year 9 Division 3 A final, again similar crews, Melbourne Girls College in lane 1, Loretto in lane 2, Carey Grammar in lane 3 and Furbank in lane 4. Loretto in front here again, Michaela Ellis, Audrey Boyle, Andy Sharon, Allegra Cabriol, Caprioglio, Stephanie Herestandonidis is the Cox. And they're holding off a Carey crew to in lane three, Emma Lawton, Lucy Whitechurch, Rose Corker, Chloe Carnell and Elise Cheng, the Cox. A further length behind them is Furbank on station four, Brooke DeTiro, Isabel Reith, Lucy Shannon, Georgiana Bly with Lauren Box, the Cox 
and a further length back to the Melbourne Girls College combination of Indigo Ernst, Juliet Blake, Evie Purden, Summer Smith and Maisha Takoro Lay. But it is Loretto once again, ladies and gentlemen, showing their strength in this Year 9 division. They are a length and a half clear of Carey. With a swan doing a precarious dash across the river. So Loretto taking out this Division 3, Year 9 quad skull. Carey in second. Furbank will finish in third place with Melbourne Girls College in fourth. So, Loretto take out all seven races so far. There's a lot of pressure on now. Loretto, have got, we've got Division 2 and 1 to go of these Year 9 quad skulls, and then we move into the double skulls and the single skulls, and then we will commence the Year, nine, uh, sorry, the year 10 events. So, lots of strength at Loretto in the Year 9 program. Year 9 rowing coordinator obviously working extremely hard together with their coaches, their parents. Takes a lot of people to put one year nine girl on the river. So the next event is the year nine, division two, A final. Loretto Ballarat, Carey Grammar in lane two. Loretto Ballarat are in lane one. Carey Grammar in lane two. Loretto Turak in three. And MLC in four. So this is Division 2. We're getting up to the higher divisions now. And again, it is Loretto and Carey battling it out in the middle part of the course with Loretto Ballarat in Station 1 and MLC in Station 4. But the middle 500 metres here for this Loretto crew has been quite amazing as they've powered through towards the James Harrison Bridge, rowing very nicely with good clearance on the boat next to Carey who are not letting it have them all their own way but the Loretto crew are half a length in front as we come through to the final 200 metres. So Loretto Turak, Grace Eagleson Forster, Amy Jordan, Olivia Burt, sorry wrong crew, Annie Sutherland, Mieta Barrington, Grace Walter, Claudia O'Brien and Olive Buffington is the cox of the Loretto Turak crew who are now pulling away from Carey. Carey Grammer, Maya Onslow, Ruby Kay, Lauren McLean, Alana O'Connor and Blair McMillan the cox. Behind them and level on the other side with MLC, Lucy Fusanato, Matilda Dollinson, Maddie Kerr, Claire Capon and Lily Comrie. But it is Loretto coming through now to... taking out this Division 2 Year 9. Very close here for second as the crews are bobbing along. It will be MLC, then Carey, and followed by a Loretto Ballarat in fourth place. I'll wait for confirmation from the judges on second place there. Loretto Ballarat crew of Matilda Grant, Bridget Mulcahy, Ella French, Sophie Hoof and Grace O'Connor. So uh, the results of that race, official results, Year 9, Division 2, Quad Skull A Final. First place, Loretto Turak. Second, MLC Q. Third, Carey Grammar. And fourth, Loretto Ballarat.
So looking like they might have a clean sweep here of the year nine divisions. Division one, a final. Loretto Ballarat in lane one. Loretto Turak in lane two. MLC lane three. And Melbourne Girls Grammar School are in lane four. The Loretto combination of Gra uh, Grace Eagleson Forster, Amy Jordan, Olivia Burchard, Alexia Krikides, Eloise Murray is the Cox. Currently a length in front of MLCQ, Rosie Marriott, Grace Wilson, Josh Kerr, Mika Lynham and Ang Hannah Walsh the Cox. With Melbourne Girls Grammar School, Claudia Cogler, Harriet Hutchins, Cleo McLaughlin, Emily Rasmussen and Brittany McCormack. But Loretto are going to do a clean sweep here of all the year nine divisions. They are taking out this A final in Division 1, rowing beautifully here as they cross the line in first place. Second place will be MLCQ. Third place will be Melbourne Girls Grammar School. And in fourth place will be Loretto Ballarat. So Loretto College taking out nine for nine in the year nines. Um, which is a pretty amazing statistic. So well done to the Loretto Rowing Club. Fantastic effort in the year nines, taking out all the divisions with all nine crews winning their A finals. So now we move into the year nine division one coxed quad a uh, double skull sorry double skulls here year nine division one lane one is Cadinia International College Bonnie Lawson and Mieta Higney coached by Jan Keats lane two is Corowa Natalie Newen Olivia Roberts Turak College are in lane three Alexandria Ewart and Rose Fenwick and then in lane four is Sacred Heart Riley Daly Gemma Crook coached by Annie Brown. And the Corowa Girls School combination, a length in front here. Over the Cadinia International crew with Turak College back in third place and Sacred Heart So Korowa leading out with Natalia and Olivia in this double skull. A length clear of Kadinia, Bonnie Lawson and Mieta Higney. So a change of school as we come through to this A final as Korowa take out the double skull. They've been a force the whole way through the three days here, these two girls. Clearly in front. Second place will be Cardinia International. Third place will be Turak College. With Sacred Heart finishing in fourth place now. We now move to the final final for the year nine. So the year nine single skulls. PLC Melbourne, Mieta Wilson in lane one. 
the Scott School, Sienna McFarlane in lane two, Corowa, Violet Whithouse in lane three, and Corowa, Abigail Phillips in lane four. So two Corowa scholars here, Violet Whithouse in lane three and uh, Abigail Phillips in lane two, but it's Violet who is two lengths clear of her friend and fellow scholar, Abigail Phillips. The Scott School is in lane two, Sienna McFarlane and Mietta Wilson in lane four. A large contingent of Corowa girls cheering on there Piers as they come down towards the So it's Violet Whithouse in lane three with Sienna McFarlane from the Scott School in lane two. So Violet Whithouse from Corowa will take out this Year 9 Division 1 Single Skull Championship for 2024. She looks very relieved. Sienna McFarlane from the Scott School will finish in second place. The PLC Sculler in Mietta Wilson and Abigail Phillips in further few lengths back. And then the Abigail Phillips from Coral will finish in fourth place. So great rowing by the year nine skulls and double skulls taken out by Corowa in both cases, double skulls and single skulls to Corowa Anglican Girls School. We now move into the year 10 quad skulls seven divisions of those. A reminder to seek shade, put a hat on, get the sunscreen happening, go and have a drink, have something to eat, rehydrate well, and know you can't get out of school tomorrow.
So we now move into the year 10 division seven final. Still in the quad skull department. So Strathcona in lane one, Loretto lane two, Melbourne Girls Grammar School in three and Strathcona in four. Year 10, Division 7, final. So three, four crews. Three of them very close here as they come through the 500 metre mark. Strath uh, Strathcona, Claire Day, Julia Stephanotis, Jasmine Litter, Abigail Adamson, Alicia O'Brien, Zoe Doyle in, Loret in the Loretto crew, Zoe Doyle, Charlie Grace Galanis, Charlotte Brucci and Rihanna Bokta with Stella Ho the Cox. And Loretto are currently Probably a canvas ahead of the Strathcona combination in lane one. Maddie Pascoe, Isabel Christian, Pearl Dryberg, Laura Sticker and Joey Risk, the Cox. So Loretto again in the year 10s, looking like they're going to dominate here, but not quite having it all their way according to the coral fuchsia pink colour of Strathcona in lane one. We've never established what colour it is, but at the moment Strathcona are giving... Uh, Loretto a bit of a run for their money here and putting a lot of pressure on this crew got to watch their steering there with Strathcona, Coxon getting over excited but Loretto are rowing very nicely here in this year 10 division 7 final and the Loretto crew will continue their dominance that they set up in year 9 and they will take out this first A final with Strathcona in second place Melbourne girls grammar in third And the other Strathy crew will finish in, sorry, Strathcona crew will finish in fourth.
So we have a start now in the Year 10 Division 6 final for those anxiously waiting for their daughters, granddaughters and friends to make their way down in this Year 10 event. Ballarat Grammar will be in Lane 1, Strathcona in Lane 2, Loretto Turak in Lane 3 and Melbourne Girls Grammar School in Lane 4. So as these crews approach the 500 metre mark, halfway through they are less than half a length apart across all four stations. And it, Strathcona in lane two in front of Loretto in lane three. With Melbourne Girls Grammar School over in lane four, keeping in touch with the Loretto combination. Melbourne Girls Grammar School, Sophie Jamison, Emily Crawford, Freya Pangborn, Emerson Tankard and Lily Roberts the Cox. Trying to keep in touch with Loretto who are in lane three. Chloe Hootpecker, Gabrielle Hooker, Georgia Phillips, Lulu Noonan and Annalise Ralph. The Strathcona combination currently a half a length in front of Loretto. Eloise Milmot, Sharon Zhao, Chloe Lee, Sienna Huddy and Amelia Allen the Cox with Ballarat Grammar a further length back in lane one, Elise Mason, Emmy Meitzes, Stella Kwan, Chloe Della and Annabelle Pincott, who I just met before. So Strathcona in front of Loretto here. We could have a change of leadership in these year nine and 10 quad skulls with Strathcona not letting Loretto come anywhere near them at this stage. So they're half a length in front of Loretto, but Loretto won't have any of that. They'll be lifting their rating as they come through the James Harrison Bridge. Both crews looking very balanced, but the Loretto crew have certainly lifted their rating and are having a challenge here for Strathcona. will have to keep themselves nice and neat and tidy. But the Strathcona crew are currently half a length in front. Loretto have got their work to do here. So Loretto crew certainly lifting and having a go here and trying to not leave anything in the tank, which they shouldn't be doing at this level. Very close finish here, ladies and gentlemen, as Strathcona continue their dominance of this particular event. But Loretto are not letting it slip away, but they have, unfortunately, Strathcona take out the... That's brought a large cheer with Melbourne Girls Grammar School in third place and Ballarat Grammar will finish in fourth as they come across the line now. But Strathcona break the dominance of Strathcona in the quad skulls. And they've looked like all week, uh, the, the last two days, that Strathcona crew have rode very strongly. Uh, Loretto in second place. Third was Melbourne Girls Grammar School and Ballarat Grammar in fourth. Now we move to year 10, division five, A final in the quad skulls. Again, represented by crews we have called several times in these events. Melbourne Girls College in lane one. Melbourne Girls Grammar School in lane two. Ballarat Grammar in lane three. And Loretto Turak in lane four. And Melbourne Girls Grammar are clearly in front as they come under the McIntyre Bridge here. If I'm looking at the screens correctly, they are length in front here of the Ballarat Grammar combination of Chloe Adams, Charlotte Revisa, Ella Devon, Clara Phillips, Eliza Draffin, the coach, and coxed by Zali Clark, with Melbourne Girls Grammar holding a three quarters of a length lead. Christina Basutal, Ruby Davies, Matilda Jones-Bailey, Aileen Diam Diamante and Poppy Knox and the Cox. Melbourne Girls College in third place, Talia Zangalis, Gemma Perry, Victoria Hogan, Stella Rawlinson with Phoebe Constantinou, the Cox and Loretto in lane four. 
Mieta Postrania, Alice Stretton, Isabel Lloyd, Bella Hines and Rosie uh, Rose Riggle is the Cox. But this combination here, Melbourne Girls Grammar School, we're going to have another change of lead here. They're looking very strong as they come through this final 200 metres mark and then they're hitting under the a James Harrison Bridge and they're currently a length clear of all three other crews. So this Melbourne Girls Grammar combination Year 10, Division 5, A final, a length in front. Loretto and uh, Ballarat Grammar still trying to stay in touch with each other. And Melbourne Girls College in lane one, also very close for second place. But the Melbourne Girls Grammar combination looking very strong here. And they are a length in front. And it's close for second, looking like Loretto, maybe Ballarat Grammar. Or Melbourne Girls College as well on this station one here. But the win is going to go to the Melbourne Girls Grammar School combination. That's their first win of the day, winning the A final. And they'll be absolutely delighted about that. Loretto in second place, Ballarat Grammar in third, and J Melbourne Girls College in fourth. So Melbourne Girls Grammar take out their first A final for the day in the year 10 Division 5 Quad Skulls with Loretto in second place, Ballarat Grammar School in third and Melbourne Girls College in fourth. We continue with the quad skulls for another three events and then we move to uh, an eight and then we have some coxed four events and then back to the quad sculling events. So this event currently passing the 500 metre mark is the year 10 division four quad skull, Strathcona in lane one, MLC in lane two, currently half a length ahead of Loretto in lane three with Melbourne Girls Grammar School in lane four. So it's MLC and Strathcona battling it out here with Loretto in third place as they come through the 500 metre mark. So MLC crew, half a length in front of Strathcona, Eleanor Love, Amy L. Cummins, Sophie Pretty, Madeline Turnham and Edie Donovan the Cox, Strathcona, Isabella Cheng, Annabelle Howell, Saloni Gunasakera, Ellie Fotheringham and Isla Fittle is the Cox. <coughs> Loretto in third place with Melbourne Girls, Girls Grammar in Station 4. So Loretto, Julia Dolan, Matilda Clooney's Ross, Rory Backer, Maggie Steinforth and Liliana Manton in the coxswain seat with Melbourne girls in lane four, Isabel Thomas, Isabel Gorman, uh, Eliza Meredith Smith and Coco Taylor with Yen Lay the Cox. But these four crews are very close here. Strathcona have not let MLC get away with it and Strathcona are currently coming down to lift their rating very high here with MLC. Loretto back in third with Melbourne girls grammar on the far side also in contention here. All four crews very close as we head down to the finish line. Melbourne Girls Grammar having a late run on the far side, looking like they're a canvas in front. But it's very close here as we go through. I'm not going to be able to call it. Melbourne Girls, MLC, Strathcona with Loretto in fourth. I am leaving it up to the judges. Gone straight to the judges, ladies and gentlemen, on that very exciting finish of the Year 10 Division 4. Because I'm not sitting in the correct line. So, 
We will wait for the judge's decision. It was literally a bow ball between the first three crews and then a canvas to fourth. Lots of people looking at photos up here. I know the girls are waiting with great excitement, so are we. All right, results of the quad scale year 10, division four. In first place, MLC. In second place, Strathcona. In third place, Melbourne Girls Grammar School. And in fourth place, Loretto. All right, that was a very exciting final, that one. We had um, great discussions occurring up here in the commentary box with judges and photo finishers. So a great thrill for MLC. Strathcona, I think the margin was like a bow ball, so it was a very close finish. And MLC take out their first win in the A finals. So we've shared it around with the Year 10s. Loretto, Year Division 7. Strathcona, Division 6. Melbourne Girls Grammar, Division 5 and MLC Division 4. We now move to the Year 10 Division 3 A final. Strathcona in lane one, MLC in lane two, Loretto in three, and Ballarat Grammar in lane four. So again, a very close final here, ladies and gentlemen, with the Year 10 Division 3 quad skulls. Strathcona in lane one, again, slightly in front of MLC. We could have a repeat here with Loretto over in lane three and Ballarat Grammar in lane four. But the Loretto combination of Ruby Colbatch, Isabella Knight, Eloise Morgan, Jemima Perry and Greta Hardwick are half a length in front of the Strathcona combination in lane one. Isabella Cheng, Annabelle Heil, Salona Gunaskera, Ella Fotheringham and Isla Fittle. So Loretto and Strathcona battling it out here with MLC in between them and Ballarat Grammar over on station four. So Strathcona here in lane one, but it looks like Loretto a canvas in front at this stage as they approach the final bit of rowing here. All oars hitting the water, beautiful timing here as Loretto take out this event, winning by three quarters of a length from Ballarat Grammar in second, Strathcona third, and MLC in fourth place.
So Loretto take out the quad scale year 10 division three for their 11th win of the day. Ballarat Grammar was second, third place Strathcona, fourth MLC. So the next event in this one before we move into the school eights for year 10 division two is the quad skull year 10 division two A final. Furbank Grammar in lane one, Loretto in lane two, Melbourne Girls Grammar School in lane three and MLC in lane four. And the Loretto Crew again out in front here in this final of the year 10 division two. Zania Obeid, Stephanie Speller, Addie Dean, Caitlin Anthony, and Ellie Polgleg is the Cox for Melbourne Girls Grammar with Loretto Turak, Zara Barre, Zara Brazovic, Lucas McComb Luca McComas, Minty Clements, and Ivy Gufrida is the Cox. So the Loretto combination length clear of Melbourne Girls Grammar School, who are Half a length in front of Furbank in Station 1, Abigail Bly, Sophie Penfold, Charlotte Elston, Tilly Shenfield and Jessica Collins the Cox. With MLC a further half a length back, Alice Van Onslen, Arabella Van Hitty, Emily T and Emma Ward and Isabel Cronin the Cox. But Loretto once again coming through here in this quad skull final, Year 10, Division 2. And they are leading now by nearly a length, over a length now from... Melbourne Girls Grammar School in second place. Watch your nine. So Melbourne Girls Grammar in second place. Congratulations to Loretto. Uh, Furbank Grammar in third. And MLC finishing in fourth place. Double. We've so results to get of the through. quad skull. Leave a little bit of space between lanes three and four. Quad Skull, Year 10, Division 2, A Final. First place, Loretto Turak. Second place, Melbourne Girls Grammar School. Third, Furbank Grammar. And fourth, MLC. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I am now going to hand over to Richard Dorstein for the final races of the afternoon. I have thoroughly enjoyed my experience at the head of the school girls. I wish all the girls all the very best as they conclude their rowing and we'll see many of you again at the APS head of the, Heads of the River next Saturday. Thank you very much. Here is Richard. Thank you, Jane. Some great racing there in the first half of the A finals. Very much a Loretto Turakathon so far. 11 or 12 wins, I think, by my count. And uh, don't forget, you can hear Jane Horn next week at the heads of the River Regatta at Ngambi Lakes in company with Andrew Murchie, where that live streaming will uh, be available. You'll have to watch that at the same time as the national championships come to you from Sydney. 
And, uh, yes, I'll be on my way there in about 90 minutes' time. So thank you very much, James. It's been great to work with you again uh, this week and uh, also uh, Lynn Charge as well. Here comes the A final of the Year 10 Division 2 Female School Cox State approaching its conclusion. Gary Grammer and Wesley College pretty close together on this northern side of the course. Geelong College and MLCQ thereabouts as well. But uh, at least we can guarantee Loretto won't win this race with not having any cruiser in, uh, in the field here. But uh, Carey and Wesley having a great race for the lead. Wesley Lane 2, Zara Schmidt, Alice Andrews, Ellie Skyring, Sienna Matthews, Ella Laverty, Angie Tadros, Francesca Rose, Remy Clark and Alice Carter look to have a narrow edge on uh, Carey in lane 1. Kira Brown, Ruby McCandlish, Indy Kenny, Chloe Coleman, Tilly Cotsman, Karen McMillan, Isabel Zurab, Alice Wilcox and Holly Bucknell. Then ahead of Dijon College in third, MLCQ in fourth. But it is the crew from Wesley College who lead here in this A final of the year 10. Division 2, Cox State. They've got about half a length now on uh, Carey Grammar. So two crews who will go on to the head of the river next week at Nagambi Lakes. But it's going to be, first of all, ahead of the schoolgirls win. Coming up to the uh, combination from Wesley College in lane 2. They're almost a length clear. And they go across and take it ahead of uh, Carey, who will get second place. Third will go to the Geelong College. And fourth down the far side of the course will be the crew from MLCQ. But uh, Wesley take out their first win of the uh, A finals so far today. The six different school to get their name on the top of the podium. Wesley College win the Year 10 Division 2 school coxed eight. The uh, race there over 1,000 metres for the Division 2 eights. Then we move on now to the uh, top category of uh, Year 10 events. The Division 1 race is coming up now. The Cox 4 is first, followed by the quad. And the Division 1 eight. Double skull and single skull. So five year 10 events remain. Five events from the 1,000 metre start. And then the remainder of our races will be the open events over 1,500 metres. A great set of A finals here to uh, conclude the day's racing. But they're on the course in the final. And uh, race 455, a degree of tension goes out of this because we know that Ballarat High are going to get their hands not just on the trophy here, but in fact all three spots on the podium. There are four entrants in the Year 10 Division 1 Cox 4. All four are uh, from Ballarat High. I believe that three of the crews are uh, a Year 10 crews and one, in fact, is a Year 9 crew in this uh, Division 1 4. So, uh, Ballarat High School, who had uh, certainly had an improving result over the past couple of seasons. Uh, set to take out ahead of the schoolgirls at title here. They won this event last year too, I believe, the Year 10 at Cox 4. So it has become their specialty. Of course, the Cox 4 so long, the uh, boat associated with the Ballarat schools that regattas around Victoria and indeed around the country as well. And halfway through this race now, the four crews from Ballarat High. The crew that is listed as their number one crew, Ballarat High number one, is racing in lane three. Meg McBride, Millie Aikton, Peyton Smith, Maya Jenkins and Gemma Reid, coached by Warren Payne and Astrid Jolly. The Ballarat High number one crew is the Year 10 Division 1 crew. Numbers 2 and 3 are the Year 10 Division 2 and 3 crews. And Ballarat High number 4 is, in fact, their junior or Year 9 Cox 4. That's the crew in lane 1. So real interest here with their two, effectively, Division 1 crews racing together here, Ballarat High. But uh, leading it certainly is that Year 10 number 1 crew on lane 3. And it does look like the Year 9s are close to second here over in lane 1. That's Summer Kotek, Madison Cannell, Isabel Loder, Charlotte Turnbull and Jessica Dorr, coached by Daryl Biggin. They sit ahead of Ballarat High number two, so the Year 10 Division 2 crew in lane two. Mackenzie Hocking, Adrian Harris, Chelsea Loverson, Isabel Catch, and Annie Johnson, coached by Paul Carnes. And the fourth crew in the race, also from Ballarat High School, of course, is uh, in lane four, Macy Kellich, Rachel Beer, Elizabeth Coates, Imogen Emerson, and Poppy May Emerson, coached by Chloe Kinane. So Ballarat High School, it's going to be take all the places here. Still a bit of interest in second and third, I'd suggest. 
but their number one crew, their Year 10 Division 1 crew, is well clear here in the Cox 4 event, the Year 10 Division 1 Female School Cox 4. They've got about three lengths on a very interesting race coming up, I'd suggest, for second and third. But out in front, it's the Ballarat High number one crew on lane three in race 455 of this regard to the head of the school girls for 2024. And the Year 10 Cox 4 goes the way of Ballarat High number one on lane three. They win it by about three lengths. It'll be tight for second. The young crew in lane one still just ahead of the Year 10 crew in lane two. And they will get up for second place. The junior crew from Ballarat High in lane one will take the silver medals here. Well, in the end, about half a length, they extended late on the crew in lane two, and it's Ballarat High number four who'll finish in second place. Ballarat High number two will take third, and Ballarat High number three will finish in fourth place. But it is uh, Ballarat High on lane three, the winners there. Meg McBride, Millie Aitken, Peyton Smith, Maya Jenkins, and Gemma Reed, coached by Warren Payne and Astrid Jolly. And Ballarat High School also get themselves on the list of winners at this regatta, which is ever growing now. We've got uh, several schools. We've got a uh, single win between them and uh, here come now the crews in the year 10 division one quad scale loretto ballarats racing in lane one loretto turak in lane two melbourne girls grammar school in three and furbank grammar in lane four the four crews which uh, already passed the mcintyre bridge so about 400 meters to go and it does uh, look to be once again in the middle lanes there a slight edge to the crew possibly from loretto turak and right alongside their melbourne girls grammar school they would be the two who uh Lead the field here, Furbank the far side, not too far back either. And then Loretto Ballarat, so the yellow colours on opposite sides here. And really only probably a length and a half between all four crews here. But Loretto lane two is uh, Grace Kennedy, Olivia Fay, Lucy Woods, Isla Quick and Josie Grave. Melbourne Girls Grammar School uh, racing hard with them. Imogen Perrett, Gabrielle Sofra, Grace Perrett, Jemima Ross and Camilla Rowe. And uh, then very tight for third two between those yellow coloured crews either. Uh, Loretto Ballarat or Furbank ground, probably Furbank at this stage, but uh, first to come out of the shadows of the bridge is ever so narrowly the blue boat there of Loretto Turak, but it's very tight between those two given the angle. That bridge crosses the river, so it could be a photo finish coming up once again. Have a look at Furbank coming home well down the outside of the course there. The uh, crew from Furbank, Sophie Nichols, Olivia McLean, Georgia Rao, Piper Hallam and Amy Summers there on the far side of the course going past the Furbank spectators, but it's Loretto just from Melbourne Girls Grammar School. Furbank finishing strongly in third place, but Loretto Turek are going to get the win once again here. Loretto Lane 2 will take out the Year 10 Division 1 quad scale by two-thirds of a length from Melbourne Girls Grammar School second, and Furbank, I think, have held on for the bronze medal. Fourth will go just to Loretto Ballarat in lane one, so some tight finishing there, as you'd expect in the Year 10 Division 1 event, but it was Loretto Turak once again who'll claim the top spot on the podium ahead of Melbourne Girls Grammar School, and it looked like Furbank for third place narrowly. Uh, just over a second in the end between second and third place, but it is Melbourne Girls Grammar School second, Furbank Grammar third, Loretto Ballarat fourth, and Loretto Turak, the winners in the Year 10 Division 1 Cox Quad scale. They went nine from nine in Year 9. Not quite as impressive, but still commanding in Year 10 with four wins from the various events in the Year 10 races for Loretto Turak. Those blue boats just have been so dominant today, and they've still got a few chances as well in the races to come. But for now... It's the Year 10 Division 1 Female School 8. Lauriston Girls racing in lane 1. Geelong College in 2. Wesley College in 3. And Caulfield Grammar School in lane 4. The uh, four crews well on their way. In fact, uh, past the halfway mark with about 400 metres uh, now to race. Lauriston Crews certainly doing well in lane 1. They have a bit of a lead on Geelong College next to them. Beside them it sits also the crew from Wesley. And then Caulfield out to the far side of the course. I think in their third A final of the day, the uh, Caulfield uh, Grammar School combination. But uh, Lauriston in one, Charlotte Senior, Tilda Bird, Charlie Main, Lily Hayden, Zoe Thomas, Grace Bourne, Arabella Butler, Katie Van Roy and Jackie Zaslavsky and Liam Lovett, the coach of that crew from uh, Lauriston. Alongside them, Geelong College, Genevieve Dennis, Claudia Hutching, Sophie Sprunt, Miller Agar, Tessa McCann, Tali Cummins, Audrey Savides, Millie Payton, Lexi Kemp and James McGlade. And right alongside them as well, Wesley College, Sienna Stewart, 
Poppy Van Hove, Zara Millard, Scarlett Ross Handler, Neve Horsley, Sarah Blumenthal, Scarlett Evans, Zara Hirsch, and Zoe De Costa Alves. So once again, three crews stretched across the course. Corporal the far side, back in fourth place. It looked to be Lauriston, but now the challenge has come. Wesley moving very quickly. Geelong College alongside them as well. They've got 60 metres to go in the year 10, Division 1 8. Wesley the far side, Geelong College, and also still Lauriston trying to hang on on this northern side of the course. But Wesley College have come over the top and will go through and take the win here in the year 10, Division 1 8. Wesley first, photo for second. That is anyone's guess between Geelong College and Lauriston. Very, very tight there for the silver and bronze medals. Fourth will go the way of Caulfield Grammar on the far side of the course, but it is Wesley College who've taken out the Year 10 Division 1 8A final in a great finish just ahead of either Lauriston or Geelong College. We'll confirm the placings there shortly, but Wesley do take out their second win in uh, just a few races. Wesley, in fact, take out both the Year 10 8 races, so Division 2 and Division 1, a great sign for the growth of uh, rowing at that uh, APS school, Wesley College. A call for Molly Sweeney. Molly Sweeney, can you please make your way straight to the bottom of the finish tower? Molly Sweeney, can you come straight to the finish tower, please? And it'll be Geelong College getting second place in the year 10, Division 1 8. So Wesley College first, second goes to Geelong College, third to Loris, and very tight between those three. But that is the placings 3 2 and 1 in race 457. Wesley College winners there from Geelong College and Loris. And here comes the A final of the year 10, Division 1 double scale. Genazano in lane one, Finton at lane two, Sacred Heart well out in front here in lane three, Laura Ahern and Rio Smith, who are coached by Jeff Watt and Sacred Heart with two boats in the race, lane four. Chloe Myers and Zoe McArdle, they are coached by Michaela Spark, the uh, second of those Sacred Heart combinations who sit probably first and fourth at this stage. Uh, then it will be Fintaner in second place, Georgina Lennon and Lucy Thomas, uh, not that far ahead of Genazano in third on lane one, Imogen Kennis and also Annie Dwayne. And it's certainly Sacred Heart here looking to uh, put uh, their name two on the uh, list of winners so far today with a strong performance here in this year 10 Division One female school double skull. And Laura Ahern and Rio Smith are in the centre lanes there after a, a semi-final win earlier in the regatta. A comfortably clear of a good race developing for second and third. Fittner just wandering a bit across the course and Genazano might be a late chance there, although they also have a slight steering issue coming down lane one. But the head of the schoolgirls title for 2024 in the year 10 Division 1 double skull is going to go the way of Laura Ahern and Rio Smith for the uh, Sacred Heart College here in Geelong. They come across and take a comfortable win. The uh, double there coach by Jeff Watt. And uh, then into second, looks like it will be Fintana lane two, Georgina Lennon and Lucy Thomas, ahead still of Genazano in third place, Imogen Chemist and Annie Dwayne. And fourth then will go to the second of the Sacred Heart doubles, Chloe Myers and Zoe McArdle. Here come the single scholars now, the year 10 Division 1 female school single scholar. Field of four again, and it's a similar story to the double scholar race. They crew out in front here on lane three, or the scholar I should say, in lane three. And it is the Halebury scholar, Kate McNeil, who uh, is coached by her father, Andrew McNeil. So does a lot of rowing at the Mercantile Rowing Club, and she is uh, very well placed here in this single sculling race. The full field is Renee Brown of Footscray High in lane one. Ariel Vanderpoel from the uh, Crimson Global Academy, an online school in uh, lane two. Kate McNeil of Halebury 
in the yellow boat there in lane three. Emi Katugno from MLCQ in uh, lane four. Now, I haven't yet seen the draw for tomorrow's proceedings in Sydney, but I understand Kate McNeil is in the opening event of the day. So she's going to be racing again a Nationals heat uh, sometime not long after 8 a.m. tomorrow, but she's going to warm up here too with the head of the schoolgirls uh, title as well, it looks like, in the Year 10 Division 1 single scale. So a big week of racing certainly coming up for Kate McNeil and a number, of course, of the other rowers we'll see over the course of the rest of the afternoon as their campaigns continue to the national championships. But uh, this is a very impressive performance by the 15-year-old uh, scholar from uh, Halebury who will come through soon and take the win in the Year 10 uh, Division 1 single scale. She picked up, I think it was... Uh, five gold medals at the state championships at Lake Wendery a few weeks ago. Also raced the New South Wales championships. And now she has the head of the schoolgirls title as well to add to a very impressive resume at a young age. Kate McNeil of Halebury comes across and takes the win in the year 10 Division 1 female school single scale. A uh, large margin there over the rest of the field. Very tight, but for second, third and fourth. Renee Brown just edging out for now. Ariel van der Poel and also Emmy Katugno as our next three head across the line. About a length and a half between them all. But Renee Brown will get a silver medal for Footscray High School. Great work uh, from her and her coach, Jonathan Sargent. Ariel van der Poel, the uh, Karayo Bay Scholar Racing here for the Crimson Global Academy, will take bronze. And fourth will go to Emmy Katugno of MLCQ over on lane four on the far side of the Barwon River course, but it's uh, Kate McNeil, the uh, red-hot favourite there, takes out the Year 10 Division 1 female school single skull. And uh, with that, brings to a conclusion our 1,000 metre races, our Year 10 and Year 9 races at the head of the schoolgirls for 2024. Now, eights are heading up down the transit lane. We can see uh, Geelong Grammar School there at the moment, just crossing over. The finish on their way to the 1500 metre start. The next race is the Open Division 5 Cox Quad Scale, which, uh, in fact, is not timed to begin until uh, four minutes past three. So, still about seven minutes away from our next race. Which does allow us all briefly time to pause and uh, take breath after some frantic racing, but some fantastic racing over the Year 10 and Year 9 finals so far. And uh, no surprise that uh, Loretto Turak certainly topped the wins tally at this stage. They've taken 13 wins of the races so far today. Wesley College winning those two Year 10 eights. And uh, Corowa taking two wins in a row in the Year 9 double and uh, single skull, which is a, uh, a great performance from that school. They have had previously won six ever titles in the head of the schoolgirls history. And in the space of five minutes, a little while ago, they won two in very quick succession, the double scale and the single scale. So a good afternoon so far for Corowa. And uh, single wins coming up so far to Strathcona, Melbourne Girls Grammar School, MLCQ, Ballarat High, who, uh, of course, took out the trifecta. In fact, the first four in the uh, year 10 for Sacred Heart. And now Halibri winning the last couple of races as well. So uh, some great racing so far. But uh, don't go anywhere. We have the final hour of the regatta coming up soon. The final 16 races of the head of the schoolgirls for 2024. And uh, they are the big ones. The open events over 1,500 metres will commence shortly with the open Division 5 Cox Quad Skull and uh, move through the divisions from there, concluding, of course, with the open 8A final at 3.55. So just under an hour from now. There's a few people making a pretty, pretty quick departure from the regatta venue at the end of racing, uh, myself included. So we'll get through uh, some of the uh, housekeeping earlier on. Please ensure you return your bow numbers uh, to the place where you collected them from in the, uh, in the Jeff Sykes Rolling Centre, the bottom of the Jeff Sykes Centre where the bow numbers are all distributed. They are all required back, of course, before you leave the venue here today. Please ensure you clean up your area as well before departing so that uh, the Barman River course is left in its pristine estate as uh, we found it a couple of days ago. And don't forget that presentations will take place to all of our winning crews. Winning crews will receive their trophies and uh, medals at the conclusion of the last race. That will take place in the, uh, the usual presentation area. For those not familiar with it, it is behind the spectator tents on the northern bank. Uh, not too far away from where the regatta shop have been housed over the course of this regatta. Those presentations will uh, commence 
in a final order. So year nines first and year tens and opens. There are medals for second and third place, but I believe they are distributed to the schools directly. So it's just the winners who will receive their gold medals and uh, be able to get some photos with the, uh, the trophies. There are a number of very impressive trophies for the head of the school girls. They were on display in the presentation tent a little while ago. They may well still be there now in preparation for the presentation ceremonies. But please be aware, presentations will quickly follow the conclusion of the uh, last race here at uh, not long after four o'clock once those open eights come over the line. And of course, as we've mentioned several times today, please stay in the shade, stay hydrated, stay as cool as possible on a fairly uh, warm afternoon here. It's, uh, there'll be a lot of action close to the riverbank over the next hour or so. But uh, at the same time, the safety of all is our uh, paramount consideration. So please, as much as possible, protect yourselves from the sun. And uh, once again, in big capital letters on my list of notes here is the uh, words bow numbers. Please make sure if you haven't already, you do return your bow numbers promptly. And if you're racing in the last few events of the day, that you do so as soon as possible after the conclusion of your events. Got some crews up at the 1500 meter start, so it won't be too long until we are underway. Not quite yet in position. So two or three minutes and we should be underway. Our next race time for four minutes past three. The first of our open finals at the head of the school girls. And we'll have the action on the course for you very shortly. And a further reminder, request or verging on demand, it sounds like, for all parents to please ensure you are not in the boat park area. The girls, in many cases, are about to uh, go and race one of the most important races uh, of their rowing careers so far. And it's important they are left on their own. So can we ask all parents and supporters, those not required to be in the boat park, that you please leave the area immediately come back here to the race course and watch some fantastic racing over the next hour but if you don't need to be in the boat park please get out of there immediately i understand it's pretty chaotic at the moment and a lot of crews still have to go out and prepare and uh, then of course go and race as well so please if you're not meant to be in the boat park can you come back to the spectator area immediately and if you do that you can watch the race coming down here which is the uh, year the Open Division 5 Cox Quad Skull, which is now underway. So the first of our Open races, as we go back to the 1500 meter start, where we began, of course, this regatta way back on uh, Friday with the Open 8 heats. And now it is the Open Cox Quad Skull. This event uh, last year was won uh, by Strathcona. In fact, first and second went to Strathcona last year. And they've got two crews in the event uh, once again here today. On the outside lanes of the course, Strathcona lanes one and four, Loretto Turak in lane two, and Melbourne Girls College in lane three. Through the opening few hundred metres now of this race, race 460 of 475 on today's program. And in the centre lanes there we have the crews from uh, 
It's like uh, Loretto uh, Turak and Melbourne Girls College. In fact, that's Strathcona from uh, the front looking a bit different. The coral colour is not so obvious when looking uh, down the stern of the boat, but it can't quite yet pick up the uh, blue boat of uh, Loretto Turak in this race. But uh, it would be the crew's on that uh, northern side who are in the ascendancy here. So those crews uh, on the right of the screen, if you're watching us on the live stream, uh, Strathcona Lane 1 and Loretto Turak in Lane 2. Ahead then, certainly by uh, a bit of a margin over Melbourne Girls College Lane 3 and also uh, Strathcona in Lane 4. And there now is the blue boat of Loretto Turak. And uh, surprise, surprise, they are out in front again. Dominant in Year 9. Very, very, very good in Year 10. And now as the Open events begin, the Loretto Turak combination has probably close to a two-length lead now in the uh, middle stages of this 1,500-metre race. So a very strong beginning indeed for Peyton Wu, Alessia Morello, Sarah Tanner, Sophie Hannon, and uh, Millie McLean in that boat for uh, Loretto. And uh, probably best place of the two Strathcona crews. Looks to be the line one combination. Millie Beaton, Harriet Atchison, Alice Malloy, Leah Kitchen, and Sophie Baker. And then uh, back to the second Strathcona crew in lane four. Christina Zhang, Grace Beaton, Sarah Stone, Alexia Kennan, and Charlotte Pippett for Strathcona with Melbourne Girls College lane three. The crew there on the screen. They're in fourth spot. Ava Tyrrell, Jessica Lucky, Eleanor Duran, Deslon Gray, Lucinda Crabtree, and uh, Macy Durham in the boat there for uh, Melbourne Girls College. But uh, it does look like, once again, Loretto Turak, even only halfway through this race, looks set to add to their uh, very, very substantial tally of wins uh, this season. I know that Angus Farrah has uh, taken over the senior coordinator role at uh, Loretto this year after many years of success in the, uh, the junior program, which uh, clearly is left in very good hands. But uh, now working his magic too on the uh, open program at Loretto Turak. And uh, this Division 5 crew is kicking off the proceedings in very, very good style for uh, that school. Then it's Strathcona racing for second and third, it looks like. They said they were the gold and silver medalists last year. And they still may well claim two medals here today, but they'll have their work cut out to catch the runaway leaders from Loretto Turak in the centre of the course. So Loretto first, Strathcona second and third, and then Melbourne Girls College would be in fourth place. So they all head towards the uh, McIntyre Bridge with uh, about a third of this race distance remaining. There's the Strathcona crew and the uh, the Coral Colours in uh, in lane four. Bound number prominent there. And a reminder again to make sure you do return your bound numbers promptly after each race so there's no mad panic uh, at the end of the regatta. So that Strathcona crew looks to be in second place there on lane four on the, uh, the southern side of the course. Still in a, a good battle with Strathcona lane one. So the two Strathcona crews Really racing for the silver and bronze medals there. Quite a few lanes apart across the course, so it's a little bit difficult for them to know precisely where the other is. Their coxswain's hopefully doing a good job of keeping the crew updated to save them having to search themselves for that information. But uh, in any case, that certainly is the race for the silver and bronze medals because uh, Loretto Turak uh, just uh, looking very, very dominant out in front here in this uh, year uh, open Division 5 event. About 300 metres uh, now to go for uh, these crews. No sign yet of the crews in our next race, which is the uh, Open Division 5 Cox 4. It's in fact, again, a small gap in the program before that race, so it's still three or four minutes away. But by the time this race concludes, I expect uh, we'll start to see them getting ready for the next of our 1,500 metre races. But uh, it is Loretto Turak here who... Uh, Come back out into the uh, bright sunshine past the shadows of the James Harrison Bridge. But uh, no need to rely on the shadow to line the crews up here. They are comfortably clear by uh, probably some three to four lengths over Strathcona and Strathcona. Strathcona lane uh, one it now will be uh, into uh, second spot ahead of Strathcona lane four. So that race for silver and bronze remains a pretty interesting one with two crews on either side of the course and still not too much between them, in fact, as they do closing on the finish line but uh, lane one I'd still favour from here but Loretto Turak in lane two will take out the win here in the open division five Cox quad skull they'll win it by about three and a half lengths so Loretto continue on their winning way here today and in race 460 they take out the open division five Cox quad skull Strathcona second and third it'll go the way of lane one by uh, just over a length 
from the Lane 4 crew. So the two Strathcona crews across now. They'll claim silver and bronze medals. And then Melbourne Girls College will finish in fourth place. They've got about 50 metres still to travel. So Melbourne Girls College across 2 to complete the course. They'll finish in uh, fourth position. But another good win there to uh, Loretto Turak. They're uh, 14th of the regatta, if my rough maths is correct. Certainly one of the features of last year's head of the school girls was the fact that the A final wins were shared between many, many different schools. Remember, about 15 or 16 different schools uh, won a gold medal on this day uh, last year. Melbourne Girls Grammar School were the most dominant last year, picking up uh, 10 finals wins, but Loretto have already gone past that today with 14, and they've got a few good chances still coming up too in the races, especially the open eights, of course, still to come. So I think you'll find they'll add to that tally. But we're just about ready to go at the 1,500-metre start as well. Just again, another reminder to all uh, parents and supporters to ensure that you uh, don't go into the boat park area, or if you're there now, please uh, exit the boat park and uh, head back to the spectator areas on either side of the river here along the edge of the uh, the end of the course the boat park area is just for the athletes and their coaches great crowds but here gathering in the uh, spectator area there is the uh, the rage platform on the southern side of the course a wonderful viewing spot in bright sunshine here today and it's been great in the last few years that that southern bank has been opened up to spectators as well so we get uh, crowds and noise on both sides of the course. I can see some sets of schoolgirls lined up but along the course to, to cheer their crews on as they come into the last few hundred metres of the race. I saw, I think it was Melbourne Girls College yesterday, set up about 300 metres from the finish to uh, loudly cheer as each of these crews came through. And again, it's a great feature of this regatta that the crews have already raced. will now go out and support their open crews, many of whom, of course, are in what could well be the last regatta of their uh, school career. We know that some of the crews we'll see, particularly in the Division 1 races to come, will head off to the National Championships and uh, race again next week at Penrith. And, of course, the Year 11s hopefully will come back next year and race as Year 12s. But uh, for a number of the open athletes, this may well be their uh, final outing in a school zoot suit. So they want to make it a race to remember. And we are set to go at the start line now, the 1,500-metre start of the Open Division 5 School Coxed 4. This is a race... Uh, between four crews there, Genizano lane one, Loretto Ballarat lane two, MLCQ in lane three, and Turak College in lane four. Loretto Ballarat, the uh, race winners last year, ahead of Ballarat Clarendon on uh, that occasion. Ballarat Clarendon haven't qualified for the A final here, but Loretto Ballarat certainly have on lane two. So it may well be that the Loretto juggernaut continues, but in the form of the Ballarat version rather than uh, the crews from uh, Turak at this stage. So Loretto Ballarat there in the yellow colours away well on uh, lane two. Genizano on lane one, the left of screen. MLCQ in three and Turak College in lane four as we see uh, some eights heading up to the start of the eights races to come soon. The Division 4-8, in fact, only a couple of races away. But this is the A final of the Open Division 5, Cox 4. The Loretto Ballarat crew there in lane two is Riley Sheridan, Chelsea Templer, Olivia Jones, Daisy Malloy and uh, Sienna Hoyles. Away with them in lane one looks to be Genizano, Phoebe Houlihan, Hannah Courtney, Sophie Redman, Kayla Collier and Akira Little. And they'll see in three, Turak College in four. And they're getting ready also for the uh, Division 4 events. Our boat holders doing a uh, great job in some fairly challenging or at least warm conditions. It's not as uncomfortable as it can be at the start sometimes when it's uh, windy and rough or even wet, but it is uh, certainly pretty uh, hot up there at the start in the full sun of those uh, start pontoons. But necessary, of course, to ensure the fairest possible start with their held start pontoons in use here for the 1,500-metre uh, races only, of course. They can't be used for the 1,000-metre races as they would uh, block the course for the other boats coming through in the longer distance.
looking through the first 500 metres now of this race. This one crew dropping a little off the pace. Looks to be uh, Turak College over in lane four. The crew, Kayla Bow, Jenna Campbell, Pia Gibson, Nadia Welland and Emily English. And uh, there is Loretto Ballarat who uh, are certainly have taken the lead as they look to uh, defend their title here. Yeah, open at Division 5 at Cox 4. And they've extended now to what looks like a pretty handy lead, that crew from uh, Loretto College Ballarat ahead. Possibly of uh, MLCQ in second place. That's Zoe Bonnet, Stephanie Tosevsky, Carolyn Buckley, Sophie Lynn and Scarlett Herbert. They are coached by Brooke Doolan. And our next race also underway. The Quad Skulls racing in Division 4. The Red Blades there of Cora will suggest they're off to a pretty good start. Certainly edging out already ahead of PLC Melbourne in the early stages of race 462. As once again, we have two races on the course at the same time. But back to the... Uh, the Cox Fours, the race approaching the halfway mark now. And it is the yellow and blue there of uh, Loretto College uh, Ballarat in uh, lane two. And a very good head of the Lake Regatta on Lake Wendere. What must have been now, uh, I think, three or four Sundays ago. A school that only came to rowing relatively recently too, Loretto uh, College, despite having uh, prime real estate behind the finish line of the Lake Wendere course. They only moved into rowing in the, uh, the mid-2000s, so around about 20 years ago, and they built a very dominant program. They swept the... The junior events ahead of the lake and had a number of good wins in the uh, senior races too. And here they look to defend their title in the Open Division 5 at Cox 4. And they certainly have stretched out to a pretty comfortable lead now. That crew from uh, Loretto College there in lane 2. And they're both the uh, Freedom of 3rd. The B2 bow number attached to the boat. And uh, they are certainly well ahead of the crews either side of them. Genizano and MLCQ are racing for 2nd and 3rd at this stage. And then Turak College on the far side, we're back in uh, fourth, but our leading crews have uh, already, I think, come through the uh, McIntyre Bridge. Turak College still to uh, do that as they uh, race towards our camera there uh, on the uh, bridge, and they'll just about pass under that uh, mark now. But out the other side, that's the crew from MLC who uh, sit in with a good chance, certainly, of a silver medal here. Ahead, probably narrowly, of Genazano over on the, uh, the northern side of the course. Not the Loretto College. Ballarat crew does look uh, very comfortably clear here in the uh, last now 350 metres of this race. So Loretto Ballarat leading it by about three lengths. Still tight for second with MLC and Genazano, the two crews there, who, uh, well, you'd think share the medals between them, but the order yet to be uh, sorted out. And then Turak College over on the uh, far side of the course. The lane four combination sit back in fourth position. Loretto College... From Ballarat, will uh, certainly uh, lead through here now with 200 metres to go as they're just about to pass under the uh, the Harrison Bridge. About three lengths clear. Oh, still a good race for second. MLC and Genazano, very hard to split those two. It might be a narrow edge to the crew from MLC who are uh, a slightly higher ranked crew there by being in the centre lanes of the course. But they'll hit the shadows of the Harrison Bridge pretty close together. Oh, that would be advantage MLC at this point in second place. But uh, Loretto Ballarat out in front. Maybe about two and a half lengths now, their margin on the crew from MLC. So it may have come a little bit closer in the last few strokes of the race, but uh, they will still win and win comfortably. The combination from Loretto College, Ballarat. So it will be Loretto winning once again, but this time it is Loretto from Ballarat who will be on top of the podium in the Open Division 5. Cox for Loretto Ballarat come across and uh, take the win on lane two. It uh, will be about three lengths on the line from MLC in second place. He'll get there in a couple of strokes time and a neat leak them back to uh, Genizano on this northern side who will finish in third place on lane one and then fourth will go to the combination from Turak College racing over on lane four. So Loretto Ballarat's there, take the win. Riley Sheridan, Chelsea Templar, Olivia Jones, Daisy Malloy and Sienna Hoyles, the crew there as Loretto defend their title in the uh, year in the open Division 5 Coxed Four. Racing already, as you saw earlier on the screen, in the Open Division 4 quad skull. 
PLC Melbourne Lane 1, Corwell Lane 2, Strathcona Lane 3, and Melbourne Girls College in Lane 4. Strathcona winners last year of this event. They do have a boat there in the final, but uh, in Lane 3, they'll be back. And a few lengths away from our leaders, it's a Corwell who lead it on Lane 2, who got uh, out to a very good start. We saw in the early strokes of the race, and uh, they are our race leaders now heading up towards the McIntyre Bridge about two-thirds of the way through their journey here. That's Natalie Smith, Charlie McGlade-Smith, Daisy Marchant, Chloe Agars, and Emily Bucket, the uh, cox of the crew from uh, Corowa. And that's them with the Red Blades there who've come out the other side of the uh, McIntyre Bridge and a lead of uh, several boat links it would be over uh, either PLC or... Uh, Strathcona next to them in second and third. Can't yet pick up the crew on the inside lane. Uh, in fact, which will be PLC Melbourne. So they, I think, are a long way back on uh, lane one. So lane three, Strathcona. Lane four, Melbourne Girls College. The other two crews in this race. So Strathcona in the centre there. Olivia Giles, Lucy Gration, Sophie Norman, Zoe Fotheringham and uh, Cleo Tawney. And Melbourne Girls College over in lane four, Martina Fan, Minty Corrigan, Lily Bartram, Eliza Johns and Sarah Wills. Uh, clearly our top three, and uh, now PLC, we can see, making their way down the course. Right, they're in lane one, and a fair way back, the crew there of Mini, Tunke, Emma Choi, Olivia Zhao, Christy Zhao, and Grace Chen. And they've got the eight coming at them to the crew from PLC, so they'll want to keep moving there in fourth position. But at the top of the field, it certainly is the crew from Corowa who uh, we saw have two wins earlier today, and they may well be about to take a third here ahead then of Melbourne Girls College and also Strathcona. I noted before that Corowa only had six head of the schoolgirls wins in their entire history at this regatta uh, until today. They've won two already today and look set to take out a third. So suddenly a big addition to the Corowa Anglican Girls School Trophy Cabinet is coming up here as they're out in front on uh, lane two, the Open Division Four. Female school, Cox Quad Skull. The Jane Robertson program at Corowa doing great things here today. And they'll go through and win this by a length and a half. So Corowa do take out the Open Division 4, Cox Quad Skull. Corowa first. Melbourne Girls College will finish second. Third will go to Strathcona. About three lengths between our top three crews there. And then a bit of a gap back to the combination from the PLC Melbourne, who will finish in fourth place in a little while. And behind them, we can see the eights are on their way in the A final of the Open Division 4-8. This event sponsored by the Zahara family. We do thank them and all of our sponsors for their uh, commitment to this regatta. And as uh, PLC continue on the course, we'll just watch these eights for a little while with uh, Geelong Grammar School in lane one, Loretto Turak there in lane two, and Melbourne Girls Grammar School racing in lane three. Melbourne Girls won this race uh, last year. In fact, finished first and second last year with the Division 4, four and then Division 5 crew but uh, Loretto Turak certainly challenging substantially uh, this time around. And uh, they are well clear, in fact, of the defending champions in the inside lane of Melbourne Girls Grammar School. So Loretto, the leaders here, with about 450 metres uh, to race. Here comes also the crew from uh, PLC Melbourne in uh, race 462 to conclude that previous race, which was won by Corowa, their third win of the day, ahead of Melbourne Girls College and Strathcona. And now here comes PLC Melbourne to complete the fleet in race 462, the Open Division 4 Cox Quad Skull. And it's PLC Melbourne coming across in uh, fourth place now. So race 462 reached its conclusion. Back down the course, 463 is not far behind. And it's a strong lead here, certainly, to the combination from Loretto Turek, Hannah Beanett, Zara Perry, Mia Risk, Rosie Darcy, Mia Fitzgerald, Thea Ball, Chloe Watson, Eleanor Seskis, and Amber Coulter, the Cox of the crew from Loretto, who would be... Uh, Probably three lengths clear of uh, Melbourne Girls Grammar School Lane 3. Emma Davies, Tilly Unsworth, Celeste Millamarker, Sienna Davy, Finya Hansen, Hayley Dunwoody, Eva Rucco, Ellie Hasudis, and Audrey uh, Surache coxing that crew from uh, Melbourne Girls Grammar School. And uh, then about two lengths further back to Geelong Grammar School Lane 1. Millie Livingston, Maud Blumen, Ellie Bryan, Charlotte Bates, Emily Merkisic, Abby Rose Mackay, Ayla Nannis, Ruby Vidotto, and Ermini Hope for Geelong Grammar School, but uh, Loretto Turak, a clear once again. It's been a familiar story in the A-Finals so far today, and once again, 
It is the Blue Boat who leads them home in this race. A couple of strokes to go as they go past the last line of boys. And the Red Oak Turak will take out the Open 8 Division 4, sponsored by the Zafara family. Well done to Loretto Turak. A strong win there to that combination. And uh, great delight as they uh, don't quite touch the uh, blue-green algae-infested water here. But uh, it's Loretto Turak across for the win. Second goes to Melbourne Girls Grammar School. They'll finish with a silver medal for their efforts in the race. And third will go to Geelong Grammar School on uh, lane one. Still a few strokes to go for that crew from Geelong Grammar, but they will finish in third place. So Loretto Turak score another win, this time in the Open 8 Division 4. Second Melbourne Girls Grammar School, third Geelong Grammar. And we thank the Zahara family for their sponsorship of that race. The Open 8 Division 4, another win to Loretto Turak. Now to the next of our races, the Open Division 4, Coxed 4. They're on their way down the course. The uh, Division 3 Quad Skull also in the start blocks at the 1500 metre mark. And they're about to get underway as well, in fact. So two races coming down the course at the uh, same time now. The Division 4, Coxed 4 was won last year by Melbourne Girls Grammar School from uh, Genazano. Melbourne Girls Grammar didn't qualify for the final this year. Genazano there in lane one, along with Furbank Grammar in two. Loretto Ballarat lane three. And Ballarat Clarendon lane four. And that's the Quad Scales who are racing now in the Open Division three event as well. Albert Park College there in the light blue colours, closest to the uh, northern side of the course. Strathcona lane two, Lather Hall in three, and Wright and Girls in lane four in uh, that particular race. That's the upper park crew powering away from the start in the uh, Division 3 quad skull alongside uh, the other crews in the race there. Strathcona, the defending champions, Lather Hall and also Wright and Girls on the far side of the course. They're through the first few hundred metres. Uh, further back down the course, we have the boats approaching in race 464, which is the Open Division 4, Cox 4 final. Genazano in lane 1, Furbank Grammar in 2, Loretto Ballarat in 3, and Ballarat Clarendon lane 4. Uh, the uh, four crews here on the uh, course. And uh, the lane 3 combination from Loretto Ballarat, um, surprising again here, looks to be best placed in this uh, four odd event. Certainly ahead of Ballarat Clarendon on their... Uh, on their far side and uh, Furbank in lane two. The lane one crew would be in second place. That's Genazano, who also came second in this event last year. And uh, they're the biggest threat at this stage to Loretto Ballarat. But Loretto lane three, Abigail Cartledge, Eden Templer, Amelia Phillips, Poppy McIlwain, and Holly Boyd. And then Genazano in lane one, Dominic Matthews, Eliza McNamara, Emma Whelan, Rebecca Crow, and Sarah Ferrigno. They, uh, in the cock seat of that boat. And that's Loretto Ballarat about to head. In fact, that's Furbank, I should say, in a similar shade of yellow, about to head under the uh, bridge there. But they sit in third place, the Furbank crew of Tali Brendendorf, Sophia Negri, Zoe Connolly, Anais Diprantranio, and Aya Lu. And then Ballarat Clarendon, the Red Colours on the far side. to be in fourth spot, Hannah McRoberts, Juliet Grove, Penelope Lopez O'Donnell, Ashlyn Lewis, and Maggie Peel. They are coached by Shayla Lamb. But it's a racing two here in the Open Division Eight 4 turns, Cox right 4 event. Third bank crew there in third place and behind or ahead of them. As we look from behind them on the course, we see the crews from uh, Loretto Ballarat and also Genazano. And then another eight from Loretto Turak is moving from the uh, start line in the Division 3-8 as well. 
uh, crew there on their way in at that event too, along with Melbourne Girls Grammar School, Furbank Grammar and Melbourne Girls College. So three races on the course at the same time here. The eight's just underway. The quads in the centre section and the Cox Fours nearing the conclusion here and the race is being led once again by the Loreto Ballarat combination on uh, lane three here. They've got a margin of a length or so on Genizano who'd be second. Furbank still there third ahead of Ballarat Clarendon on the southern side of the course there in the red colours but it looks like it'll be Loreto Ballarat for the second open four race in a row. They are clear by over a length from the Genizano combination who are working very hard there in lane one to uh, Try and make up some ground, but the Loretto lead, I think, will be uh, too great with only a couple of strokes to go. And Loretto College from Ballarat will come across and take the win in the open Cox 4, Division 4. Loretto first. Second will go for the second year in a row to the crew from Genizano in race 464. Third place will be Furbank Grammar School, also there in the, uh, the yellow colours. And fourth place will be the crew from Ballarat Clarendon. Uh, still a few strokes to go on the far side of the course. But uh, our top two across, Loretto and Genizano. Furbank there in third place, fourth to go to Ballarat Clarendon College in the uh, Cox 4 race. But the quad scale is now approaching quickly as well. The open Division 3 quad. Strathcona won this race last year ahead of Wrighton. And both these crews are in the final uh, once again. And uh, Strathcona would, in fact, have the race lead, I think, on lane two. Charlotte Stoltz, Belle Gemmel, Olivia McInnes, Jessica Field, and Amanda Un. Ahead uh, probably of Wrighton in second place on the far side there. Cameron Sparrow, Amy Zheng, Millie Robinson, Ravinda Gunasekara, and Lucy Swingler, the uh, crew there for Wrighton girls. Third looks to be Lowther Hall, and fourth, Albert Park College. We've also got our Division 3 eights making their way rapidly down the course, and now we're the Division 3 Cox 4s have also been uh, sent on the way. So we're back at three-minute racing intervals here through until uh, the end of the day. And the races will certainly come in quick succession, especially over 1,500 metres, where uh, the races times tend to be between uh, sort of five and a half to at least six minutes for uh, most of these crews. And uh, that means we'll have lots of action on the course at the same time through until the conclusion of proceedings in about half an hour's time. But it continues to be Strathcona here who lead pretty comfortably in this open quad skull division three they would have a margin of some uh, probably three or four links now it would be over uh, on the far side right and do look to be there in second place and then uh, third it's pretty tight between uh, either albert park college or allow the hall allow the hall crew alara killer kaslin chloe sharp olivia stambulik emma griffiths and philippa small coached by hannah Saleh. And Albert Park is Reyes Negra, Alexandra Caparimo, Ruby Miller, Jessica Marshall, and Lillibel Rasco, the crew there from Albert Park. So second, third, and fourth is still pretty close, but Strathcona well clear out in front here. They'll defend their title in the Open Division 3 Cox Quad Scale with a couple of strokes still to go. A very good crew here coming across with a strong win, and Strathcona take out the Open Quad Scale Division 3. Strathcona lane two, the uh, winners there. And a second win of the day. The silver medal will go the way of Wright and Girls. On lane four, they finish in second place. Third will be Lowther Hall. And fourth place is Albert Park College. Call for Lucy Rigetti of Loretto Turek. Lucy Rigetti of Loretto Turek, can you please come to the finish tower? We have some lost property you might like back. Lucy Rigetti of Loretto Turek. Open 8, Division 3, and it's uh, Loretto Turak here in lane 1, but not in front. Melbourne Girls Grammar School to be the race leaders on lane 2. Furbank Grammar School, lane 3, and Melbourne Girls College, at lane 4. Melbourne Girls Grammar School winners last year ahead of Loretto, and uh, it may well play out the same here. They're leading it, certainly. At lane 2, crew, Holly Hawkins, Ava Mould, Cecilia Michael, Bell Duncan, Catherine Pratton, Fia Atkins, Tess Folks, Rose Anderson, and Phoebe Paul for Melbourne Girls Grammar School. Loretto and Furbank either side racing for silver and bronze, it looks like. Loretto's crew, Sophie Elstoff, Sienna Mapley, Zimian Duffy, Eve Sadler, Lucy Nickel, Izzy Stone, Ruby Hines, Sally Bond, 
and Charlotte Hall in a very tight battle with Fairbank for second and third, but Melbourne Girls Grammar School are clear here in the open eighth division three, just a couple of strokes to go as they power down to the finish line. It'll be Melbourne Girls Grammar School who'll take out the open eighth division three. They come across now for the win. Very tight for second. They surge Loretto. They may have got there. We'll wait on the photo. Loretto and Furbank very, very tight for second and third. Fourth will go to Melbourne Girls College and certainly Melbourne Girls Grammar School were the race winners, but we await confirmation of their placings for second and third in the Open 8 Division 3. That results shortly of that race. Just waiting on confirmation of the photo. But certainly Melbourne Girls Grammar School, the winners there. The Open 8 Division 3. That's their second win of the day and their second win of that event in two years. The Open 4's Division 3 coming down the course now. Ballarat Clarendon Lane 1, Loretto Ballarat Lane 2 and Ballarat Grammar School in Lane 3. Now the uh, three crews. So an all Ballarat event here in the Open 4 Division 3. And that result is confirmed now, so we can tell you that Loretto Turak will take the silver medal in the Open 8 Division 3, and Furbank will get the bronze. So first, Melbourne Girls Grammar School, second, Loretto Turak, third, Furbank Grammar. 0 0.13 of a second between second and third there, such small margins in these races, but uh, it's Melbourne Girls Grammar School. Loretto and Furbank, the top three in race 466. 467, but is approaching its conclusion and a good race between well, at least two of the Lake Wendery rivals here. Ballarat Clarendon, lane one. Isabel McRoberts, Bridget Wise, Georgia Miller, Marley Yuanjit, and Isabel Channon, coached by uh, Claire Boatman. And in second place, or very close, but in fact, beside them, Loretto College, Ballarat, Emma Gowans, Jessica Main, Meg Lynch, Charlotte Pecker, and Grace Bales. The combination there from Loretto. Loretto have won divisions five and four, but uh, getting a serious challenge here in division three from this uh, Ballarat Clarendon combination. They've had a few tight races over the course of the season, but it's Ballarat Clarendon who have got their boat in front here as they come through now with about 150 metres still to race. So Ballarat Clarendon in the red colours, Loretto Ballarat in the yellow, and then Ballarat Grammar School in third place over in lane three. Heidi Torrance, Emma Ferguson, Sophie Collins, Daisy Sheehan, and Camilla Dunstan there for uh, Ballarat Grammar School. He'll finish in third place, but still it's Ballarat Clarendon holding off Loretto in the uh, last few strokes now of this race. The Open Division 4, Cox 4, both crews lifting as they push towards the line. Ballarat Clarendon trying to hold on to the lead. Loretto responding, but not quite making up any ground at this stage. It's still Ballarat Clarendon in front with a couple of strokes to go, and they'll get across and take the win. The Open 4, Division 3, it goes to Ballarat Clarendon College by two-thirds of a length ahead of Loretto Ballarat in second place. And third will go the way of the crew from Ballarat Clarendon, uh, from Ballarat Grammar, I should say, will take third place. Ballarat Clarendon, of course, the uh, winners there. So lane one from lane two and lane three, the placings there. Ballarat Clarendon first, Loretto Ballarat second, and Ballarat Grammar School about to cross in third place. Plenty of racing still on the course. And just a quick reminder too, I mentioned before presentations will take place to all winning crews at the conclusion of the last race in the presentation area behind the spectator tents on the Northern Bank. That is for gold medalists only who will receive their gold medals and the uh, trophy for their events. Silver and bronze medals for each school can be collected from the finish tower straight after the conclusion of the last race as well. So if you finish second or third, there are medals available for collection. Please come to the finish tower after the conclusion of the last race and you can collect your medals from there but gold medals to be presented after the last race in the traditional presentation ceremony that will commence uh, as soon as possible after the last race with the year nine crews first followed by year 10 and then the opens we move up to division two now the open division two at cox quad scale albert park college lane one Wrighton girls lane two harlebury in three and strathcona in lane four right in the winners last year of this event and uh, they're looking pretty well placed here as well in lane two. 
to do it again, but Halliburton right alongside them as well in uh, lane three. So right in is Matilda Pilkington, Honey Garcia, Pepper White, Ruby Draper, and Olivia Michelini. And then in lane three from Halliburton, Vivian Robinson, Chelsea Jarrett, Imogen Aikman, Tessa Searle, and Bella McTeer. Narrowly trailing, I think, from that right and crew, but they're very close together as they uh, pass the shadow there now of the Harrison Bridge. It's a race in two, then Strathcona. The far side would be third. That's Maisie Permazel, Olivia Tawney, Holly Lewis, Ellie Turnham, and Emma Pitkinen in the cock of that Strathcona crew. Albert Park College in fourth. Emma Westerbeek, Isabella Flood, Farrah Hall, Beatrix Bradley, and Isabel Deathbridge. At uh, Wrighton and Halibri here going to the line. In the Open Division 2, Cox Quad Skull Halibri certainly have made up some ground late. It's still right and just in front with 25 to row. Right and leading Halibri as they push towards the line here, and Wrighton will hold on. Wrighton girls beat Halibri by a third of a length in the uh, finish of the Open Division 2. Cox Quad Skull right and first, Halibri second, Strathcona third. Fourth will go to Albert Park College on lane one. At Wrighton girls defend their title there in the Open. Division 2 at Cox Quad Scale, a hard fought race with Halibri all the way down the course, but it's right and who prevail in the end in race 468. And right and become the 11th school to win a race at uh, today's A finals. We get their name on the list of winners as well. And they've got a couple of good chances still. Well, certainly one good chance coming up at least in the Division 1 quad scale event they have dominated in recent years, the Wrighton Girls School. But uh, before that, it's the Open 8 Division 2. This race sponsored by the Siebel Yarrawonga. Loretto Turak were the winners uh, last year when they uh, won both the Division 1 and 2-8 uh, in uh, quick succession. Case of Division One that was the first win ever in the uh, 40 year or at that time 39 year history of this regatta. But uh, in this race, it's Long Grammar School Lane One, Loretto Turak in Lane Two, Melbourne Girls Grammar School in Three, and St Catharines in Lane Four. Certainly, you'd favour the two crews there in the centre line. They've had a pretty good season between them, Loretto and uh, Melbourne Girls Grammar School. Uh, also racing with MLCQ have been prominent this season, but not uh, qualifying for the A final this time around. So it's uh, we have been left with a race in two. Loretto Lane 2, Mara Kui, Sophie Hine, Stephanie Leon, Evelyn Boyle, Stephanie Chan, Sophie Lacey, Luciana Descala, Madeline Barre, and Sarah Chapman in the boat for Loretto. And they do have the advantage, it would seem, on the crew from Melbourne Girls Grammar School Lane 3. Lucy Munro, Sarah Meredith Smith, Sophie Davies, Emma Kafferke, Sophie Clifford, Tara Richardson, Bella Pitt, Zoe Paul, and Liddy Machini. The uh, Cox of that boat from Melbourne Girls Grammar School. And third and fourth on either side of the course. The uh, Geelong Grammar School look to be third. They won this event uh, two years ago. Sit now probably in bronze medal contention. Flora Gilly, Sasha Laidlaw, Bella Haig, Leonie Kosai Papdan, Manon Perenk, Emma Martin, Lily James, Alice Bowler, and Lily Power. The uh, crew for Geelong Grammar School. And then the yellow boat of St. Catharines over in lane four is Saskia Coleman, Melanie Young, Izzy Monaghan, Sophie Farrah, Zara Hoban, Emma Hibbins, Erin Lee, Chloe Barber, and Rachel Carton, the uh, cox of that crew. But it's Loretto still leading it just from Melbourne Girls Grammar School who have made up some ground over the last couple of hundred metres and are still giving chase to the blue boat there of Loretto who thought they may have had this race won, but they're still going to have to fight it out Right down to the finish line, 50 metres to go in the Division 2-8. Loretto just from Melbourne Girls Grammar School, who are desperately getting closer and closer with a couple of strokes to go. But it's Loretto from Melbourne Girls, and Loretto will get the win. Loretto Turek beat home Melbourne Girls Grammar School just in the Open 8 Division 2. Loretto Turek lane 2. Melbourne Girls Grammar School finished with the silver medal. Bronze will go to Geelong Grammar School. And fourth place will be St. Catharines in the yellow boat on the far side of the course. But a... Uh, very strong finish from Melbourne Girls Grammar School. And uh, they caught within uh, just over a canvas there by the end. But Loretto Turak held on and take the win to complete a very, very good season for that crew in the Open 8 Division 2. And they take their school's 16th win of this head of the school girls regatta for 2024. They win the Open 8 Division 2 for the second year in a row. And we do thank the Siebel Yarrawonga, the sponsors of that event as well. 
0.89 seconds is the margin between those two. 0.89 between uh, Loretto and Melbourne Girls Grammar School. So just under a second in the end separated those uh, two crews. But uh, Loretto Turak, the gold medalist there in race 469 of 475 at this uh, huge regatta, which now remarkably only has six races to go. Five of them are Division One events. And before that, we do have the Open for Division Two. Truly racing as well in the Open 4 Division 2. Ballarat Grammar School in lane 1. Ballarat Clarendon lane 2. Loretto Ballarat lane 3. And Ballarat High racing in lane 4. So once again in the Cox 4s, it's an all Ballarat affair with uh, four or four of the five Ballarat schools represented here. Been a good season of racing too between uh, the two crews in the centre lanes here. Ballarat Clarendon lane two, ba Loretto Ballarat in lane three. Loretto Ballarat are the uh, state champions, beating, uh, winning that regatta. But Ballarat Clarendon beat Loretto at the uh, Wenderee Ballarat regatta a couple of weeks ago. So both have had success certainly on Lake Wenderee, but now of course it's about, that'll be over 2,000 metres as well. Racing here over 1,500 metres on the Barwon River at uh, Loretto from here. Look to have their boat in front of the Ballarat Clarendon combination. Loretto Lane 3, Kate Connell, Annabelle Patuch, Isabella Rosato, Bronte Malloy and Madison Lane. And Ballarat Clarendon, the red colours in Lane 2. That is the crew of uh, Lucy Goodson, Taylor Mason, Maya Salmi, Charlotte Peel and Rose Burke. Coached by uh, Gabrielle Howard, the uh, combination from Ballarat Clarendon. And the two other Ballarats, or two of the other Ballarat schools with crews in this race. Ballarat Grammar School in lane one. Eve Cassidy, Jade Klein, Meg Shaw, Daisy Walsh and Ella Marshall. And Ballarat High in lane four. Ashley Carnes, Olivia Bell, Eliza Strawhorn, Eliza Ray and Tamisha Noakes. They are coached by Olivia Spagnolo and Ross Holding. Continues to be uh, Loretto Ballarat who uh, lead here. They've had a pretty strong performance in the open fours today, winning divisions five and four. Ballarat Clarendon took out division three. So uh, this is often the case. It's the Ballarat schools taking the medals here in the Cox four races. And our single scholars also are on the course in the first of our open division one events. And our double scholars as well. So they're again coming down the course in a quick succession here. The open... Division 1, the singles and doubles both underway, sponsored uh, both those events by Eleven Australia, the primary sponsor of this regatta, who did sponsor each of the Open Division 1 events. But uh, we'll look back down the course shortly at those single and double scales. But here comes the crew from Loretto Ballarat looking to record the third win for their school today in the Open 4 events. This is Division 2, and uh, they uh, lead it still by uh, about a length, it would be, from Ballarat Clarendon. Ballarat Grammar School in third and Loretto Ballarat in uh, fourth place. So it's still the same order it was at the state championships a couple of weekends ago on Lake Wendery. And not too much has changed in this category of racing. It's all the Ballarat schools and Loretto leading it from Ballarat Clarendon, Ballarat Grammar and Ballarat High as they've got 50 minutes to go. Our race leaders now from Loretto Ballarat in the uh, distinctive yellow and blue colours there racing on lane three. And it's going to be the third win of the day for the uh, crews from Loretto Ballarat in the Cox Fours as they come across a length and a half clear. Loretto Ballarat win the Open Four Division Two. Ballarat Clarendon will finish in a second place and pick up the uh, silver medals. Third place will go 
to Ballarat Grammar School Lane 1. And then fourth will be the combination from Ballarat High coming down the uh, far side of the course on lane four. So Loretto Ballarat take out the Division 2 form. Now we look back down to where our single skulls are on the way. This is one of the biggest fields of the regatta, the Open Division 1 single skull, and a, a great honour roll of the winners of this event, including, of course, notably Zara Kafuri last year for the uh, Cedar College. He's off this year at the National Championship throwing for Yarra Yarra and also in the Victorian Women's Youth 8. We see Ballarat High come across also and conclude here race uh, 470, the Open Division 2-4. But in this single sculling race, we have Adelaide Robb of Victory Lutheran in lane 1, Beatrix Hearn from Sacred Heart in lane 2, Alice Joyce of Christian College, Geelong in lane 3, and Clodagh McCarthy from Harlebury in uh, lane 4. He's Susan Andrews, coach sculler the Gamby Rowing Club. Susan, I believe, is driving up to uh, Penrith at the moment. We hope you're listening, Susan, and enjoying this particular race. And I can tell you that Clodagh McCarthy is uh, pretty well placed here on the far side of the Bowen River course. There's really uh, at least three chances across the course here. Adelaide Robb from Victory Luther in lane one, coached by Wes Canney and uh, Emily Tidd, who've got to be some of the busiest coaches at this regatta with that many scholars in different events across the course of the three days. Beside her is Beatrix Hearn of Sacred Heart, who's coached here on the Bowen by Jeff Watt. Another Geelong-based scholar, Alice Joyce in lane three, coached by Tony Laws. It just looks to be a couple of lengths off the pace, but uh, our top three to get the medals, you would think the order yet to be sorted out, but I think that Clodagh McCarthy from Harlebury on the far side might make it a Harlebury double here because Kate McNeil, her double skull and pair partner, has already taken out the year 10 single skull, and it may now well be Clodagh McCarthy who does the same uh, for Harlebury in the closing strokes of the Open Division 1 school single skull, sponsored by 11 Australia, Adelaide Rob, but is having a great finish also at down lane one, the Victory Lutheran Sculler in the Coral Rowing Club colours ahead of Beatrix Hearn from Sacred Heart. But it's going to be Harlebury doing the uh, single skull double here. Clodagh McCarthy out there in lane four, but she's got this race to herself with a couple of strokes to go. And Clodagh McCarthy will take out the Open Division One single skull. She wins it by two lengths for the Harlebury School. Well done to Clodagh McCarthy and her coach Susan Andrews. Second place, Adelaide Robb from Victory Lutheran, coached by Wes Canney. And Emily Tidd, third goes to Beatrix Hearn of Sacred Heart, who's coached by Jeff Watt, a very hard-fought final. And Alice Joyce of Christian College Geelong, coached by Tony Lawless. She'll finish in fourth place. Four great scholars. They're racing over the 1,500-metre course here on the uh, Barwon River, but it's going to be Halibri who'll get the win. Clodagh McCarthy wins the Open Division One single skull for the Halibri School. Back down the course, the double skull nears its conclusion. There's going to be no rest here for the next few minutes as we uh, conclude this regatta rapidly. Lane 1, St. Catherine's, Samantha Hine and Grace McLaughlin. Lane 2, Albert Park College, Saskia Payne and Lulu Gleason Payne. Lane 3, Albert Park, Ella Kipikoski and Alice Roberts. And Lane 4, Cadinia International College, Ella Treffrey and Violet McGregor. It's the two Albert Park combinations in the centre of the course, but certainly Saskia Payne and Lulu Gleason Payne are comfortably clear here. On lane two, I don't think they'll get the Quinella here because that uh, Cadinia on the far side looked to be there in second place. Now Ella Treffrey and Violet McGregor, coached by Anita Whitehouse and Wayne Nitschke. And then for third, it may well be Albert Parker, Kilpikoski and Roberts moving up to take a uh, chance at a bronze medal, certainly. Both those Albert Park doubles, of course, coached by Virginia Lee. And then St. Catherine's in lane one, Samantha Hine and Grace McLaughlin. That's the race for the bronze medal, but it's Albert Park out in front. This race has only been contested twice at the head of the school goals. Albert Park College have won it both times and they're going to make it three years in a row here with their lane two combination of Saskia Payne and Lulu Gleason Payne, coached by Virginia Lee. They win the Open Division One double scale sponsored by 11 Australia. Albert Park lane two, the race winners there. Second will go to Cadinia International College. Third place will be Albert Park too, so they will get two medals up from that event. Ella Kilpikoski and Alice Roberts in third place and fourth will go to Samantha Hine and Grace McLaughlin racing for St. Catharines in race 472. And it's Albert Park College who uh, get their first win of the regatta. They defend their title. It's the third year in a row they've won the double scale. An event first contested in 2022. And Albert Park College have won that each of the three years that event has been held. Now it's the Cox Four 
And there's only 500 metres to go. Speaking of domination, Ballarat, Clarendon certainly have had this event to themselves for several years now. They've won the last three head of the schoolgirls titles since the uh, the uh, no race regatta back in uh, 2020, of which uh, we dare not speak, of course. But it is Ballarat, Clarendon there in lane two who lead this race once again. They are the double defending national champions too, of course, in the uh, schoolgirls Cox 4. I'm sure they'll be on their way to Penrith to defend their title very shortly as well. But first, they've got to win this head of the schoolgirls event. They were the head of the lake winners as well. So it's been a very strong season for Phoebe Ma, Mackenzie Kopke, Veldhus, Annabelle Maloney, Taya Kersenovs, and Cooper Knoll, coached by Nikki Plakinski. And they lead this race here by over a length from uh, Caulfield Grammar School. It would be there in second place. Christina Anthony, Grace Maskeel, Sophie Deval, Ava Pigeon, and Layla Beckwith, the cocks of that crew. Just coached by Hannah Every Hall. So Caulfield, we know, have targeted the uh, four this year with their top four rowers. And they're well placed here, certainly, for a silver medal, but behind a very, very good crew from Ballarat Clarendon College. And our last race is underway. The eights are on their way, too. So the last three races coming down all at the same time here. It really is all happening on the Barwon River here. It's Ballarat Clarendon still leading this from uh, Caulfield. And also Loretto Ballarat finishing strongly down at lane one. Lavinia Cushing, Tilly Stringer, Mia McTeague, Rosie Hunt and Tia Kinnersley there for Loretto ahead of Ballarat High. On lane four, Audrey English, Natalia Jenkins, Emily Coots, Michaela James and Weng Marbella, coached by Olivia Spagnolo and Robert Simmons. But it's Ballarat Clarendon College who've won this event many times in recent years and they continue on their winning way at the head of the schoolgirls for 2024. They'll defend the national title in about a week's time at Penrith. But for now, they are the head of the schoolgirls champions once again. Ballarat Clarendon by a length and a half have beaten the crew from a Caulfield Grammar School. Third will go to Loretto Ballarat and fourth place will be Ballarat High. So Ballarat Clarendon gets their, uh, I think that's their second win of the regatta with a win there in the Division 1-4. They also won Division 3. So uh, they mark themselves as dual winners and that crew continues to be very, very dominant in the schoolgirls four. We go straight to the quad, which is already approaching the two thirds mark of the race. We've got Wrighton Girls in lane one, Cadinia lane two, Gibson Grammar in three, and Melbourne Girls College in lane four. Hotly contested event this. Wrighton have been dominant in recent years. They won it last year and also in 2021. Strathcona won the year in between that. Gibson Grammar School have not won this event since uh, 2010. It's been 14 long years, but they have every chance here. The crew from Eastern Victoria, they've targeted the quad scale this year. They've put their very good uh, single scholars together in this boat. Ruby Lindray, April Harrison, Scarlett Tavaski, and Ella Durand. Cox by Lucy Hodges, and it is the Gibson Grammar School Lane 3 who certainly have the race lead here. Ahead of a very good race for second and third. Right and Girls Lane 1, Cadinia Lane 2. That's the uh, Cadinia combination now training out of the Barwon Rowing Club just around the corner here in Geelong. But maybe right and narrowly there. Lucy Gillen, Sarah Happen, Grace Hereford, Asher Gowans, and Pippa Reed. The Cadinia crew, Audrey Seminev, Eliza Jenkins, Grace Holton, Eliza Dean, and Charlotte McKinnon, coached by Wayne Nitschke and Anita Whitehouse. And Melbourne Girls College, they're also in lane four. Not out of medal contention either by any means. Olivia Kavka, Imogen Otter, Sarah Lay, Gemma Watson, and Lila Artavilla. And the only unfortunate fact of this race is one of these four very good crews are going to miss out in the medal. Gibson Grammar School. Uh, getting very, very close to getting two hands on the goal, but a great race behind them for silver, bronze, and fourth. Wrighton are there along with Cadinia and also Melbourne Girls College on the far side, but it's Gibson Grammar School out in front who last won this race way back in 2010, but 14 years later, Gibson Grammar School will win the Open Cox Quads goal. Division one, they'll win it by two lengths. Gibson first, toss a coin for the minor placings. Oh, that's tight. Wrighton and Melbourne Girls College, I reckon, will get the medals. I'm not sure about the order, but I think Cadinia, unfortunately, have just missed out. But that is unofficial. It is certainly Gibson Grammar School, the winners. Wait on the call for second and third. We may have to wait till after the eights have come down too because they're already two-thirds of the way down the course as well. But a great win to Gibson Grammar School in race 474, the Open Division 1 Cox Quad Scale. Here come the Open 8th bait, Furbank Grammar Lane 1, Loretto Turek Lane 2, Melbourne Girls Grammar School in 3, and MLCQ in Lane 4.
Now the two crews here in the middle lanes, Loretto Turak and Melbourne Girls Grammar School have had a fantastic season. Sharing the wins at various regattas. Melbourne Girls Grammar School, the state champions. But uh, Loretto Turak, the defending champions here at this event. Melbourne Girls Grammar School, of course, the national champion as well. So plenty of talent in both of these crews. Melbourne Girls Grammar Lane 3, Matilda Heyman, Adelaide Banks, Megan Barrow, Lily Wallace, Lulu Burney, Samantha O'Keefe, Maddie Clifford, Emily Anthony, and Audrey Sirache coxing the crew from Melbourne Girls. Loretto Turak there in two, Zoe Criticides, Neve Thomas Leach, Olivia Carroll, Rowie Curry, Audrey James, Alexandra Fairchild, Charlotte Grant, Maisie Richards, Lucy March, and Connor McConville, and Furbank having a great race also. In lane one, Zoe Page, Emily Grace, Sienna Morgan, Maya Page, Cassandra Zissis, Frankie Diva, Ella Bailey, Poppy Dalton Morris, and Aurelia Fife. We thought Furbank had done well to make the final, but they are right in this. On the outside line of the course, Loretto just maybe from Melbourne Girls Grammar School. Furbank still pushing Loretto in the centre line, looking to go back to back. Melbourne Girls Grammar School are close. Furbank almost there, but Loretto Turek will get the win. Loretto win it by a third of a length, very tight for second, just Melbourne Girls Grammar School. Furbank third, and MLCQ in fourth place. It'll be Loretto. I don't need a photo there. It'll be Loretto Turak. Very tight for the Miners. And MLCQ will finish in fourth place. But Loretto Turak, for the second time in 40 years, they've won the Open 8 Division 1 narrowly, ever so narrowly, from the defending national champions in Melbourne Girls Grammar School. And I expect that battle will continue next week too on the waters of the Sydney International Regatta Centre. But it's Loretto Turak who take the honours today in the Open 8 Division 1. Confirm the official results very shortly for both that race and the quad scale that finished just before. Well, uh, two incredibly close finishes to conclude racing here. It's almost unfortunate some crews have to miss out on medals when it's uh, as good as that. But I can tell you now in race 474, the second last race, which was the open Cox Quad Scale Division 1. The win did go the way, certainly, of Gippsland Grammar School Lane 3. Second place has gone to Wright and Girls in Lane 1. And third place to Melbourne Girls College in Lane 4 just ahead of Cadinia International College. There was, would you believe, 0.21 of a second between second, third and fourth place. But uh, it'll be in the end gold to Gippsland Grammar, silver to Wright and Girls and bronze to Melbourne Girls College. 0.09 between Wright and MGC and 0.12 of a second between uh, Melbourne Girls College and Cadinia. A great finish in the quad skull. And then in the open eight, we've just seen concluded. The winner certainly was the crew from Loretto Turak for the second year in a row. Second place has gone to Melbourne Girls Grammar School, lane three. And third place, the bronze medal, will go to Furbank Grammar on lane one. A great race from them in the outside lane. Fourth place is the crew from MLCQ. And Loretto Turak, the winners there by 1.89 seconds. And the margin second to third, just 0 0.37 between Melbourne Girls Grammar School in second and Furbank Grammar in third. So two fantastic races to conclude the racing here. Yeah, it'd be pretty hard to top that finish uh, with Ballarat Clarendon continuing their winning way in the Cox Four. Gippsland Grammar back on top after 14 years in the quad skull in a very, very close finish. And then Loretto Turak back-to-back -back in the Open 8 Division 1.
We'll leave you all in peace and uh, I'm going to run away and help the highway to Sydney. We hope you've all enjoyed the head of the schoolgirls for 2024. If you are keen to uh, keep in touch with the national championships, that is being live streamed by the Rowing Australia website from 8 a.m. tomorrow, the opening race. Presentations will follow shortly too in the presentation area. We do ask all of those winning crews, especially the year nines, to head straight to the presentation area. So uh, they can begin shortly. Please return your bow numbers. Clean up your area. Thank you to our officials, to Rowing Victoria, for all the athletes and coaches and spectators for being here this weekend, and to Jane Horn and Lynn Charge for their assistance in commentary over the course of the weekend. It's been a fantastic head of the schoolgirls regatta, and we'll talk to you next time.